right, we are back. And, uh, yeah, that little thing I was trying to work on yesterday, it turned out okay, but not quite what the way I wanted it to, so... Decided to wipe it out and, uh, try it again later. Uh, so what we're gonna do now, we've got, a uh, we have our quick wire and, um, aluminum casings. They're being sent over now. Uh, <coughs> being, oops, oh, forgot to rehook up power. Um, got them uh, going into the storage bins here. Both storage bins should uh, almost about be full here. Let me add some more in here, I guess. Do I have any to add in there? Uh, nope, doesn't look like it. But anyhow, um, hey, how's it going? Um, we're gonna go ahead and send the drones to start taking the material over to the Desert Grand Central. Let's see, this guy here is the casings. Um, so let's see, we want this guy here to pick up from here, and then we want this is the quick wire. So we want quick wire to pick up from there and let those do a couple routes real quick. And while that's going on, we just check the cleanup here because I think I may have cleaned up a little too much. So yeah, let me put this roof back on this real quick. I'll give the uh, those drones a chance to do some flying. Now I gotta do a little bit more just a little bit more cleanup. Um, gotta, get, gotta get rid of that sign first. Oh, snap. Well, that's. <laughs> well, let's just say I when I did my cleanup, I had to get rid of some stuff, and well, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> oh, well, that's. You know, it's better than what it could have been, and well, let's just say it could have been bad. Um, let me go, let me set up my normal roofs here. Now I got, well, that's not what I expected either. Um, <laughs> um okay, well, we will. We're not going to worry about them right now. Um, we will be taking care of them uh, via another method. Because, um, well... Uh, wait, are you the friendly doggo? Let me just, let me check here. No, you're not friendly. Okay, well, I mean, you're not, you're not tame. Yeah, I don't know what caused you guys to uh, spawn, quite honestly. Uh, I have an idea. Well, sort of an idea. Um, but, uh, yeah, I know they're confused as all hell. It's like, what the hell? That is kind of funny, though. Um, let, me, let me just finish getting some of these walls out of here. Um... That's funny. Um, all right, actually, <laughs> all right, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna fix this. Um, I I just <laughs> I don't know why the game did that. Um, quite honestly. I mean, oh brother, um, but y'all can't be here. This is not a, this is not a safe place for y'all. Um, all right. So now that I've cleaned up the rest of the stuff I wanted to clean up, let me do a save here. <sighs> oh man, that's, that's actually kind of amusing. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yeah, I was not expecting that. Alright, let me, uh... Let me fix this. If I can. I don't know if it all... I just... I... Don't know. That's just... Not what I expected. And, well, I guess if this doesn't work, then what I'll do is I'll, I'll create a ramp and, like, herd them out of the area. But, <laughs> that's hilarious. Um, right on this. Yeah, the last thing I w want is really a whole bunch of these. I guess they're technically called space giraffe, but that's one one term that's used for them. Um, I don't think it's gonna let me. Oops. But this still shows the. Uh, Where's the last one at? I'm, I apologize. I'm looking at my interactive map here to, to free these, uh, to free these guys. All right. All right. So let me do this. <clears throat> and if I still see them on the save game map, then well, I'll let them do them. Um, and, uh, we'll figure out a way of getting them into the wild later. All right. Uh, let's see here. But yeah, that was, uh, that was weird. Um, I'm just uh, Reloading my save game map to see uh, what happens because I'm expecting them to fall from the sky again and magically appear. As, as long as my main doggos over here didn't get affected, which they shouldn't because I was. Well, maybe it just took the game a couple seconds to. to. I don't know. Let's see, did they fall through the floor? <clears throat> yeah, it still sh okay, okay, so it just it just took the game a little bit of time to clean them out. Alright. Now just that was just a little weird. But uh And they're back. Alright, well we'll we'll deal with them later. Um is it removing them uh, or not removing them per se but remo removing what I had uh, turned out to have a side effect of spawning other creatures and stuff so uh, we'll let them have fun you know You know, maybe they'll eventually figure out how to get out of here. All right, so our drone, um, we should have had, uh, our drone should have at least come by, um, at least once to do its uh, initial pickup. And so, it shouldn't take that long to get the drone over here. Um, yeah, so it did a initial pickup, and it's gonna pick up, uh, pretty much, it'll do about three runs or so, uh, actually it'll do four runs, I think, um, cause I got two sets of storage, two single, uh, level storages for each of these, so, it'll essentially pick up until this is empty, 
Um, and then it'll try uh, to another pickup, um, and then it'll, it should sit idle until the stuff actually gets used. <clears throat> Theoretically, our production rate should be good enough to maintain this. Um, so we're going to go ahead back to... Uh, we are going to go back to... Where are we going to? Back over to... Uh, um, the main base. Or the, the uh, alternate base. And we are going to... Uh, make sure these things are... Uh, these products here that we just picked up. Or sending via the drones. Are uh, heading... Or filling up the belt, I should say. And then once I have a at least a <clears throat> a belt worth, a belt load worth of a uh, product, then we'll get the oil trains going. Oh, there goes one of the drones right now. And into the ground it went. And there it goes way off in the distance. Oh yeah, we're gonna stop one place on the way back. Um, so we're gonna take control of the train after we get past uh, the nitrogen uh, collection center. That I don't want to interfere with uh, any sort of uh, I, I don't want to get t-boned again because of the, uh, how the train uh, thing does its thing sometimes alright so basically we're going to do a little self driving here and then we're going to stop the train here just for a moment uh, I'm going to bail out I'm gonna try to do this as quickly as possible. I left uh, by mistake uh, when I was cleaning out my foundations. Uh, I somehow overlooked this foundation set. Grab this real quick. All right, now we can. Uh, yeah, let's try staying a little closer to the line so we have uh, power. All right, now we can continue uh, going. All right. It does seem a little hazy out here at night. I don't think I've ever come this uh, through here at night time. As we enter the desert and the sun's just about to start rising so we uh, went, took care of the oil extraction over there now so we have the rail line set up for correct bi-directional travel um, we got all the path and block signals readjusted. So, the only th thing left to do now is, uh, we said we're going to wait for the drone bay to, uh, or the drones to bring some of the cargo in just so I can have some, uh, 
stuff on the belts. I'm gonna bail out. Actually, no, I need uh, <clears throat> I need stuff for some uh, power lines real quick. Cause I don't remember if I fully connected the circuit to the switch. All right, go ahead and turn that off once it stops, just so it doesn't continuously honk its horn at me and all that. All right, which one of these have what I wanted? <clears throat> grab some of that, and grab some of that, and I think the iron rods, that's all my iron rods here. Uh, hopefully, we we'll cross our fingers. We don't have to make any uh, plumbing fixes because I need more copper if that's the case. All right, so here's our quick wire. Here's our aluminum casing feed. Right now, it's just going up to the machine, not into the machine, uh, because we have the machines turned off. But we can go ahead and turn the machines on. Um, and nothing is actually going to get produced until we start up the oil. Um, so what I'll before I do that, I'm going to uh, I'll do a flyby of everything, looking for yellow lights and all that once the uh, power is connected. Because so that'll tell me if <clears throat> well, we'll also do a, a full check, but we'll do an initial fly by just looking for yellow lights all right let's go ahead and flip the switch all right so what we should have happening here is uh should see yellow lights across the board on our refineries which look good we should have yellow lights on all of our manufacturers or an assemblers or whatever these things are. Uh, so yeah, that looks good. Should have. I don't know if these things actually have a light or not, but let me just make sure. It shows power and power, so that's good. We should see. Uh, let's see on this set here, we should see these things slowly filling up. So I want these to get up to their capacity just because um you know consider it a jump start <clears throat> all right now we're just gonna do a flyby on the other machines here make sure they're set up properly so that's the product we're waiting on but they went ahead and filled up with coal from the uh ore deposit That's configured for the wrong one. See, that's why I'm doing this. All right. Don't know why. I, I may have changed. I don't know why I would have changed it, but or maybe I just, I don't know. <clears throat> configure a whole bunch of machines in a row. Sometimes it just, yeah. Okay, so all of these should be the alternate polyfabric. And then this half should be alternate poly as well. All right, and then first set here, actually this set here should be the uh, uh, rubber. And I'm also looking for these to fill up with water. That's actually the big thing I'm um, looking for is I want to, s with how I did the water run, uh, just do a quick check here. These are all the alternate polys. Um, the way I did the water on this was a little bit different than how I typically do water um, in that I have water kind of on a loop. 
So I have two 600 feeds coming in, which is a total of 1,200 water. So one of the feed lines goes that way, one of the feed lines goes this way, and then they kind of each go like one goes this way and meets here in the middle the other comes around the back it's these two and meets in the middle so does those need a thousand this section here needs 200 so uh, kind of curious how the uh the flow is well i mean it all filled up with water so that's good actually let me make sure all these are filled up with water too i wasn't paying attention to that part but in theory, oops, see, no water. So which one? Let me pop a tile just so I know which one to go look at as I continue checking. See, I've got a water issue. There's a water issue here somewhere. Um, as if, I don't know. And the water usage here is kind of iffy as well hey how's it going uh, let's see here yeah so we gotta take a look at our water just to see what's going on with the the pumping of the water what we'll probably do is we'll probably flush the system well not not that's well i wouldn't well the the problem with well it can be in, in some cases. In this case, I, I, there's, it's probably something I did because I did something a little, a little bit more different than I should have. Yeah, you because know, I'm just put experimentation. But sometimes I've noticed, and I don't know why. Um, I, I just uh, sometimes. Um. It literally, I, I've had to break pipes and re-add them. Um, see, like now it has water. Um, I'm, I'm gonna flush the system just to watch the flow again. But I've had to literally uh, delete a pipe before just to re-add it so water would flow. But this this water system here is a little bit different. Um, and actually, what I may do if I haven't done it already. Uh, this is a loop water system or, or a double feed meet in the middle water system. Um, and so I've, the, the pumps I have, they're, 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 they're definitely strong enough. I got multiple pumps scattered throughout here to make sure they can get the head lift. But the problem, one of the potential issues, because pumps actually, um, well, pumps act to, uh, I don't know how to put this. Pumps have dual functions. One, they pump water, okay, but hence the name pump. But they also act as a directional, you know, directional control. So you won't ever get back feed going that way. Um, so I'm kind of, what I'm doing here is I've got water coming in this here. I've also got water coming in there. And they're both feeding their respective machines um, and then this guy here comes around and goes and let's see one two so this third guy here he's the middle um, so that water comes and essentially should run out of water right about here technically the other f feed line comes around the back side it meets, you know, technically should run out of water right around the same place. Um, that's the beauty of not having, uh, not being in production yet. So I can flush this entire system and I can kind of see how the fill goes on this. So uh, I know that the, the water, the water from the extractor should be fine. Um, I'm pulling, 600 on each line and then it'll slowly fill in 
um, filling this pipe here. It's just going to take time. The filling, I see the, I see the flow meter there, slowly starting to expand. Because normally I, you know, normally I would just run the pipes above, you know, or on the same level. But I'm, I'm trying to do a, uh, a clean build, sort of, if you will, where 99% of my uh, piping and or uh, conveyor work is in an access space, if you will. All right, so these things are doing good here. The head lift on this. Really, you shouldn't have much head lift, just because it's only going up a little bit. This one here will have a little bit more than that. This here, its technical head lift is only going up a very little bit. Um, but it will, there, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of pipe to fill in. Which is interesting. Another okay, it's actually filling in pretty well now. Now that that main pipe has been uh, this here will be probably one of the last things filled in. I may you know I'm gonna grab something. I'm gonna uh, try something here, um, just in case. Because fluid dynamics in this game can be very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, it can be finicky. Um, I'm going to grab uh, 14, 20, 25, so 25 of these once the autosave finishes. I want to make 25 of these real quick. <clears throat> that is a, a possible um, option. Um, let me see here. I need, I don't need power lines. So let me go ahead and clear that off my list. Clear that off my list. So rubber and steel beams. Uh, still beams were in one of these. And I... Rubber's down here somewhere. This, this, actually, this is what I'm going to do first. I'm going to go ahead and turn this back off. Because I, I don't have anything coming into it right now. Um... This is just the, this is the pre-launch check, if you will. Um, and also the initial belt, uh, belt feed check. So all these, um, all these here should be capped out. Okay, so yeah, I can go ahead and uh, I can kill the power for a few minutes while I do this. So I don't have any misleading indicators. All right, I'm going to kill this. And what I'm actually going to do is, because I, I do have a, 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 a small fluid buffer system, but only uh, it's only set up for my oil. And that's because I, uh, I originally was thinking, you want to use the, um, the train station itself as the, the buffer, but then I, I remember that when the train station or when, when the train arrives to unload fresh oil, then it's going to stop the flow of oil, and I didn't want that. So I put a fluid buffer system in here, which uh, when filled, these here just small enough, 400. These need 60 per minute, so that gives me roughly five to six minutes worth of uh, um, worth of. Uh, oil um so what we're going to try here just because number one let's go ahead and flush the system again 
And also, I want to see something here. Does flushing that system actually empty this? No. So we're going to empty this as well. I do appreciate that you can actually delete liquid out of a machine um, like this. Because flushing the... Um, Flushing the pipe system, you know, unfortunately doesn't flush what's in the machine, which yeah, I, I can get that. But yeah, any, any, I mean, just in general, anytime you're dealing with, you know, fluids and long runs, things can definitely get finicky because, like you said, the pipe, or the piping, the, the game sometimes is just goofy on piping, and even though you may have a junction set up or whatnot, it just, it won't, um, it, it'll ignore the junction. Um, and pretend that it doesn't exist because I had to do that already on a couple of my uh, gas pipe feeds. Um, even though you know when you when you look at it and you you know you put the uh, like the destruction cursor over it, it shows that it's a proper junction and everything's hooked up properly. But um, it just you know sometimes it's just finicky that way. Uh, okay, I can get down this way. All right. <clears throat> All right, so what we're gonna do here real quick uh, Once I find where I am I should and it, it doesn't this is the one bad thing about having the access stuff is it is quite quite tiny to work in um, Just a quick check here All right, but I, I mean I know water's flowing all of them so I know we don't have bad junctions per se but what I'm gonna do here, then, just because, I'm gonna put a valve on the nuts. I'm gonna leave the valve wide open. Um, but basically, setting up a, uh, a guaranteed one-way flow uh, up the uh, pipes, so that you know it's. Water doesn't. I know water won't empty out of the machine up above, but I don't want the water coming. You know that there's you know pipe up there too, and I don't want somehow the fluids to be flowing out of this pipe to go elsewhere. We're just gonna do a quick throw some quick valves down, <clears throat> just just to set directionality. I know as far as headlifts is concerned, we got the headlift. Um, I have uh, was able to run the uh, test on the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, um, all right, on the, on the headlift already. Although I'm going to, here's something that's, Something that's kind of bugging me on that head lift test I did. So, I wasn't until recently that I learned um, about the. It was when I last played and really was dealing with piping and whatnot. Uh, that was back in uh, uh, release three or update three. They didn't have this the neat little tool that they have now for head lift um, or for pumps, I should say. Um, in that you can actually see how far the head lift will go. Yeah, so in the past, um, uh, let's see, do I have enough for, let me see here. So, so in the past, uh, for example, cause I, I can destroy this and recreate it cause um, I'm gonna do that anyhow. So in the past when you went to put out a, a, a pump, 
you know you see that little blue ring that's flying off there um let me turn this real quick <clears throat> that blue ring wasn't there before so as far as um you know you didn't know where you know at, w at what point the head lift ended so you would have to you know kind of guess um now unfortunately by putting the valves in here it's not going to show the head lift going up those um but you know so, and actually so i'm gonna i'm gonna test something out here um i'm going to break this guy here for a minute all right and then I'm gonna break this guy here. Since the valve is there, that will give me my clean connection down. So I'm gonna put it back into the valve. All right, I'm gonna break my valve. All right, then I'm gonna go back up here. I'm gonna rerun this pipe real quick. Because it's weird on how, on, on sometimes the head lift on a pump will actually show going through the floor connectors sometimes it won't and so let me put this valve back on here and put it right put it right there and before i finalize its position <clears throat> looking to see okay so that was not that that's my problem i think not so if i break let me break a couple of these valves i just put on here um because I, I think i'm gonna need to do what i just did there on the first one and that is it just sometimes the pipe connections i don't know just they go goofy um, I know this pump here, um, it's not going to do anything past that pump because, you know, the pump's on chain, but, uh, let me put this valve back on here, or this pump back on here. What I want to see is, uh, see, okay, so now... Now it's actually, because before I was not seeing, even before I put the valves on there, I was not seeing this thing here. So I wonder if by just putting the valves on and then taking them off for a second that it cleaned up part of it, but I'm still gonna put valves on this. Cause it's, I still want this to do, uh, still want it to do its thing. Essentially, and I'm gonna re redo. All right, so let me redo this this pump here real quick, just to validate that I see the same thing there. And you want know me to go to my? Uh, uh, which one was it? This one? No. That one It'll be easier that way. All right, so we get there. Have you like that for power? Yeah, all right. We fly back this way. Oh, hell with it. Let me just fly up this way. All right, so. All right, so good on that, okay. Lock that one in place. So. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's just, I don't know. Maybe you just needed that, uh, me actually putting something on here, I mean, and then taking it off to clean the, Clean the pipes up, as it were. All right, 
So with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and remove and re-add these things just because um, I, I do want the valves here. And, um, no, like I said, pumps technically act as not a valve per se, but pumps do give it directionality, so. All right, then, you know, and just, cause I know, whoa, I know, uh, I know that you can't see uh, the, the, uh, what do you call it? The head lift indicator will stop at a valve. Um, and that's fine. All right. And now, and also, the initial fill is not going to be instantaneous, uh, running it straight from the extractors, um, which, you know, that's something that, you know, that, that just because it's obviously going to take time to fill in. So the real test will come, obviously, when uh, this goes into production and is actually putting a, a, a draw on the, the piping system. Oh, missed one. I did a, uh, well, I haven't tested the oil out yet. Oil is the last thing I'm going to test out. Um, because my oil, I've got coming up from here. I already did the head lift test, and it shows a good connection. Well, because I expanded and added the, added the buffers, I went ahead and added another pump here just to, I, I you know, I, I figure it's better to go overboard with the pumps. Because if I don't need, if it's not needed, it won't. They'll just sit idle. Um, so it's. Um, but the head lift tests for the oil is good. Um, and then I put a uh, a valve here in front of the buffer just to make sure that the buffer doesn't back feed into a different, you know, elsewhere on the line. Um, so kind of keep trying to keep things th going there, and then. On my heavy oil residue, um, this here I could care less if these actually turn on and process anything because this is just making the petro coke to burn in the sink right now. Um, but I do have a valve just to, you know, make sure, you know, just directionality, just to see how that works, and well, we'll see. All right, let's go and see how this does now is this, this is a uh, this is you know an interesting little uh, I, whoop, I I missed a pole um I missed two poles how oh, dare me um I think for now on this is how I'm going to build my factories though I'm going to have an axis area that's uh, roughly two uh, two foundations or uh, eight meters tall, because it does make things look a lot neater, <laughs> you know, less uh, less congested, congested. <clears throat> All right, so we got that fluid buffers filling up. That pipes, yeah. So. I, well, okay, so I, I don't believe in physics to a certain extent, so I'll use, uh, so unlike what, uh, so uh, um, Callie was doing the proper thing when he stacked the splitters, and he was actually using the stacks of splitters. Um, 
when I my stacking of splitters is actually just to get it up to a certain level, then I delete the splitters below. <laughs> um, in most cases, there are some times when I actually do have the splitters stacked um, for an actual legitimate sl uh, splitting, um, but like I, I just you know. Um, Is that? Oh, you know what? Because it, it, it just dawned on me when you type that out and the name of the company. Um, I wonder if that's a play on physics. F I C S I T. I never. When you typed it out there, that's that's a good 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 play. Uh, I never even thought about that before. Um, all right, so let's see here. Uh, actually, the true test will be, let's go see how these are looking water-wise. Okay. But again, it's, it's gotta fill the entire pipe up first. So then actually, I think we're gonna see fill up first should be the rubber and then it's gonna back go backwards from here so we should see these fill up first I think uh, I'll be honest I think I'm like okay something's broken on this one altogether. What the hell did I break? I think oh shit I'm a biscuit eating. Yeah, you know what I did? I uh I it's okay that the one very important thing. I killed all these pumps and then I forgot uh, or I redid all these uh I redid these here and I forgot the Get them hooked up into power again. That'll do it. Yeah, it's the little things. All right. So that makes perfect sense. Well, I would either that, okay, or and let me just check this here before I. These things here should now. Okay, cool deal. Checking. And again, I'm you know I'm not expecting these to fill up you know, instantaneously, just because. But I want to see. You should not be idled out, on or. Right. We'll see. We'll see how it works once we actually get production going. To see how the water flow actually goes. Um, I, I I would like you know well, I, I would like ceiling mounted, um, ceiling mounted uh, objects. So hang a conveyor belt off the ceiling. Um, have you know you know. Pipe, uh, pipe thing on the ceiling because I mean, the game uh, you got the you know in the in the store in the awesome shop. Um, I think they gave you this. I, I actually I don't know if they gave you this. I think they gave you these three in the store, for example, for pipes. And I think this was in the store. These two are in the store for conveyors, I believe. Um, it'd be nice to have like a, a, a ceiling mounted version and as far as the splitters are concerned I think the uh, how do I how do I put this I think the splitters or mergers you know this stuff here should be similar and there's also another thing um, the splitters um, what other thing was I thinking about? I don't remember what, but basically have the splitter 
act like a conveyor pole, if you will, so that I have my splitter, right? I find my spot where I want it. You know, I can do my initial rotation if I want, that's fine. Click it one time, like, and then, you know, so you have to set your rotation first then, um, so, because it doesn't rotate. But then, once you do the first click, allow you to rise, raise it up. And then once you find your second spot, click it and lock it in. You know, because I think that makes things, well, at least for my style of doing things, it would make it easier. Because as it is now, it's like, okay, find my spot, click three times to build three, uh, three of them. And then, you know, once I'm happy and everything's connected, then I'll go delete the lower levels of them. The other thing I want them to do, which I know they won't, is I mean, while I appreciate the sort of aesthetic look to these, um, you know, because it is semi-stylish of sorts, um, I want it to be perfectly square. I, I don't want it to have the sloped angles because when I, you know, when I look at this, if I'm, let's say I'm trying to line up on this, uh, if I'm trying to line up on this seam right here, okay, I want the front of it to be on that seam. I put down my splitter or my merger, it's like, okay, uh, that there maybe. And then I go over and look, okay, this time it's right. But depending on my angle and my height, um, it'll be misleading because you have that that uh that little slant there um and so I've, I've messed up quite a few times because that little slant that's underneath i'll think is like you know i'll, I'll click it's like oh no whoops that's in the wrong spot so i, I just kind of wish it was just flat up and down personally that's just just a you know something for me personally now i mean i'm sure if i wanted to I, I, I'm not using any mods in this game, but I'm sure there's mods out there that might have something like that. Um, but. All right, so let me just do a check on this. Because really the only way to see how this is truly going to function is, well, to start the initial feed and get production going down the line. So, I mean, what I do know is, oh, did I, uh, do I, uh, is there another power I forgot to hook up? No, you are turned on. Oh, uh, this is the one that was, this is the one that got goofy on me. Um, all right, so let's see this. It, it, I'm gonna have to redo this entire pipe segment, and I'm, I'm I, I just I'm, I'm particular on how I have my stuff ran, because I know I could technically just go straight into that, and wow, that was way off. Um, I know I can just run straight into it, but I'm kind of I don't know, I don't know if you'd call it an OCD or uh, anal complex or what. Um, right, so on the grate. But I like, in 99% of the time, I like to have my pipes and conveyor belts have a certain bend to them, as it were. All right, so now, all right, I'm gonna put this back up here, just. And actually, you know what? I'm. I'm going to do another test. Yeah. I'm going to do another another test here. One more test before I uh before we, before we bring the oil in. Just to see what it will how it will react. Um
I, I would agree. I mean, the, the because I know right now the only place I can get a, t a semi tight turn, and I, and I mean, and I'm using that term loosely, <laughs> is um, the only place I can get a semi tight turn, if you will, is actually on the wall junctions. Um, so like this here. You know, with respects to the space, and and it, and so, you know, that's you know, conveyors. Well, to me, I think one of the big things conveyor needs are, I would really love that. Actually, so so the other people put suggestions in on the QA site. I put it, went and put a, a suggestion on the QA site, but. So you've got um, pipeline support, for example. Um, you know, when you place down a pipeline support, you know, you have to aim it first. So once you click your aim, you can't turn it no more. You can go up and down, but you also can tilt. They need to have that same function with um, the conveyor poles, um, just so that when you're going up, if you're using conveyor belts to go up a, a, a long ramp, um, you know, if you, if you're, because if you run out of conveyor pole or conveyor length and you have to do multiple conveyors going up a ramp of some sort, it like goes up at an angle, then it levels off for a segment then goes up again. And I'm, I'm not a fan of that look. Um, it's just, uh, you know, I, I prefer just, you know, Hey, just, you know, give me a nice clean, or at least give me the ability of getting a, a clean slope. Um, I mean, yeah, just, just, but the thing is though, it's not a game breaker. That's more of a quality of life, uh, aesthetics looking type of thing. Um, oh man, my auto saves are getting so large. But it'll be interesting to see, uh, you know, I'm curious to see if they're going to add any little minor enhancements, un uh, unlisted enhancements uh, in update six, you know, I, I know some of the biggies that are coming out. That's why I've, uh, I've blueprinted my one uh, oil refinery in the North Spires. Because I think that, that thing's going to go bye-bye. Um, but I'm wondering if they're going to have any, like, you know, just... Or, or if they're going to add any new things to, uh, you know, f so that people can, you know, be a little bit more creative in their factory building. All right, let me go ahead and do one more thing here. The next, what I'm going to try now, just for curiosity's sake, um, is I'm actually going to use the valves as intended, just to see. Um, just to see if that will have any difference on this. Uh, do I have a down? All right, so we're going to go set all the valves for this section here to 50 and then we'll set the the rubber side to 40 and just so uh, oops just want to kind of see if this will do anything for me or have any sort of effect it probably won't but That's the that's the one beauty about this game is you can really do a lot of experimentation um, with uh, with how you build and put things together and really there's no right way wrong way per se you know you, you, there's the 
I, I would say there's the efficient way, and then there's the not so efficient way. And I just shoot. Yeah, I, I I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Um. How, how many of these did I do that for? <laughs> Oops, these are supposed to be all 50s. And I got 40 on the brain for whatever reason. The good news is if I decide to go back and uh, revert this, I just have to use a slider and slide it all the way up to 600. Yeah, I started that off from I started that off wrong from the start. Well, and uh, some you know, it's just like I said, I just wanna I'm gonna do a little a little bit of an experiment with this, just to see, because the main thing I'm using the, the valves for again is just you know backflow control, if you will. Um, but I am just curious to see. Um, if I, you know, actually set these, how they'll work. Um, right, so those are 50, those will be 50, these here will be 40s. There's actually only been a couple places in my, in, in my factories here that I've actually done valve control. Um, actually to l truly limit the flow um and that was uh that's on my uh my battery manufacturing plant because i don't have water extractors feeding that i actually um i'm actually feeding it directly from a train um which is generally not generally not a good idea i mean no buffers in between whatsoever so I actually have flow control set up on that um, to the exact uh, amount needed, you know, per minute. Just in, you know, just to make sure one machine, you know, to, make, to basically make sure all the machines balance out and it conserves water, sort of, source speak, I guess. Um, and for the most part, um, Oops, they help if I hit the right button to move. Um, haven't really had any issues with it. Um, but yeah, this uh, this valve control here, I don't know, it's just, it's just an experiment per se. Um, Because uh, down the down the way there, I've got my nitrogen set up. Um, that one there, I actually had uh, going into a, a buffer, and it it wasn't working. Um, in that the buffers were showing. I mean, it was it was technically the 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 buffers were filling up and the gases were flowing and. The, I just have a feeling one of these here just seemed off like I may have accidentally typed in the wrong one um, but I, I had the the buffers uh, coming off the train went into a buffer and then from the buffer it went up to the uh, uh, went up to the production line and even though the buffers were showing as being full or near full and with the train stations when they weren't being docked so stuff could flow were nearly full i just wasn't getting the flow rate that i was expecting so um i went a different route with the uh the nitrogen which yeah, i basically i'm running a triple nitrogen train now 
so it'll be interesting to see how that uh i mean it, it's actually worked well um because i got there's there's one of my three nitrogen trains 10 cards worth of nitrogen um and basically i have all three trains tie into one another uh with respect to their um their cargo and then it, it all gets basically piped up to the top um in a single pipe and uh it's basically done that way just you know i'm there's only a couple things nitrogen is used for in the game and um i got another nitrogen site i can need Alright, so we got fluids flowing there, fluids flowing there. Let's just see how this looks down. I'm expecting these to be empty again because I'm expecting rubber to be the first thing filled in. So, let's see here. This is the first one I'm expecting to see uh, have water f flow to and fill up just because of, I don't know, just the natural flow of water. Um, this is where the two water sources converge. So, give it a couple, a little bit here just for the, the water to start filling up the pipes. Hopefully. Or maybe I just broke it. Alright, well, we have... Water here, that's good. Okay, so the water... <clears throat> Alright, so now that the, the master pipes are full, we should start to see these slowly fill up. Because, I mean, this is a lot of pipe to fill up on the base level. So, <clears throat> I do get that. So it's technically filling up at the rate of its production use, really, sort of, maybe. Um, yeah, I think we're gonna, we'll, we'll just set the, the valves to zero. Um, or not zero, Jesus, yeah, let's set the valves to zero and uh, not have any water come through. But the, the, the ultimate test is gonna be Let's, let's get the oil moving and uh, see how the water and the only and this would be a this if uh, there's one other tweak that I may do um because even though i've got the valves and and whatnot there um and the uh not the valves per se even though i got the pumps that are acting as a directionality um tool there's one thing that i think i'm gonna do just because um Oops. Cause that's that's kind of the, one of the bad things about pipes is, you know, yeah. The good side about pipes is, you know, it's just you know you can balance or you can you know, you, your your limit in pipes is either six hundred in total, you know, feed from the source. Um, so your, your determining factor is your source, uh, really. After that, you know, um, you know, you, you can use this to vary it and all that, but you can't technically do precision splitting unless, unless you actually do like a valve type option. That's the only way you could technically do, I guess, precision splitting um, but it can backfire on you depending on, I guess, where you try to do the precision stuff at. Um, I 
is let me see here if I I don't know how this will work here I'm going to I'm gonna put a valve one two so right here Ugh, if I can get over here I'm gonna put a valve right here And I'm going to put a valve right there. And the reason I'm putting these two valves right where, right in those, in those two spots is based on the water usage that's needed. This pipe here is doing 600. That pipe there is doing 600. 500 from those devices. And then 200 from these guys here. Well, I've got a hundred left over theoretically in this pipe, hundred left over theoretically in that pipe. So 40, 40, 20 in theory, 40, 40 and 20. So realistically, what I should see here at these valves, excuse me, when this is operational, if the flow rate is actually showing proper, I should see a 20 on that and a 20 on that is what it should be showing me without me setting it. Um, but, okay, we'll see what happens here. Uh, let's see, there it is. Let's go make sure our, uh, our oil trains are set to unload, because that wouldn't be bad otherwise. All right. Now, let's go get the oil trains moving. All right, so oil one, you are going to go to... Oil load, and then here. All right. And it's, he's on his way. I'll give it just a few seconds for it to go. And I'll get him set up. And let me just wait for oil one to actually get out of the station. Just to give him a little bit of room in between so I'll let him pass cold and I'll send the next one out make the turn all right oil two and then oil three and I didn't learn I didn't know about this how I could actually look at and tweak the timetable on the trains you know I've always been going to the train itself and then doing that I did not know that you could look at all the trains that are connected to the same line um, and uh, do uh, you know send them on their way or, or alter their timetables and all that all right so uh, oh, that's oil two. Oh, okay, oil three. On your way. All right, so the oil trains are going. You know. And hell, let's go for a ride. But you know, it's, it's, you know, this would look, you know, all I need now is some snow and I got Christmas. You got the red and green lights all over the place, you know. I hope I, well, I should see something on the, on his back. Okay, good, I do. Now, of course, having these three trains show up back to back to back, that train that just left, he's gonna have two full containers of 16. 
This guy here may get a container of maybe uh, 900 or 1,000. I'm going to get a minimal load um, just because. Here, get over here before he docks. I should have a minimal load coming on this. Yeah, so yeah, that's okay. Um, Cause this is just, just to make sure I'm, uh, just to make sure I'm getting a constant feed. Of course, you know, uh, ooh. Well, this will actually be interesting cause what I, in hindsight, what I should have done and well, what we didn't is I should have turned off my factory again. Oh, well, no, and that's true. Um, the problem is I didn't jumpstart the buffers. Uh, I've got buffers. Um, I just didn't jumpstart them. Um, so we'll see how... Because <laughs> I should have the proper flow. And, and actually, here's the easy thing to do. I just go turn off my factory and uh, let the buffers get jumpstarted. Yeah, no, because for the oil, I actually have buffers in line with uh, I have the, the, the mini buffers in line with the oil refineries. Um, No, and that's true, and then that, that's so. I'm not worried about uh, the oil field side because once so now, now that I've got the, the triple trains going to collect the oil, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not too worried about that side. Um, it's up here. Um, what I what I should have done there is not had my factory on let the uh, trains do their thing so that these could get fully loaded um ah. and actually that's well this could be a good thing and a bad thing at the same time because i'm not seeing any flow on that let me actually go ahead and turn this factory off then this way we can do a full jump start because we're not doing anything else with it right now but why are we not seeing let me go down here see do i have a hole here yeah okay so we got a flow there so it's just i guess just taking taking time to to uh, fill in the pipes so we'll give it a see what happens here because what I should be seeing uh, is these things here should be no the fact that these are not emptying at all did I kill power on some pumps oh no I don't have power on the pumps well, you know why I don't have power on the pumps? Because I have all my pumps set up to, uh, <laughs> yeah. So that's the catch 22 there. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, the catch 22. So I'm going to uh, temporarily, um, because just just temporarily I'm gonna break this line here and these two lines are the only thing on that okay so just temporarily um, just to get a jump start if you will I'm gonna have these guys hook up to that just to get the pumps 
Oh, wait, that's on the wrong. That's the wrong cable because that's a. Uh, that's on the kill switch. Uh, let's try that again. Uh, tie it to that guy. That's prime power. There we go. So just as a temporary uh, thing, so that the buffers upstairs can get full. Of course, we got to do that here as well. Now that I think about it, because. Alright. Uh, so let me go ahead and kill this guy here for a moment. And let me go ahead and tie you also in. In fact, let me go ahead and go ahead and tie you into this power as well, just temporarily. Come on. Come on. Ah. Oh, oh, no, you don't. Just temporarily, like I said. Alright. So, this is just to get the, uh, the jump start to the fluid buffers upstairs. Alright, so... Hopefully we'll start to see something trickle in here in a minute, hopefully. There's the pumps. No, something's wrong with the... See, I've had, like I said it before, I've had problem with floor connectors. And that's what's happening here is... Uh, I'm gonna have to... I'm gonna redo all these pipes. Because I I have the flow rate for this. It just... Well, I, I'm not the flow rate. I've got the uh, uplift for this. It just... For whatever reason... Every once in a while, these floor holes act goofy. So I'm gonna go ahead and kill all these pipes and rerun them. The one good thing about pipes, I will say though, is it doesn't matter which side you start on and which side you end on, um, with um, because you know it, it doesn't care of the flow, if you will. Um, you know, unlike a conveyor belt, if you do it wrong, then you're gonna end up having to delete it because of directionality. Crossing my fingers on this. Oop. All right, come on. Okay, uh, I'm seeing stuff coming here now. Yeah, so for whatever reason. All right, so we should see. Okay, good. Yeah, just, you know, for whatever reason, pipe connections are just goofy sometimes. All right. So this will take a, a couple couple minutes to fill up all these buffers. Um, you know, I, I did, you know, I, I recently learned about that build mode. Um, with the pipes. I never even saw it before on the uh, um, the horizontal to vertical. Um, I may have to try that on, uh, oh, excuse me, try that on some stuff. Um, I do know that, oh, is it Auto 2D? <laughs> it, it, Auto 2D is not good for me. Um, and the reason I say that, is I was working on my water line over here yesterday and the water line pretty much mimics this water line here pretty much mimics this water line and I was trying to just do this little curve here this little like uh, out down and over and auto 2d would not do it it's like I'm scratching my head and I'm, I'm, I'm going crazy and bitching and complaining and Almost started cursing and all that, and I noticed it was saying build mode, auto 2D. It's like, what the hell? And so I changed it back to auto, and it it, uh, it did what I needed to do. Um, but yeah, but until then, I mean, like I said, until recently, I never looked at the build mode on the pipes or, you know, on the conveyors. Um, 
Hopefully I won't have to do too much more piping anytime soon. Alright, so we're halfway there. Let me see what the buffer itself looks like, or the train buffer. So, I'm not too concerned with the fill level of this. Um, well, I am, but I'm not, because I know that, you know, when the train comes, the offloading and pumping of this stops. Um, which, I don't know, I think, I think for fluids, I think you should still be able to offload fluids. I don't know. Um, I thought the, the conveyors do have, um, don't they? No, I guess they don't. No, because the, uh, no, that's right, they don't, they don't. Um, it's, oh, it's the hyper tubes, pipes and hyper tubes. Um, well, the uh, thing is, though, <clears throat> combining them, doesn't gonna do anything for you if you think about it. This pipe here is limited to 600. If I take this out here and put it into that, you know, just for example, still sit, you're limited to the pipe. So I'm taking out at 600, taking two 600s and merging them together, still gonna be 600, unfortunately, because of the pipe limitation. Or are you talking about this side and this side? Um, if you're talking about the two left left and right, um, well, the, the reason it's, I'm, I, I have it actually uh, being done this way is each one is actually doing a specific amount. So this is technically doing 420, and this is doing 420-ish. Um, even though you, I, I don't trust this, just because this can kind of be off with the amount of trains that are going back and forth. But uh, it's being done this way because I got 420 coming here, and then the split here, once the autosave gets done, the, the split is actually, um, the number of pipes I'm coming off of this is uh, exactly, um, tied to 420. So 420 downstairs on that pipe, for example, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, um, seven coming off of this. Those seven um, need 420. So seven by, uh, wait, for, am I doing 420? Is 840, 720? Jeez, now, now I've got to think here. Uh, seven, nine, six. Yeah, four twenty. Okay, sorry, my my math was thinking. So the the so basically it's just um, how I decided to tie them in together. Um, this is almost full. I'm gonna wait till this gets full here, and then uh, we we'll go ahead and uh, put everything back the way it is. So while I'm waiting for that to fill up, I need to give me some more coffee so I'll be back in just a few moments
Okay, so we should be full here. Good. And let me s All right, so I can go ahead and do I can go ahead and disconnect this guy from prime, prime power. Go ahead and get this guy reconnected before I forget. Okay. Then go down here, disconnect this guy and put him back on switched power if I can hit the mark. Hold on a second. That's prime power there, so don't want to hit that one. I want to hit this one. That's right. That's switched power. Yeah, <laughs> that's also. Uh, um, I, I could have done the sky trains um, uh, uh, as well. Yeah, that would uh, that would work too. All right, so. This fluid buffer here is the only one that needs to finish filling up. I'm going to give the trains a little bit more time to do that. Uh, and I'm going to quickly go over here to my drone bay. Just to see how my uh, storage is over here. Oh, oh, so you want to talk about a spiral tower. Okay, so here. So to give you a perspective on something. You, you, you may you may appreciate this. Let me uh, let me clear off some of this junk here. Um, we'll just have the train. Well, that's still a little congested, but still. All right. So we are we are here in the desert, obviously. Um, and then over here, you see this nuke power station. Pretty much, almost the opposite side of the map from where I am, right? You can see um, the, the, that station. That station is 840 meters up in the air. Um, so just below the ceiling limit of the game. Um, roughly. Let me see here. Um, Let's see, that is... So, the reason I consider it the ceiling, um, I, I never, I don't know if I, if I, I, don't, I, I didn't take any damage per se, and actually let me just verify how, how high that is. Um, 841 meters. Um, so I went there, and as I built up foundations from that level, it actually started fogging in, you know, like close distance fogging. So like, if this was the, the platform at, eight, at 841, I built up some foundations to see, you know, just continue seeing how high I could go. And I got up to, let's say, this level here. This is 24 meters high. And... Yeah, granted, the ground was already gone. You couldn't see the ground, but the platform I just came off of was fogged over. So I don't recall taking damage, but it, it fogged in. So I, I stopped building at 841 uh, meters. Um, it takes my uh, train that goes from the bottom to the top roughly six to seven minutes one way. Um, single car, just carrying nuclear waste from the from my nuclear power plant at the bottom, all the way up to the top. And I got I don't know, I have s quite a few. Um, so I, you know, it's a, you know, it, it was a fun little feat to do. Uh, I'll tell you this though, don't ride a train that high 
uh, or I mean, if you if you have motion sickness or uh, epilepsy, epilepsy or something like that, riding that train it can get you a little sick. <laughs> I also have a hypertube that goes that high, and who needs a hypertube cannon set up when you can take the hypertube from that down is enough to launch you a decent amount away. Not quite as good as like a true hypertube cannon, but still. All right, so let's see here. How's my storage here? So that's. Okay, this guy's empty now, so that's good. All right, so storage is backed up, storage is backed up, and the drones are here, and he's here. Okay, I think we are ready to truly go live in this. And all this just so I can get some normal, ma um, normal gas mask filters and nuclear mask filters. It's, it's the nuclear mask filters is really what I need because um, when I go to once I advance uh, the hub to tier 8 for the particle acceleration whatever the hell it is um, I'm going to need a lot of nuclear filters to uh, build up there so I can convert the uranium waste into uh, plutonium fuel rod so I can send them to a sink alright so this is going to be the true test now. So... It'll be interesting to see how much... Let me make sure the pumps for these are actually on. Because if the pumps for those aren't pumping, then this is going to be short-lived. Okay, so I do have green lights, and green lights are good. And I got green lights, and green light so that's good so in theory the buffers shouldn't drop that much I would you know so the it should stay around we'll say that amount um, you know I don't necessarily see it getting full per se because the draw to fill rate should be roughly the same so but then again, uh, if they fill up, that's fine. But we shouldn't see these empty out completely. The only time you're going to see these really drop is when a train is loading or unloading, I should say, because that's when um, the flow from the lower buffers uh, well, will freeze. All right now, okay. And since these things were full of water, um, you know, it's going to have a, a slight overage there just because of it's got to take, you know, the initial time for the refinery to, you know, get up to speed. So that's why there's going to be an overage, a slight overage, which I'm perfectly fine with. Um, but our water flow is good. Every cycle, it's immediately getting back up to its 50, which it realistically should have plenty of time to do that. Let me just do some more random spot checks here on the water. All right. And then this is the rubber manufacturing, so again, Water looks good on that. All right. So provided I don't accidentally kill power somewhere. Um, and then these things here should be... Now these here, I'm not, like I said, I'm not too worried about these. As long as I don't get a backup of this shit here, I don't care if this produces anything, um, quite honestly. Um, just because this is purely here just to, just because it has to be here. So if this one here is at 20% the entire time, so be it. Um, I just don't want to see any excess here. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, I never do. I never tried the roundabout thing. Um, initially, uh, so so minus that train, or minus my ore train ring. That was that's uh, different. That's an animal all in itself. But my my main my main train line that I have there. Initially, I was doing a single line with split tracks. Didn't work out as good as I wanted it. Um. So what I did is I did because uh, uh, I was doing bi-directional trains, and bi-directional trains work good in some situations, but um, in long distance situations not so well. So what I did is I changed this train track to a, a parallel setup uh, with a series of blocks in most of the train, and then you know. I just did a quick little pathing breakout just so they can cross without uh, cross without hitting. Um, and this actually works. This little setup here works great. Um, you know, because it allows the trains, you know, if I've got a train leaving, like uh, going straight and a train coming this way straight. Um, it allows them to flow constantly because of this path block here. Um, you know, and they, they just they stop. You know, only once in a while they'll get they'll get caught up at a stoplight, if you will. Um, but <coughs> excuse me. You know, it's you know. I did that because I, I changed it to this method versus the single bi-directional because of the efficiency of it. Um, the slip tracks were causing too much of a backlog in this area. But like I said, it all depends on, you know, distance is a big thing. If you're doing relatively short distance, um, no, no, no. Here's the here's the key on uh, here's the key on pathing in that. Um, when a train, um, when a train is approaching a path signal, um, the block right before it, the block right before the path is the key. Um, the further the, this block is back from the path signal the less likely your train will break because what's going to happen is you know it's trying to it's gonna uh you know once it passes this block it's then going to try to do the reservation on the track if it can't get the reservation on the track it needs to you know start slowing down obviously so if you have the block closer to the path signal then it's going to potentially start breaking even before it comes to that block because it needs a it needs to be able to come to a full and complete stop at the path signal if it can't get its path reservation so that's why in most areas on long long straightaways i have my last block before the path you know that far back so you know it'll, it'll, it may tag the brakes a little bit but for the most part, it's just going to be a quick tap and go. Uh, like the break for that path signal there is actually somewhere on the curve, I think. Uh, oh, right there on the curve. Um, but that's why, so for the most part, I'm just on chain blocking. But like I said, I give myself a little bit extra room between my path signal, my first path signal, and the block before it just to give it that less likeliness of having to break um just so it can keep the flow going um but i but i also didn't want to have it too far back to where it's reserving this path and it's like way the way the hell over there um I, I want the other trains to still be able to move so you gotta find a happy happy medium spot if you will to where you know it's reserving the path so it can keep its inertia but it's not reserving it too early that could prevent another train from getting in there 
and going, you know, before, um, and then reserving the path before, um, you know, like, um, wasting s s uh, space on the track, if you will. But the one thing I like said, a, a critical thing that I found out for these turnoffs here is having a path signal in the turnoff itself. Because if you don't, then it will technically treat the entire area as one block area. And so if a train is going this direction and you don't have that path signal there, it will stop a train coming the other direction, even though they will never hit each other. Um, so that middle path signal there is critical. If you want continuous flow of uh, the trains. All right, so what I can do now, since these things are operational, we're gonna go ahead and get rid of my floating poles here. Because these are only here uh, during the initial build uh, because I had this switched off I will say I really like these things here the the ceiling you know, how you can have the that mount uh, basically connected to the bottom of the foundation and the bottom of the ceiling um, I'll tell you what I, I, I kind of wish they had in the game um, is on the power poles, you know, have it so the power poles, I don't know, had multiple tiers, multiple connection tiers so that I could potentially run, you know, at the top of the power pole, one power line, and then, you know, at the middle, have another power line, or, or perhaps even create like uh, your traditional... Uh, T cross style power pole so I could run you know multiple power lines um, over a single power pole um, you know just you know especially if you want to use like switches to uh, you know power switches you know it would make it so you could have a cleaner run and let, instead of having you know power poles running side by side um, You know, you know, just a little quality of life, you know, and make things pretty, sort of. I mean, I, I will say, though, you know, I know my, my stuff here is, it's compared to some people's um, bases and buildings and maps, subpar. And I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, but I will give credit to there are some players out there whose bases are oh my god um the amount of time they've spent not necessarily on the the factory building side of it but as far as like the placement on that but just to actually like making the buildings look pretty you know it just blows my mind yes the cosmetic side thank you the cosmetic side that some of these players have put into this game I'm in awe. I'll be quite honest with you. I'm in awe um, with what they've done. All right, so let's see here. So we got my plastic, I'm sorry, I got my fabric and rubber. They're coming here to these six here to make normal filters. Four of these six are going on to make uh, the iodized filters. Um, so we're good here with our supply. Um, and so just actually just do a quick, quick check to make sure you guys aren't backed up on anything. Um, these two here are actually just going into storage for my use. Um, so I should have a handful of here. Um, and then the rest here are uh, making my, uh, uh, what do you call them? Thing we bobbers are nuclear filters. Um, so, yeah, I mean, to me, this game, the, the thing I, you know, I, I, I consider myself a variety game player and I, 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 variety streamer as well. So 
I'll play this game and stream this game. I'll play other games and stream, you know, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll jump around um, and play different games and whatnot. The thing I like about this game that many other games don't give me is this challenges me intellectually sometimes or quite a lot of times in figuring out, you know, this is very heavy on math. Uh, math and ratios and 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 how to get to a certain number and I like that challenge um, and, you know and coming up with uh, you know trying to figure out okay I need to get to something and are you guys yellow or is it just off why are you guys yellow sorry these guys should not be yellow. I didn't kill anything, did I? Oh, you guys are backed up already? Holy crap! Well. Damn. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, I wasn't expecting that to back up that quickly. Um... I guess we'll uh, we'll send that to a smart splitter, and I uh, might as well get some stuff for it, because I might as well keep the production going and get something out of it. Um, uh, where's my smart splitter at? I think. Are you the smart splitter? No, you're not the smart splitter, or uh, the sink. You're the sink. Yeah. So you're going to the sink. I'm, I sent you, okay. You know, we'll just make a new sink. Um, what do I need for a sink? All right, oops. We get a sink and a smart splitter and some conveyor stuff. Oh yeah, and some power. Yeah, we may need one of those. Just a little bit of wire stew. Um, give me a couple conveyor belts. I'm just gonna, and uh, may need a conveyor pole. That's really all I should need for this. I was wondering why those things turned off. You know, it, it's funny because a lot of my factories that I build, you know, I I don't go. F you know, I, I plan them out to a certain point. So eventually I'm going to be making motors up here or turbo motors up here. But I've only built up to the the cooling systems. Um, and then while I'm planning and contemplating how I want to do the next step in the chain, you know, I'll throw the stuff into storage bins just because, you know, that'll give me a chance to go pick it, you know, pick up what I want, um, you know, and to use you know as i see fit um and then once i am ready for the next step of production um you know i'll basically i won't tap into the storage bin um i'll have the storage bin there as a uh, an overflow uh where am i going um there it is so i'll, I'll tap directly off the production line and let me make sure anything else is down here yeah AI yeah, limiters um Yeah, limiters. Um, yeah, so when, once I get ready out, what I'll do is I'll put a smart splitter, um, or I'll, I'll, I'll change a storage bin into an overload bin. Um, because generally, I, there's not too many things that I've actually had a perfect one-to-one -one ratio on um, with respects to the chain, if you will. So, like, I'm technically producing more heat sinks than I need over there, so the, the heat sinks... Once the blenders are full, it'll go to the storage here. Once the storage is full, I'll have it go to a sink. <clears throat> yeah, now I, I've, I've got a smart storage unit set up, but it's more for my benefit and not a train uh, benefit if, if that makes sense uh, or train usage uh, let me see here I am 
we're going to do this. I'm going to take that one off there. Because I'm going to put the sink. I'm trying to stay within a certain footprint here. Um, so I'm going to keep... I'm going to have the sink be right here. So this is going to be a weird little... Weird little layout. Actually, have the sink go that way. Um, but I want to stay within roughly this line here. And... Let me find what line you're on. You, uh, you're on the seam. Okay. So... We'll put you right here ish and that and that actually I mean it makes sense um, and I may eventually get to uh, do something like that as well um, I mean like as far as like or is concerned you know you know right now I've got my uh, my or ring if you will um, so this is all these guys are doing are collecting for the most part uh, copper and iron and a little bit of coal so theoretically um, well well not theoretic well I mean if the ratios are one to one or you know perfect on the um, you know with the train picking up ore at the right rate, you know, I'm, I'm picking up roughly um, 4,300 iron, 1,800 copper, and 1,000 coal. Um, and then I have that going to a different style storage setup. So uh, iron on that level, down right underneath it is copper, underneath that is coal, and this type of weird ass layout and it is a weird ass layout yes um <laughs> and then each uh i have a, an overflow which is pretty much now just jam-packed uh an overflow matrix uh so i've got 36 storage units across by six deep so a million ore per um per floor that I'm I'm using just a very little of right now and all the excess is basically coming into a a bank of uh 36 sinks um so I mean that's weird definitely weird um kind of kind of cool looking in a certain aspects you know but definitely uh Weird. What well, one thing I'm gonna do just for the hell of it, just because uh, at some point in time, I'm going to build a train that is going to have 108 cars, 108 freight cars, just to take one, you know, tapping into each one of these storage bins, and just I don't know, take it maybe the other side of the other side of the world, you know. Just a for fun science experiment -y type of thing. Um, all right. All right, so let me go ahead and do. Go ahead and get rid of that. Go ahead and get rid of that. We'll put our smart splitter. Uh, smart splitter. We'll go here. True. Uh, actually, orange down. Okay, so we'll have a smart spur go there. Do that and that. And then left will be any center, none, right, over. And just double check. I hope, you know, that's one thing I hope they fix. Um, I haven't had so much of a problem with the smart splitter, but the programmable splitters, I hope they get them fixed where you don't have to go into them twice for programming to make sure what you program holds. Um, before I do that, we need to tap into power. And let me see, how did I do power on these? Uh, power there, that's floating power, so that doesn't count. Um, so what we'll do here, I 
think I brought enough for a power pole. I did. Okay, good. We'll bring him out. Put it in line with this roughly there. Well, programmable splitters, I mean, you know, smart splitter and programmable splitters, for all intents and purposes, are the same thing, you know, um, and in most cases will work. But, uh, you know, the benefit of the programmable splitter uh, over the smart splitter is you can add, you know, it's the multi tiered rules. So, depending on, you know, you know, instead of just, you know, specifying, I want, you know, I could say I want cooling systems to go this direction if I wanted I could also add another rule here saying I want heat sinks to go this direction if I was you know sending them down if, if I had something else going down this way so that's the that's the, the really the benefit is just being able to stack the rules um, you know an example um, well because what I, what I have set up in my uh, my base for my and technically, yes, I could have done it with just smart splitters, but how I have my base set up for my smart storage is I, I have a left and right set up to a specific item, and then I have the forward set as any undefined and as overflow. Um, because I, I've never tested it, but if I, I believe if I didn't have any undefined setup, I mean, excuse me, I believe if I didn't have overflow set up and I just had any undefined going forward down my, down the pipe, if you will, that if my left input going to the storage whatnot got, you know, log or overflowed, it wouldn't go forward under the any undefined list, um, but it would under overflow. Technically speaking though, if I had overflow set and not any undefined technically that would also pass the tr uh, pass the stuff forward um because it would be considered overflow but um but I, I just did it that way just because uh i like the flexibility of um being able to send you know having multiple rules on something if i wanted all right so now this thing here's gonna eat these up but that's a Holy crap, how much does the cooling system give me? Okay, that's... Okay, that... Oh, you know why? Because these things were all... Uh, these things were full of uh, cooling systems, that's why. Um, that's why that spike went up there. Because that spike went from 90,000 roughly here to 9 million um but that's just because I, I just slammed that thing full of cooling systems um i gotta look at the wiki here how much is the cooling system worth um on the uh on the sink Twelve thousand, and so if they have a stack value of 100 and I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So let me see here. Eleven times one hundred times uh, what I say? One, two, zero, zero, six. Yeah. So I just slammed that sink worth thirteen million, <laughs> thirteen million in items. This is now going to drop down. Okay, that makes a little bit more sense. But that was actually kind of funny in a in a minute. Now I mean, now my cent now here's the thing about my central storage. My central storage is not set up for automatic feeding. Basically, I feed the central storage um, myself. <clears throat> But eventually, I may build build it out so it does get fed. Okay, you guys, I saw yellow. What are we? What are we backed up on here? Why is my gas mask filters? Okay, I'm seeing a lot of yellow there. No, yeah. So what's going on here? Poly resin, okay. The the oil refineries have 
What's going on with my oil refineries? Why is this half yellow? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, what's up with you guys? The buffers are empty, that's what the problem is. Man, these buffers got drained fast. I was expecting a little bit better flow rate on this. Alright, I know, well... Let's see, can I look at this? That thing is bone dry. Yeah, so that's the issue there is... And the only real tweaking, so it's... This here isn't a matter of pumps and pipes and all that. This is a matter of... Um, product delivery product delivery in a timely manner so how much are you bringing over so you didn't bring much over I, what I may need to do is I may need an extra train or two on here just to even if they're bringing over just a little bit at a time um, I think what it may be is I may just need more trains couple more trains and um, I'm going to I'm gonna overcharge the uh, I'm gonna go ahead and overcharge those last two impures to uh, um, to push them up as high as it can go but that's only gonna give me a little bit of extra fluid I need to go back to my main base and get some uh, Get some crystals. Yeah, I mean, well, I, I let's see here. What I'm also gonna do, I'm gonna because the, the fluid buffers. So I'm going to do a couple things here. Oops. Uh, but first, I need to go to my, my main base and I need overclocking crystals. Um, I'm going to get some overclocking crystals and I'm going to get a, a fluid buffer set up at the oil extraction site. Just to help make sure that the uh, the mines there well like I said I've got fluid buffers on this side um, you know and those fluid buffers if they're full you know will give me you know, um, you know roughly six minutes of a uh, pumping life if you will um the the, the 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 one of the real problems is is the oil refinery over here doesn't actually i mean it's it barely has enough oil to sustain what i'm doing over here um and even by bumping up to uh and i don't know oh i forgot to take off the, I, was, I was wondering why i was seeing empty train cars on those it's, that's because technically it's only a two car system. Uh, I forgot to delete the train car, the extra train car. Um, but um, this site over here, at most, uh, if with being fully overclocked, will give me, um, let me see, 120, 120, it's 300, and then uh, 300 and a 180, I think. Let me see here. Let me see times two point five, one fifty. So at most, I'll I'll be able to pull nine hundred out, and I need eight forty. Yeah, that that that's the thing. It's not a. So even if I overclock it, um, 
However, there might be another alternative. Uh, a pseudo alternative. Let me take a look here at the map. Uh, let's see here. Turn that off. I also kind of wonder if all this, if this wildlife is still going to be here or not. Um, all right, so there is an alternative. Well, there's not an alternative per se, but yeah, the thing is, I can't go up there because it's going to be jacking her up, jacking that part of the map up. Let me look at the let me look at the uh, region map real quick to see if that area is actually getting modified. Now rock there. Yeah, see that's that's the thing that kind of sucks here is um you know the oil in the north is you know you really don't want to build anything in the north because it's uh they're going to be changing that biome well now, and here's the thing also is um the, the stuff that i'm using the oil for thankfully it's not critical uh because it's just it's purely there for two things uh gas filters and the nuclear gas filters so if its production isn't on par per se i'm okay with that um but i would still like to get it a little bit more um get a little bit more oil going there but so I know let me make sure to turn this off um, I know that there is oil in this area here but I don't want to tap into that because that will with update 6 coming out now grant update 6 ain't coming isn't coming out for a while um, at least on early access so I could technically still tap into that um, there's a two impures and a normal up there I can tap into I've already tapped into uh, there is a uh, a nice node over um, the nice node in this area here which I'm already using uh, I've never used the geysers before but the problem with the geysers um, is the really the location they got a geyser set down here roughly um and i really don't want to build a i mean i could do a drone port there if i want um but i, I really don't want to build another train station there so but what we're gonna do uh my train empty nothing return okay uh let me drop this stuff off at I, I, I still need to do my little house cleaning here at main base. It's just like, I'll start working on something and then I'll stop cleaning up and I'll move to another project. So my main base here needs a lot of cleanup. All right, so we're sinking again, so that's good. Um, and how are these things going? So we are backlogged on that. Not quite on that, but that's not that big of a deal because it's using the, the aluminum casings at a very sparse rate. Um, yeah, so this is this is my smart warehouse, if you will. Um, and um, yeah, you, you may or may not see some flying and dropping, what do they call them, giraffe? mobs they may have uh, finally escaped possibly I was doing something earlier in the game and well oh, there they come um, I was doing something earlier in the game and I may have uh, um, accidentally done something 
And I wasn't expecting them to, uh... I wasn't expecting what I was doing to turn into this. Um... I was trying to build something. I, I intentionally spawned a creature um, or two or so. And, um, well, when I deleted those creatures in the save game file, it turned them into these things. So now I've got these things here. And I don't want to kill them. Um, this. The only ones I want to kill are the, uh, the one, you know, the other ones. And unfortunately, because this is the, sp the quote unquote spawn point for it. Um, if I, you know, put a ramp down and let them escape, they're just going to turn around and respawn here. So yeah, it's, uh, I'm, I'm going to have to look at that a little bit closer. But yeah, so normally, because I have storage bins set up here, but the way I set up my storage thing is I've got a storage unit back here, you know, I can throw my goods in here, and then the way I've got it set up is uh, upstairs is the collection point. This is the uh, inner workings. <laughs> it, um storage unit that goes down in the ground pops up here and then I got a line of programmable splitters um, set up and pretty much they're all you know I've got it set up you know with the any overflow because I like said I just decided to go with the multiple rules and um, basically I, I put a sign down here so I know what's what's being fed and I also have a corresponding sign up top but I've got uh, three double stacks and then a single stack um, for the uh, for the, uh, the my storage unit and so I've got 84 um, sets of storage here um, uh, I don't know uh, that's quite a ways down the uh, uh, down the pipe if you will for me so I don't know if I'll be going immediately into update 6 or if I'll be playing another game for the time being and then circling back around to this game yet um, uh, so I haven't really decided on that yet um, but uh, I've got a number of spare units set up down here um, that as I find something that I haven't already labeled, I can uh, change it around and label it. Um, I guess I guess it all depends on, you know. I, I, yeah, I, I just don't know about if I'm gonna cr uh, start fresh or not on update six. Oh no, no. As far as that's concerned, um, I do have an easy way of correcting that, uh, and it won't be on stream because it'll be an off-stream mercy killing. Because um, really, that's going to be the only way technically to get rid of these guys. Because I even went through the save game editor and deleted them again, and it still showed them in the uh, in the game. So um, it'll be an off-stream mercy killing for these guys. Um, is uh, because I'll tell you what I was doing. I created a little, I created a little pad up here. Um, or a little not a pad. I, I created a building. Um, that is pr approximately where they're dropping from the sky, which is about this height here. I had a building that had ten rooms in it behind glass and in each of those rooms I had enemies so I had a room full of hogs you know two or three hogs I had a room full of alpha hogs a room full of the spiders the little baby spiders and the medium spiders and this and that so I had you know I had basically it was a it was a zoo of all the bad things that could hurt you um, and it just it wasn't quite what I wanted so what I did is I went onto the save game editor 
and I just went ahead and uh, deleted them. So I thought from the save game editor uh, and, and got rid of the building. What I didn't take into consideration is that it was treating that as a quote unquote spawn point. And as a result, these things here now have spawned. Now, I believe, like I said, if I kill these things, um, that should clear the spawn point. Um, I Well, I'll find out on the next stream because I went into the, if I go into my save game file right now and delete these things, it still shows them on the save game map, uh, which is, eh. So it was a odd side effect of what I was trying to build. Um, yeah, I haven't really used the save game map thing to do much as far as manipulation. I did a blueprint of uh, base I have to the north, and I've gone through and I had a whole bunch of loot boxes that were scattered all over the place and so I, I used that to like move stuff to me but never tried uh never tried doing that before oh shit what do you got there sod <laughs> oh you got it <laughs> all right let me see this and be warning if you look at this you may see something you may not want to see Well, it's censored out a little bit, so that's that's good. That's good. And how many how many save and loads did you have to do to get that shot? <laughs> so so you circumcised them. Okay, that's good. <laughs> um, I I well, I mean, I'm just now hitting six hundred hours, so I don't. I definitely. I mean. I have roughly probably 300 hours in since my restart and <laughs> all right man have fun with your sniping um I had about uh, actually let me see here um prior to my return uh let me see how many hours I had in because I stopped playing back in 2020 and I had just roughly 200 hours in so I've put in another 400 hours since I uh, since May 7th when I uh, started again, um, and what I've really done since my return. I mean, I've actually, believe it or not, I've revamped most of my production here just to kind of clean it up a little bit. Um, so I've almost. To a certain extent remade this base and I've definitely expanded the space um, and because I last ended on update three um, these can go back I think to what you call it because I uh, last played on update three they made a number of changes uh, to recipes between three and five so I had to redo a couple of things like my nuclear power for one. Um, so this guy just cracked me up. I had to redo my nuclear power because they changed how um, they changed how nuclear power was, uh, how certain things in nuclear power were being made. Um, that be enough filters for the time being. Um, well, <laughs> as far as like cleaning up stuff um pretty much what i've done is i've literally deleted entire production lines just to redo them in a more semi-consolidated and possibly cleaner method so as an example this uh oops, this area here um I redid the belt work, I redid the feeds. Um, one thing I, I'm starting to do is anytime I've got foundries or smelters, um, I, I'm not a fan of this, you know, because so what I've done, for example, is any um, oh, auto save where I've got smelters and foundries, because those are the only two things um, really that have that 
you know, you can't see through smoke type thing. So what I've done is I've taken advantages, uh, I've taken advantage of roofs. And so, yeah, you may see the smoke there, but as soon as I get closer to it, um, the smoke, it gets, you know, pretty much completely concealed by the, for the most part, by the ceiling. So, you know, I've started encapsulating some of my buildings uh, that produce heavy smoke. Um, and again, uh, I've started doing a lot of under the floor bell runs and pipe runs. This was more of my test area to do this. So I've got more stuff being run on the ceiling now. Um, Cause on my previous playthrough, I did not, I didn't buy anything from the awesome shop. Um, so I didn't have these handy dandy, you know, the conveyor holes uh, between floors and stuff like that. So if I wanted to run a conveyor, even though technically I could do it clip through and work just fine, I would have, you know, I would have an open hole there to run it. Now I have open holes all over the place right now just cause I'm flying through and, you know, just doing stuff. But uh, eventually I won't have any holes like this between floors. Um, but I've just, I've tried to somewhat organize some of the stuff this place this space here is still a complete mess i'll be honest with you um but this is actually where I, when i started the game this was and still is technically my home base uh or my main base um i've expanded out the base or the functionality of the base um so i've got uh nuclear and oil over there uh, I've got my desert base somewhere in that direction. Um, in fact, let me let me hop on a train here. Who's next to leave? I've uh, started using trains a lot more, along with drones. I've got a couple of vehicles being used, but um, I've uh, definitely done a a lot of stuff with trains. So my train set on the far side of the map is dual lines so one um one line going each direction this is my bi-directional line so uh, i've got multiple trains that share this common line and what i've done here because it's more of a shorter distance i find it to it's it's okay for this is i've got a number of these slip tracks um between the two uh stations and for the most part because of the proximity to um, the the two stations, it doesn't seem to be that bad, except on the shorter distances. Long haul, these slip tracks were not very effective or efficient at all. <clears throat> but yeah, so my nuclear power was originally um back in let me see where am i at um i'm approaching this station so my nuclear power was originally uh somewhere in this area here um i decided to relocate it to uh um over here now Well, I mean, the thing about the game is the, the stuff they're doing on update six, you know, a lot of it from what they're saying is going to be based on, you know, it's more focused on the exploration aspect of it. So as far as the factory building aspect of it, that there isn't really going to change from what I understand. Um, it's more going to be on, you know, they're changing a couple of the biome areas. You know, giving you different ammo types for your um, rebar and for your explosive football and your rifle, um, and a couple other things. Like I, I don't, I don't. Know if, I mean, I last I heard they're still doing it. I haven't heard that they're, they're changing it, but you know, they're giving you more equipable slots. Last time I heard, I don't know. Like I said, I'm not sure if they changed that or not. Um, but as far as the factoring building aspect of it's concerned, I haven't heard any mention on that being changed. 
And I, that's the one thing I'm really looking forward to is being able to have my jetpack and my hazmat suit on at the same time. All right, so let's take a look at my nuclear stuff. See how some of this stuff is going. I haven't been over here in a long time. Um, so we're jam-packed, which is good. And let me hop through here, see how this thing's going. Well, these are jam-packed pretty much. Oh, actually, no, they're not, uh, the output's not full, so that's good. Um, and I've got the sink set up. Oh, that's why the output's not full, because I've got the sink set up. Um, and everything, I don't see any, I don't see any red lights or uh, yellow lights. Let me uh, go back here a little bit further. This is where I use drones the most. Um, I'm just looking at my blenders there to see if I see any yellow lights. But uh, I have a, a massive drone set up here, as you can see. And uh, this here is, th these guys are pretty much all uranium collectors. Um, so I have them going out to a, a couple uranium mines that are out there and I basically, instead of training it in or doing a ridiculously long conveyor belt, I have them going via drone. Um, and uh, essentially, it gets sent down underneath here, shot into that massive storage unit there. Um, and then, it, 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 it's it's redundant, but it it gets dropped off there, goes down, goes in the storage, then comes back up and then gets fed to the machine. So it's kind of amusing. And then I got my fuel rods being sent out that way. Um, and I haven't looked for a while, so I don't know. I don't know if my fuel rods, if they've actually, uh, my fuel rods should be almost on a one for one. Um, so yeah, they're pretty much on a one for one, um, a one for one, uh, construction. And then, so I got my, uh, nuclear waste. It goes around the corner and, uh, I'm gonna make sure I don't fall in the water here. It goes into my train station here. And then my train takes its seven minute journey up to the top of uh, Nuclear Waste Island, if you will. Um, let me see here. At, three, at a rate of 300 a minute, which is actually, you know, it's proper rate. And let me see here. Long hypertube. Actually, let me do something here. Um, and I don't know if, uh, let's see here. Let's see, we are on this line here, okay. I don't know if, uh, uh, let me see, let's uh, let me check here. Yeah, so Callie will appreciate this. Uh, let, me, uh, let me do something here real quick. Just as a safety precaution. I, I still may die, so I'll, I'll make sure to save before that, but I'm gonna... Eh, right about here. Let me put up a wall real quick. No, not a tilted wall. Oh, that could be interesting as well. But I don't know how it's gonna... I don't know if you hit a tilted wall, if that would treat, treat it as... Hitting, uh, coming out of the slope. So, I'm gonna build a... Ooh. Alright. Um... Last time I did this, I came out to here. Actually, you know what? I can do this. 
just for the time being. Here, give me a couple of foundations. Just to, just to be on the safe side. Fizz. Alright. That, that's just going to be a safety precaution. Um, but yeah, so that's my 800 meter um, spiral. Corkscrew. Uh, roller coaster. Got a ladder up there in case I lose power and have to climb up there the old fashioned way. So, you know, it's a, it's a nice view from up here, you know. You get to see the, uh, see, you know, the map and all that for a few minutes. But it still takes a couple minutes just even riding the hypertube. So now we've hit the uh, the first fog level. And now I'm taking radiation from my uh, nuclear waste up top now. Now we're at a point that we're higher than the drones. Pretty much you can't see the ground at all anymore. So this is my nuclear waste site. And so I was mentioning before about the, the ceiling limit. Um, so let me do this. Let me take off, uh, let me grab about that many foundations. And let me go ahead and uh, Drop some foundations here real quick. So how, how many can I zoop? Eight, okay. Eight it is. So if you notice as I go up here, um, you'll, let me see here. The, the, how it's actually even getting more and more foggy the higher I get and you know, let me just, let me see how high I can go. Um, before I actually start taking damage, not from radiation, but just in general. Um, so this is what I consider almost uh, the ceiling of the game. And actually before I go too far, just, just in case, because <laughs> So I'm, like I said, I'm, this is what I consider to be, you know, the top of the world, if you will. That's why I stopped building where I did. Um, is all I see is an outline of my, that there. I'm not that far up from it. Um, so that's, that's what I was talking about, about this being, you know, pretty much the top of the world for me. Um, cause even, uh, cause even running around the general area, the, I get a flicker on the, uh, you know, when I'm moving around. Um, so it's, uh, But eventually what's going to happen over here is I'm going to have uh, this area will be built out with uh, the stuff to transform this stuff here, uranium waste, into plutonium fuel rods, which will then get turned uh, sent into the sink for that. Now the fun part, my hypertube non-cannon cannon, cannon, yeah, non-cannon cannon so i don't have the traditional hypertube cannon set up where i've got a chain of entrances to make you massively accelerate uh 
Uh, how many? Oh, uh, you say storage cap? What do you mean by storage cap? Um, you can put as much storage down as you want. Um, provided you got the materials. I mean, right now, I mean, just as an example, in the game in total, um, uh, in this save file, I have. Uh, let me see here. I have over. 1700 of these double stacks oh how much do i have here now um uh so i've got three wide here so three by one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and sorry i think you meant cap as in limit not cap as in capacity that's ten 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. So that's 75 there. Three by that. So that yeah, that's 75 there. Plus, I got another triple minus, uh, triple minus four. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two. So uh, twenty two times three minus four. Plus 75, 137 storage units up here, each with a capacity of five, uh, 500, oh, excuse me, each with a capacity of 48, and then each stack size is 500, so I can, I can hold 3 million barrels, 3, three, three million plus barrels of uranium, um, it takes so each storage unit um so 48 by 500 um each storage unit holds 24,000 and i have a a, a a waste generation rate of 300 a minute so each storage unit gives me an hour and 20 minutes of in-game uh generation so uh, every hour and 20 minutes, one storage bill, bin fills up. Um, and so the, uh, the front rows here have already uh, filled up. Um, ooh, uh, I'm not sure about this set here, but in looking at it, and I got to keep an eye on my hazmat suits because I don't have... Um, you go through radiation suits here quickly. So pretty much all these are filled up. So that's, Jesus. So we're already uh, working on our, working on this half now. Or no, we're working on the tail end of these. Probably this guy here. Yeah. So this is the one that's, maybe this one. Yeah, so we have two bins out of this set until the 75 is full. And then it'll work on that uh, set over there. So my ultimate goal is to get to the point where I can convert this over before it fills up. And if it fills up, well, guess what? I'll just add more storage units. All right. So just a forewarning on this, if you uh, have a possible tendency of epilepsy or anything like that, you may want to avert your eyes because this will turn into a screen flicker here in a few minutes or a few seconds. And that's my hyper tube cannon. I don't need the multiple entrances. You know, I've actually, I, I was messing around with this before and I had this guy here turned, angled up just slightly. 
Um, granted, this is not as fast as uh, the real hypertube cannons, but this guy here, uh, I had it angled up. I think uh, that was either angled at a 30 degree angle, maybe a 45 degree angle. And it shot me from there um, over to my oil refinery um, over here. Where those uh, where those uh, uh, oranges over there? So it shot me that far. Um, something. Oh, that's um, that's right. Um, now, granted, I wasn't prepared for it, so it killed me. But um, I, I don't know. I can't remember if I had my. Uh, I don't remember what I had equipped. Um, but whatever it was, I wasn't prepared for it in. But I've seen people build hypertube cannons to shoot themselves across the map. Um, which is actually kind of amusing. All right, I think I can go ahead back to my normal hover, or no hover pack. I, I've, you know, I, I on one hand I kind of wish they didn't introduce the hover pack. Because I am so spoiled now with it. Um, hmm. Darn. Um, so let me see here, just trying to c contemplate on, uh, oops, trying to look at something here on my interactive map. Does it not? Really? I've never made turbo fuel. Um, uh, just because. Um, I just never really saw the need for it. Um, because really, you know, as far as generation, as far as generators are concerned. Yeah, I mean, so nuclear has got its pros and cons. The pro, a lot more power from a single unit. Con, you generate waste. Um, no, that's right, yeah, because the package is only good in vehicles, not, uh, not uh, what you would call it. Yeah, it does suck. Well, so, um, you know, obviously, so when I started this game here, um, you know, with respects to power, I'm just, I'm waiting for a train to come this way so I can, uh, uh, catch a ride, but, uh, started with coal, obviously, and then as I made my way over here, I set up, uh, uh this oil refinery here, um, it has... Um, this oil refinery is, uh, I'm trying to think here, um, it's good. this oil refinery here is giving me roughly 3,000, 3,000 power, basically. So I got 3,000 power coming out of that coal gen, or that oil refinery there. Um, and then... I've got another oil refinery in the Spire Coast on the far, far side of the map. Um, which that there's that one is the one that may well will probably get relocated via blueprinting um, once they do the final release on six, um, or or it depends on how um, 
you know where they throw new oil modes uh, nodes down at but the far side does 6300 and then I've got 30 nuclear power plants there uh, which is technically enough to be operated if you have one pure uranium node um, at triple overclock on a Mark III because that will give you 900 uh, or 900 600 um, 900 600 something like that but if you have a pure uranium node with a Mark III miner triple overclocked it can sustain 30 power plants 30 nuclear power plants provided you have all the you know everything set up for efficiency But then uh, my coal plant, because uh, I, I, I like what I like what Cali's doing for his uh, coal plant, because um, he actually set his coal plant up in the same place I set mine up at, but his is a little bit more. Uh, he, he's got a better vision of how he wants it set up and ran, because unlike him, uh, I'll admit I'm I'm more belt driven than I am non-belt driven so as you can clearly see I've got a conveyor belt there that's going into the sky over down that way I've got conveyor belts going that way so I'm very dependent on conveyor belts I've got one road set up and that was just a, a test and it actually turned out to be good minus the some glitches in the UI but the, the the road works well you know but i'm not just up oh, and there they are again um just haven't really you know i i'm more heavily dependent on conveyor belts in most cases uh, i'm trying to lean a little bit away from that now that i've got drone technology in that i'm probably going to use uh, some more drones to do what i need to do um, but like my coal platform, and I need to label these. I think it's the top one. It's not the bottom one. Uh, I don't. I mean, I think it's this one here. Find out here in a second. Yep. I dropped down and got sucked into the other one. <laughs> oh, that's right. I, I haven't, I haven't uh, finished those out yet. Um, but this is my coal base over here. Um, let me see if I can get a good spot to look at it. Well, I still have my hover power. So I've got 48 coal plants going. Um, with... Uh, off of three miners because I haven't blown up that one location yet um, there's that one um, there's that one uh, um, coal node that's under the rock I haven't blown that up yet um, so I've got three mark threes here uh, I believe they're all overclocked triple overclocked um, and this gives me a whopping 3600 power um but by far this here <laughs> has been the most stable power i've had uh once i actually got it set up um no fluctuations uh because there's no byproducts you have to worry about all he cares about is hey give me coal give me water um so overflow it with water you know so I believe because uh, the water structures are technically a um, it's a one to two ratio so if for doing multiple things um, for every two power plants I have one water extractor um, so I believe the water requirement on this is um, is it 40 
I think. Was, uh, no, it's 50. So I've got, you know, triple water extractors. Now, granted, right now my pipes, this was built out during Mark, well, uh, before I had Mark II pipes. So everything is, you know, I've only got a, I've got a, a flow limit of 300 in the pipes, which is exactly what the power plants need. Um, haven't really had a problem with water. Um, and if I did, I could just simply upgrade all the pipes because that would give me an extra flow of um, 60 down the pipes. Um, and so I would never technically run out of water or be close to running out of water on the, uh, on the generators themselves. But it's, I mean, it, it's not as, I, I, like, I, I like what he did with the, um, his stack set, because, you know, it does, like he said, uh, like he said, it allows him to uh, expand, um, expand on uh, things. Because um, what I did is I segmented my power plants in uh, segments of 12. Um, just for ease of splitting and uh, ease of water. Um, and like I said, I, and I, I mean, it's, it's functional. It's not necessarily the prettiest, but, and I still, like I said, I haven't tapped into that node there. Um, and realistically, I haven't had a need to. Where the hell are you going? Oh, that's coming from my nitrogen plant. Or my other nitrogen plant. And if, I mean, even though the belts look all backed up, that's because I, I, I slammed them full of coal before I, you know, basically I uh, jump started them. Um, the amount of, um, the amount of ore that I'm producing or drawing is exactly enough um, for 48. So even though the belts, like I said, may look backed up, it's um, technically running as it's uh, on a one-to-one -one ratio with respect to how much coal it needs in is technically how much it's getting per minute or whatnot. Um, but but jump-starting belts is that's one of my uh, one of the things I do. So that makes things look like they're backed up. All right. So, now I got to think about what my next factory is going to be, or not factory, what, what, um, my next item in the production line. I'm thinking about, uh, working towards the turbo motors and abracadabra. <laughs> oh, hey, not on stream, guys. Take it to another room. All right, so let me take a look here at some of my other production real quick. Oh, actually, you know what? Uh, I do need to take some stuff back with me. Um, and actually, I'll grab those off the lower level. Actually, a couple things I need to take with me. Um, so I don't think it's going to help much, but... We are going to over, uh, finish overclocking those two uh, oil items. Um... Just to uh, get them up to what they need to be at, or just so they're maxed out. And then, let me grab some oil, uh, iron rods here real quick. Um, because I, pretty, I have a low supply on the other side, so i just go ahead and grab a handful. Ah, come on. Uh, I don't remember. Oh, I think actually copper sheets also. 
I think I was low on copper sheets. Let me just grab some of those as well. Actually, no, I got a storage bin downstairs with them. So we'll go ahead and take off that storage bin since it's just a... Uh, it's waiting to be emptied out. Oh yeah, and then I also have a sink deposit here, so if I want to throw something away, you know, off the overload, I can, you know, come to the overload, like, oh, nope, come to the overload, take all this ore, for example, because I'm not going to use it, and I can bring it over here to the sink and drop all this ore in it, just uh, keep things clean. Uh, 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 uh. All right, so how, how close are we to filling up our six pack? Uh, so this guy here is on the last part of his six pack. And how are we doing on you? Oh, we are at overload. Okay, so I could technically turn you off if I wanted to, but I might as well, you know, generate the stuff and sink it. And then, how are we looking over here? So... Gonna have our versatile or fuse frames full here in a little bit. And I still need to figure out what I'm gonna do with that stuff. Cause we're probably gonna take those, uh, start feeding those versatile frames. I think those are used in the turbo motor, I think. Um, No, they're not. So, the thing we're going to be doing is we're going to put together a motor manufacturer over on the other side, just because the, the stators and rotors, um, I got plenty of ore on the other side to build those up. Uh, rubber, I've got uh, some other options for rubber that I can use. I've got these built already over here, so I can just fly these over in little chunks and I've got well I got a mega storage full of that so um yeah it won't be that bad to do and I said I was going to go grab this copper copper is in this guy here oh I think I'll go ahead and clear this also because I don't need that anymore All right, so I'll just take some of that over for now, just so I can replenish my little workspace. Because the way I, I kind of plan out my uh, my factory production lines is so, like for the turbo motor, I'm gonna base its production line on my. Uh, on my cooling system manufacturing. Um, so I believe I'm making roughly 66 a minute. So I'm gonna base the turbo motor on production of just under 66, uh, just under what would require 66 a minute, just cause I like having a little bit of a buffer with respects to uh, in case I need a cooling system for something. Which, let me see. Uh, cooling systems. What are cooling systems used in? Um, cooling system. The so cooling systems are used in... Um, supercomputer alternate. Propulsion rocket, which is an elevator uh, item. And the turbo motor. So that's from the assembly perspective. Um, so, uh, so supercomputer, thermo, and turbo motor, and then from a build gun, um, it's used to make the particle accelerator, which is part of the nuclear cleanup. So, I, I think I've got more than enough. But now from the elevator item, because I've. Um, you may see it from time to time 
my objective is to build the sky elevator. I tore it down for the time being just because uh, uh, just because it was in the way at my factory. Um, but for the space elevator, because I'm on the, the last tier of the space elevator, which is basically propulsion is the tier name to phase four. So I need 4,000 assembly director systems, 4,000 magnetic field generators, um, 1,000 nuclear pasta and 1,000 thermal propulsion rockets. So, and all that gets me is the employee of the planet cup, which I can, I think I can equip that in my hand and, you know, and that actually, that would probably actually be uh, something to carry around, just a, uh, what you would call it, so I don't have to carry a weapon around or something and I suddenly shoot myself or shoot something. That's actually something I'm really looking forward to on six. The holster ability. So, you know, so you, you can hide your hands when you don't actually have anything in it. Because I have on many occasions either fired a weapon or use the inhaler for no reason. Um, I'm also looking forward to um, who's got a reservation? Okay, that was a weird weird early stop that was that was an unusual stop I don't know what that was all about oh okay never mind I see now my eyes were playing tricks with me I didn't I completely lost track of that guy in front of us because the blocking is keeping them spaced out and now Damn, coal train, get out of my way. All right, so what I'm going to do here as the train comes into the station, I'm going to take a quick break, grab me something more to drink, and I'll be back in just a few moments.
All right, so before I oops, let me turn this auto drive off so it stops flashing. Um, let me I'm just gonna do something here on my little oh, excuse me spreadsheet for a second to do some calculations on something. Percent uh, equals that divided by that. Yeah, okay. And then, and that, okay, and that, and that, equals that, that, okay, and then that. Think that that equals that that. All right. Okay. All right. What a. I'm gonna do something here. Um, so I got my crystals on me, right? Oh yeah, let me drop off all this excess stuff here real quick. Uh, let's see, which one do I put these in? I don't remember actually, yeah, I have no idea. I think we put the copper with this guy here, I believe, as using those together for the pipes. And yeah, we'll put the iron rods in this guy here. Oh, I had extra copper there, but this copper bin is, f oops, that copper bin is full. Right, that's okay. Uh, I did, do got my crystal, wait, where's my, okay, whoo, I was gonna, all right, we're gonna do something here. Just wanna kinda, kinda gauge some things here, cause I gotta, well, actually, let me, let me just grab these real quick just so I can have the material on me. Um, after the second round trip. Uh, let's see. Heavy mods. Where are the heavy mods? Uh, go ahead and just take a stack of that. And then the heavy mods. Yeah, I got heavy mods on one of these. There they are. Um... Just gonna take that small stack. All right, so what we're gonna do, <clears throat> I'm gonna go for a round trip train ride. I wanna, I wanna see how long the train trip is. Just to figure out some math stuff. All right, cool. So you just got here. All right, you're gonna go through the docking process. So keeping an eye on my my clock here to time this out. And then obviously there's there'll be some variance in the round trip time just because of potentially other trains leaving in front of us. All right, so 24 seconds after, so 12 o'clock and 24 seconds is when we initially departed. And the, the variance in time isn't gonna be that much, maybe at most 10 seconds, um, again, for traffic. Um, Because the one thing, unfortunately, that I guess there's it's still a little buggy in the game is the train, the train rules, if you will, in that you can technically set up trains to actually wait for a full load or whatnot. Um, 
but I've I've seen people say that that's a little buggy, um, but we can still try it. Um, all right, so the trip duration to get here for the first stop. Okay, so we are now at 12.02. Okay, so, so, so far it's a minute and 40 seconds roughly for half the leg. And the docking process, regardless if it's empty or full or whatnot, um, without any special rules being applied, still takes the same amount of time. So they will still go through the motions. All right. <clears throat> now we're departing at two minutes and 30 seconds ish. And that is quartz. No, that's oil. So we had the initial break there because, oh, you know what I need to do actually? I need to put a, a potentially a second path signal there. Yeah. I'm, uh, Okay, so we're coming up on, you know, so three minutes and 40 seconds. Okay, we got a clear, a fully uh, clear station, so we're, we're not getting stacked. And we'll time the full docking process, so until we hit, get the green light to go again. So the docking process, I believe, is roughly 15 seconds in total, give or take a couple. Okay, so four minutes. 33 seconds uh, on the clock there. We left at 22. So just over four minutes for a round trip. All right, now let me look at something else here while we go back. Um, we gotta, we're gonna we'll do our overclocking here in a second. All right. So that actually could work out. Okay, so there's gonna be a new plan coming up. Yeah, I need to put in a, uh, um, well, actually, if, if, with what I'm about to do, I don't actually have to do that. Um, so we're gonna do a couple things here. One, I'm gonna uh, add some fluid buffers down here at the uh, oil refinery or the oil extractor to, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, give, uh, just so they, just to give some room here. Oops. Oh, I'm, oh wait. <laughs> it's like, I'm wondering why I'm not doing anything. It's because I'm not on the thing. Um, yeah, so I got an idea here. Um, my impures are this guy here. Yeah, because actually this is a good test here. A uh, good look here. That's actually interesting. 
I honestly would have expected to see is this going through the, lo the load process that's interesting that's actually really interesting quite honestly um I was expecting that's what I expected to see I don't know why I didn't see that on this But honestly, I mean, I, I do have a flow rate coming from this, but I honestly was kind of expecting to see this backed up a little bit. Actually, now I'm actually, I'm wondering if this, uh, hold on. Did these pipes get all goofy on me? Oh, I wonder if that's... This guy here is flowing. But is it actually flowing from this? Technically, yes, but... Um, something... I wonder if that's part of my problem. Um, is that... I expect this yeah something's a little goofy here I mean now granted we are loading so yeah it should back up but all right so let's go ahead and do this um, let me let me break this uh, let me break this pipe reconnect this pipe just to see if uh actually you do this go to uh, it that one there yeah no nope no connect into that connect into that right there right come on oh fine you want to be too short i'll give you too short all right All right, let me move the pump back a little bit away from the junction. Uh, you know what? That may, um, well, and even if it was a Mark one, um, I'm not putting, I'm not pushing more than 300 past this. So even a Mark one still, oops, uh, still should have, uh, been able to, um, pass stuff through it. But see this here, something's just not right here. Something is just not right with this. See, this is what I would expect to see. Um, actually, let me see something here. Um, this is what I expect to see when a train comes in. I get that. Um, let me try this, just out of curiosity. Because that one there should have enough head left to go. I think that should have enough head. Actually... I can get rid of... Yeah, so something just... It's... F Wait, let me, do I have... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, you're marked. Let me make sure... Because I need everything to be at, at a mark... Uh, I need everything to be at mark two. Um... There's my bottleneck. Sort of a gunslinger. Taxi, you bastard, come back here. Well, yeah, cause I, I, I forgot to bring pipes with me. Well, there's one of my problems as well. 
Alright, and then I forgot to bring stuff for my piping. Damn it! So it doesn't do me any good to build the fluid buffers right now if I can't uh, uh, put them out. So, and actually, there's my bottleneck as well too. Right there. Though, though, that's, that's part, well, I mean, now here's the thing is, yeah, that's actually a significant bottleneck. Well, I mean, th these things are, you know, coming at a constant rate for the moment, but you know, <laughs> that would make, it would make things easier. Uh, something I just completely overlooked. You know what, we're just gonna, you know, I'm, I'm taking control. We're skipping the station. And now let me go ahead and uh, edit you. Cause we're gonna, we're gonna send these guys to uh, here. Go to spare. No path is valid. The path is very valid. Don't, don't tell me the path is invalid. <laughs> well now see here's the one thing okay if you manually well okay so I don't know if you're referring to accidents with the trains or accidents in the manufacturing process but I will tell you this as far as accidents and trains are concerned you can see you know clearly I can see the the block signals right and so I can I can follow the block signals manually pathing however will not give you any indication if you manually drive because the pathing signal only activates on autopilot um so that's something to keep in mind um now granted you have the ability of like you know looking both ways and stuff like that before uh um driving well, now you can also do a hard break. Um, I don't know if you've ever tried it, but so you got technically two braking methods. You have the normal space bar, which is just like I said, a normal break. But then you also have the regenerative brakes, which is basically pushing the opposite. You know, so instead of W, you know, if you hold down S, that also will break, and that's technically your regenerative brakes. And if you do both simultaneously, you can actually get a good hard break. Um, now granted, it all depends on how fast you're going, on how effective it will be, but um, you can do a hard break um, as well. All right, so we want oil too, so we're gonna do something weird here. Uh, I'm gonna add the timetable. Um, he's gonna oil load right now. Actually, no, so then he's gonna go to oil, and then we're gonna send him to spare two. Okay, and then uh, this is oil one. We're gonna have him go to that, and then we're actually gonna have him go to spare three. Oh, and then actually turn off oil load. No, so turn off this. And then... Uh, oh. <laughs> oh, believe me, I know how that can be. But see, and that's what I was uh, um, I was talking about yesterday. And I'll, I'll, I'll show it here in a second once I... Uh, once this train departs... Um, once he once he departs uh, his st uh, the, the station here after his unload. Come on, buddy. Start moving. So I can. Uh, this, this is oil one. I'd like you to. Okay, you should, your docking cycle should be done. All right, now he's moving. All right, so now I can go ahead and clear that off, save that. 
All right, then uh, oil two. Let me go ahead and uh, go ahead at this timetable to clear that off. Right. He's going to be going for a few seconds. So now if you look at my power, this is what I was talking about before. You notice my production here? Um, how it's it's varying. My base production level is 88050. But as all the trains on this that are tied or touching this line, as they are breaking, uh, or actually all the trains that are on the power grid, because I have all the power grids, uh, tied together you notice how it jumps up it's not reliable in any fashion whatsoever but it does appear in the production side um and that that production spike that you're seeing there that's all from uh that uh reductive braking or reactive braking or whatever the braking is that the trains do um because it, it puts back on to um it adds back to the uh, adds back to the line. But again, it's not it's something that you, uh, you can't rely on for um, you know for production use because uh, if you did, well, that you'd have a you'd have machines. Actually, if you try to rely on that for production power, you would be popping uh, popping breakers left and right. Um, okay, so that is coal. Come on, oil dude, let's go. All right, I think that's uh, that's the other coal train moving. Oh, my oil trains. Oil trains stuck at the uh, intersection, waiting for these guys to go. But I mean, like I said, it's it's just it's it's a small amount, you know. Uh, I think so. At most, I may hit forty megawatts of power um, with it, but it, it's only for a few seconds. Um, yeah, I, I have not put. Uh, I haven't done anything with batteries yet. To, uh, to be quite honest because um, that was something that they didn't have when I previously played an update 3 um, so that's something new um, and for the most part I'm o I mean well I, I definitely have an overage of uh, I definitely have an overage of uh, uh, what do you call it um, power right now um, but yeah, so I mean the one thing is I don't want to build above my base power level because if I do I'm gonna trip breakers and it kills my entire power grid because I don't have I don't have segmented power grids That's a lot of trains um, <laughs> I mean, I, I've got a lot of trains, but that's a lot of trains, too <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and kill that. All right, so he'll now go do his u-turn let me see how many trains, uh, according to the interactive map or my uh, online map, how many trains do I got? Um, okay, maybe I was wrong. I actually have, holy crap, I didn't realize I had that many trains. Some of which are bi-directional um, on one side of the map, but it says I've got 218 locomotives. I have 218 locomotives, um, which is a lot of damn locomotives. Um, a lot of damn locomotives. Uh, does it show me my train stations? It shows me the track. Uh, so I've got 105. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I've got uh, 77 train stations and 218 um, locomotives. With and you know a handful of the locomotives. Or a handful of those are bi-directional, so they're technically on the same circuit, if you will. Um, but like all these over here, um, in this area here, is a uh, single direction. Actually, uh, so I sent them to two. That's one. This is my train, and then two and three are here. So they. Sh 
Okay, he's not coming yet. Uh, he should be here in a minute. I should have a train here. Yep. Let me turn him off real quick. And let me get one thing is I'm going to kind of get rid of this because I forgot to get rid of that freight car earlier. And that is true. Well, it is. Now, now here's the thing I don't know uh, as I've never tried this. And I don't know how it would work. Um, and that is, yeah, so with the global uh, global railroad, you know, you know, you know, technically your power grid is all one master grid. But what might save you from killing stuff on the other side is, you know, so let's just say for the sake of argument, I had the power plant set up over here, um, generating power. In theory, I could have that go into a power switch, then have that power switch feed into this. And then with the power switch being on, if something happened over here that it overdrew power, it may just trip the, the switch and not the entire you know, not the other half the power. Um, I've never, I, I don't know for for sure because I haven't tested that out. Um, all right, so I need, oh, I need pipes. I need, I need some pipe stuff to make some pipes. Uh, I think that was in, nope, uh, nope. There we go, no. I need plastic and copper for pipes. That's that's a train track material. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab a couple of these, I, even though this is more than I need. Uh, and I got the stuff for the buffers already. And I'll just take my train just because. All right, onward. But yeah, so I was doing a manual drive of my train a couple days ago. And I had the green light here, so I started driving out. And I swear to God, I had the green light all the way down the line here. And next thing I know, I got T-boned by a train coming out of the side. It's like, what the hell? And then, to make matters worse, as I'm getting ready to re-rail my trains, uh, I had a train coming out of a uh, station in front of me and I, I, cause I actually kind of think train collisions in this game are hilarious. The train that was coming out in front of me, it didn't re-rail, but it hit my locomotive that was re uh, derailed and knocked my locomotive into the wall uh, and then just went on its merry way. And so like laughing at me the entire, what, entire time. Um, but I do, I do think train collisions in this game are, can be amusing at times until, you know, let's say I had a train collision here. Because most time your train collisions, part of both trains will still be on the track. I had one train collision that one of my trains was still on the track and my other train was scattered down below. Uh, and that made it a little bit difficult to get down to. That it was actually almost, almost out of range of my uh, of my hover uh, hover pack abilities. But it was hilarious, though. Still, you know. All right, so this guy should not go anywhere. Yeah, but I, I tell you, one of the, the best thing. Oh, no, 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 no. Shit. Forgot about that. So I just wasted all that oil. Because I'm not... Well, I, I suppose I could... I suppose I could... We won't waste it, I guess. Um, but one of the best things I learned... or uh, Let me make sure this thing is not going to go anywhere. It's only supposed to go here, so I should get... Uh, path invalid here in a second after it does its full docking cycle. Let me just wait here. All 
Okay, so it's basically going to sit here and just uh, honk its horn at me because it can't go nowhere. Um, but yeah, one of the things I recently learned, I said that I wish I would have known a long time, is I, being able to come here to the train station itself, click on timetable, and actually be able to adjust trains without actually having to go to the actual train itself. Um, it's also beneficial if you have your own little personal train and you hop off at a station and then it, for whatever reason, decides it wants to drive off. You can jump in here and turn off the self auto drive, which is kind of cool. All right, so what we are going to do, uh, I'm going to break this line here for starters. And I'm going to break this line here because this is really the, um, uh, don't really have much room up here. The, the, and I'm not going to expand out that platform. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our, uh, our fluid, our inline fluid buffers here. Oh, stop honking your horn. You'll be moving soon enough and inline storage buffer here. All right. Now go ahead. Yeah, you feel, go ahead and fill that up completely. While you're filling up, I'm going to go ahead and upgrade you. And upgrade you. And then we'll, I'm going to let this thing fill up here for a minute. Okay, this should take, uh, for full load at now, uh, 750. This will take five, just over five minutes to load up. I'm going to let the, let these, uh, both fill up real quick. Uh, what, and also what I should see here is an empty buffer minus it's each of the cycles. But that, that also explains why my numbers were looking all way low. Because I was only passing 600 across the trains as opposed to the, uh, the 420 that, all because of one little bottleneck. See, that's why, that's why I need to stop building the Mark 1s and just build Mark 2 pipes all over the place. Uh, well, see, so, so you're doing a no, con so no conveyor, but so as far as the raw ore, so I'm not, I'm not great, I, I presume you're talking about a uh, long haul transport. So you're obviously doing, a con I'm presuming you're doing a conveyor belt to like the train station or to a truck station or to a drone platform. Um, in a r relatively close proximity uh, to the respective miner or extractor. <laughs> and, and, and that's that's kind of what uh, it looked like uh, Cali was going on, uh, which you know basically he was. Um, you know he's doing the, the and I, I it's gonna be interesting i want to i really want to see how his factory builds out with his uh his, the concept he uh, he's planning on that um and i and i may do something similar i may do some cleanup with my uh locations um to rely more on transportation versus conveyor for you know long distance stuff, you know, um, and tip and then mainly focus on conveyors within the factory areas themselves. Um, just, to I don't know, you know, just like I said, just to kind of clean things up. Um, now, now the benefit of doing that, that means you're packaging your fluids, and then on the flip side, you're unpackaging them. Um, and by doing that, 
it, that's actually good because you can recycle those containers. So once you've determined your, let's say your flow rates and whatnot, um, cause I mean, now are you sending like the empty containers back to the water collection or ore collection site? Um, or are you just sinking them and building fresh ones? Oh, okay. So you're doing. So then you're doing. Uh, you're doing trains for all your fluids and gases. Then. Okay. No, because I mean, because I know. Yeah, you know, if you're using fluid trains. Okay, I got you. I got you. <laughs> and in that case, yeah, that yeah, that's that works great. It's it's when you want to do uh, the transporting of, you know, fluids and gases via, you know, trucks and drones where you have to package them, but. Like I said, the good thing on that is once you get your initial stockpile of empty canisters and, and containers made up, um, you can essentially recycle them in that, you know, I take my product from water extraction, let's say, package it, send it via drone across the map to wherever, unpackage it, and then it goes into the, whatchamacallit, that drone can then bring those unpackaged canisters back to the source. Um, Cause that's actually how I'm doing my, uh, um, my, uh, what do you call it? My nitrogen stuff. All right, so this guy here is just about full. All right, so we are gonna we are gonna drop down to a one train run here because I went and crunched, crunched the numbers, did the math. Um, all right, so let me just double check here, make sure all these connections are because this was the one I missed that bit me in the ass. But I'm actually kind of glad it did bite me in the ass because. Um, you know, <clears throat> all right, so this guy here, oh, this thing, okay, fine. Let me turn your auto drive off so that you will release these things so I can look at them. All right, so this here is going to fill up here in a minute. So I did the math. <clears throat> um, now I am going to, okay, we're going to take you, uh, we're going to take you to oil. And so the math I did is, um, so we're, we're pushing 450 from each pair of, um, each pair of oil extractors. I got a triple overclocked normal, triple overclocked and pure. So 450 each. The load time into a 2400 canister, just over five minutes. However, the load time to get 1600, which is your train limit, is three and a half minutes. So three and a half minutes to get me up to 1600. The 1600, when we get to the station, offloads in just under three minutes. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, two, um, two minutes and 40 seconds, roughly, to do a full offload of um, 1600. That 1600 fills the, the bladders and a full bladder uh, gives me uh, six, I think it's 60. I think each refinery up there was using 60, um, I think. Uh, no, yeah, because 420 divided by seven is 60. So that gives me six minutes and 40 seconds of life, if you will. Um, right. so what we're going to do is we're going to break the, um, we're going to break the, uh, system again. Um, just cause I want to start over semi from scratch. So I'm going to turn off my power here and then I will rerun. I'll do that thing I did before with the, uh, um, I'll, I'll tie the power in, um, 
just to the pumps so that these can get filled in. So I did a, a break here and then no, well, 420 is what's needed. However, 450 is what's being uh, oil, uh, oiled. Yes, 450 is being oiled. 450 is, is what's being extracted. I need 420 up top. So I'm over extracting, which I mean, you know, better to over extract than to under extract because I'm not going to use that extra oil anyhow. So, or I mean, it's not going to, that extra um, oil is not going to go, you know, 60 oil is not really, I'm not going to build a refinery or anything for that. Um, <clears throat> all right, so let me go ahead and get this connected to that. Okay. And let me see if I got enough power cable for this. Actually, I, I do because I can just tie it to this. All right. So that will get the pumps moving. All right. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to send my train. <clears throat> back to my station so edit you will go to my station via coal so actually technically one train will be actually be fine and the reason one train will be fine is because of the round trip time but i but that that is after i get I'm going to jump start the fluid buffers. Uh, that's the key. Is I want the fluid buffers to be jump started. Because if you think about it, there's a four minute, <clears throat> four minute round trip time for a train, just over four minutes. Okay. So um, let me let me get this uh, moving first. The so oil load and then oil. So. It takes, so this train's gonna to get to the other side. It's gonna load 1600 oil up because the fluid buffer on the other side is full already. It's gonna then take approximately two minutes, roughly, a little over two minutes to get back here. And it will do a 100% full offload of 1600 um, oil. That, or, uh, why aren't you moving? Go, dude. Okay. Yeah, you, you kind of need to be out of the way, buddy. So, uh, 1600 in each car. Okay, you're, you're oh, auto save. Um, so, 1600 fluid in each car is going to come here. And once I get control of my character again I'll continue the explanation so 1600 fluid in each train or in each freight car long train leaving okay uh, so 1600 will come into the each of one of these it will take two minutes and 40 seconds to offload 100% uh, um, ensuring that the train can continuously fully offload the buffers themselves up here hold 400 and so that 400 because the the draw on this is 60 um this 400 here once it actually gets full would last six minutes oh i do have four times uh i do have that so no i need 420 so the the first half uh, so i got 420 on this pipe segment and 420 on this second pipe segment <clears throat> and so 1600 um is coming to each one of these uh once that actually does get here um and, one, and like i said with the jump start um i'll be pulling in 1600 every technically the the oil extractors um 
total, yes. Minimum total between both trains. Um, so, um, but, yeah, yeah so uh, 840 total between both trains. So I need a minimum of 420 here, minimum of 420 here. Um, so because it's only gonna take three minutes to get to the 1600 on the far side, that means on every round trip, I should be able to get a full train car. Um, and we'll we'll validate that here as soon as this train gets back. Um, because what we should see, because of round trip time is just over four minutes. Because the key here is I need the round trip to be under six minutes because th that is once the fluid buffers upstairs are full. Because as long as it's under four minutes, or excuse me, under six minutes, then this process should work. Actually, let me look at this here. All right, so oil is, that's bauxite. Okay, so there's oil. Okay, so oil three is my, oil three is the main mover. Oh, does it say round trip on here? And there, does it? Or, Or is that what I mentioned earlier? I don't remember. Or does it say that? Uh, uh, oh, okay. I'm sorry. I, okay, you're saying okay. Uh, so round trip time is roughly uh, four minutes, just around four minutes. So we'll say four, four point two minutes. My fill time. So actually, so if I if I do this quick enough, we should have a full sixteen here. Come on, look real quick. Look real quick. So sixteen are good. All right, so we have an empty train car here. By the time we get back there, the fluid buffer, technically the fluid buffer should be full over there because we did, uh, we added the inline fluid uh, buffers on the low level. Um, and that's just, those lower level fluid buffers are just basically because of docking uh, because the oil extractors can't hold that much so that's just going to give it a buffer for uh during the docking process and eventually even that will fill up i think but you figure you know it's roughly four minutes give or take from when the train departs the station that we're coming up to until it does its full circle return. Um, and, and, I, I, and actually, this fill time is actually gonna be a little bit faster. It's, it's gonna be a little bit misleading because the lower fluid buffer is actually gonna be um, feeding at a faster rate. So we're full here already. Yeah, let me take a look at these real quick. These here, these are already full. So if you think about it, the actual fill time, the fill time from the lower fluid buffers to the upper fluid buffer, or, or, the, or the freight buffer, that actually takes two minutes in, uh, two minutes and 40 seconds um, because it's the, it's full. The fill time from the extractors to the lower fluid buffer will take the three and a half minutes. Um, which, and let me see here. Uh, so if we do 450, uh, 450 by or let's just say so 1800 on a four minute span or 450 by 4.2 1890 so almost 1900 yeah and that's the thing is it, in theory because technically yeah well depending on how much fluid you're putting out 
that, okay, that didn't sound right. Depending on how much fluid is being ex extracted, put it that way, a, you will, yeah, the, the more trains you have, the, the more, uh, a little bit of a loss, if you will, because of the, the load unload process. Unless you have an inline uh, buffer on the loading side. Um, so you could technically run 10 trains and as long as they're, you know, it would theoretically still come close to what you need. The problem I had really was those two pipes because those two pipes took me down to, um, what do you call it? Um, these should be, uh, those two pipes, you know, dropped me from a 450 or 420 down to a, um, what do you call it? 300. All right, so these things are full. All right, we're gonna go ahead and start this up again, and then I'll redo the power connections downstairs. Um, so we'll, we'll see how this goes. So this will be the test because the lower fluid buffer is at 71. Or well, we'll see here because you got to remember, I'm actually bringing in more oil than I need, technically. So instead of the 420 on each line, I'm now bringing technically 450 on each line, um, because of. Um, because I have everything overclocked. So, this will be the ultimate test here. We tie that back in a switched power and then tie this guy. I can touch it. There, did I touch it? Uh, you're gonna make me get more cable, you bastard. That's okay. So, this guy here is, um, we just had our drop off. So now, let's see how the, the fluid buffer is upstairs. Let's see how these are working. Okay, so the fluid buffers are maintaining, you know, the these guys have been bone dry forever. Um, or at least the machines have. Um, so I'm expecting to see these uh, be a little bit low right now just because I don't recall what level these were at when I turned off the refineries. Um, some of these were I know were bone dry. In theory, yes. <laughs> um, now there could be a slight variance just because of um, the delivery time. Because if a train gets held up for you know a couple seconds or whatnot, it may vary the time yeah, a little bit. Um, but the train should, on every trip, the train should be full um, because of the actual, oops. Um, because of the load time to fill the buffer up over there, um, is less than the round trip time. So every time this train comes in, it should be at 1600. This guy here, um, should go, this guy here should go bone dry and that's fine. This guy here is not going, um, the reason why this guy here isn't as bone dry, I don't know. Um, but I'm okay with this guy going dry because all the buffers upstairs were full and the train uh, should be coming here shortly. Oops, trains. Um, so let me see here. So that's or, that's or. Gotta find my damn trains. <laughs> you got the damn ring of trains here. Oh, there's the oil train. So here comes the oil train now. So I'm going to kind of gauge this guy here as my uh, 
benchmark. Um, we got a few few minutes before it shows up. Let me look at the buffers up here. So these buffers are still still good because like I said I got six minutes uh, roughly on these buffers. Six minutes of life. Um, oil train is should actually be pulling into the uh, pulling into the facility right about now. Yep, there it is. So, yeah, so I should see 450 for the moment. Um, I would I would say um, maybe a little. Uh, we'll find out here in a second. So 322 on that. 322. But now here's the thing that's misleading on this. This is average over time. So it, it's gonna take time to steady out. Um, I am kind of curious though. I, I, I wanna look at the draw rate on these here. Uh, let me, here let's, number one, let's just do a quick check here. Yellow, I don't like yellow. So why are you yellow? You got fluid. Oh, you're backed up, okay. So now that's odd. Oh, you know why? Well, maybe no you you're backed up okay so you're not backed up so that's good um I'm overproducing fabric technically um so that's actually this this actually makes sense um so I've actually hit a saturation point on this because no, something ain't right there. Something ain't right. Um, hold on. Let me let me oh wait, let me think here a second. Um, fabric and rubber are coming to this. Fifteen each. That does five. Five by ten. Wait, right? Five, ten. Uh, One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The ten, twenty. Uh, so that's um uh, da, 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 uh, uh, 100. Yes, I can do multiplication sometimes. So that's 100 fabric out. And I need 15, 1, 2, 3. Four, five, six, um, 90. So I'm overproducing fabric, um, which that's fine. Um, <clears throat> what I should do, and I think I probably will, is I have this nice handy dandy sink right here that, uh, you know, I think we just may uh, throw in a smart splitter in the, uh, tap off that because this well we're not gonna do that without uh, resources because that kind of goes this is okay we're gonna do something here real quick because this kind of defeats the purpose of what I'm trying to do here in my testing I I, I kind of forgot about that one little uh, that one little aspect of uh, I'm technically overproducing the f both fabric and rubber uh, are being overproduced. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna do something here real quick. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. This guy here. Um, is I want um, I want uh, what do you call it? I don't want the oil production stuff to back up. Um, 
What do I need? What do I need? I need cables, I believe. Oh wait, for smart splitter, I think we need AI. Actually, let's just, let's just do it this way. What do I need for uh, smart splitter? Just put a couple of those down. Uh, got enough for those. Uh, grab some rods because I may need to do a merger uh, underneath one of the floors. So grab grab some of those. Uh, I got concrete. That and that. I got that. Got that. Okay. So, of course, you know what? That that actually didn't turn anything off, believe it or not. Um, yeah, no, it didn't turn a damn thing off. <laughs> and the reason why it didn't is because I still have that. Um, no, no, it did. It did. The only thing I've got connected to prime power is this lower pump. I, I didn't change that. Everything upstairs, though, uh, is broken. So what I'll do, just a... Uh... No. Let me break this, because... Okay. So that will now truly break everything upstairs. Right? Okay, now we are... Redlined. Okay, good. Um, so that'll just let the oil build up some more. Um, all right. So what we're going to do here, our fabric output is down here, and so we're going to have to do the same thing with the rubber. Um, all right. So what we're going to do here is let me find the magic spot to put this in because the rubber also should be I'm not worried about the coal backing up interestingly enough no we're not backed up on rubber really really now I'm kind of curious on something I would have thought for sure we would have been backed up on rubber we're producing 20 out as well. And we got one, two, three, four, five. That's 100, last time I checked. And this needs a one to one ratio of rubber to fabric. So, interestingly enough, for some, for whatever reason, this these guys here. Um, because are you stacked? Yeah, that's that's weird. I'm I'm actually scratching my head. Why this? Why these guys here don't have as the uh, same amount of polyres? You guys are using eighty. You're using forty. That's weird. Because, oh, no, no. So this is where efficient splitting comes into hand, into play. This was, this was a jacked up splitting thing also. But still, I'm at, this split mechanic that we're doing here is technically feeding more polyres to rubber slightly than to... Uh, these guys but I think this split mechanic here uh, let me look at my cheat sheet here the split mechanic on this uh, uh, so for the poly res I need 80 um, 80 per machine uh, where's my up here let's just make another up here okay cool so uh, fabric needs 80 per so 80 times 20 uh, last time I checked is what 160 well it'd help if I would type in the right value here no what am I thinking that's four. oh my god no wait hold on try this again 80 times 20 ah calculator because my brain can't think right now. 
80 times 20. 1600, 1600, yeah. So 1600, and because it's 1600, that completely exceeds, you know, belts and doing normal sort of splits. So we had to do a, a special little split mechanic here. And so what we did is we split 1600 four ways. So, uh, and so basically we have five refineries being fed uh, on a single split and then, you know, five more refineries, a different split, so on and so forth. And so in order to get the 400 that we needed per split, so I'm just trying to clean my glasses here. Uh, in order to get the, the 400, we had to do a special weird split because the oil refineries here don't give a, a nice clean number. One, excuse me, 130 out is not a, a good number at all. So this was one of the more unusual merge split, oh, excuse me, things that we did here. So what we have here, we have 12 refineries upstairs. Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. We got four, 14 refineries upstairs. 12 of the refineries um, are being used for the fabric. And then one refinery is being used for rubber. And then there's a, so that's 13. The 14th refinery is splitting its goods. Because on the rubber side, we need 200 poly, uh, if I recall correctly. Um, nope, that's the wrong one. Uh, on the rubber side, I think we needed a total of 200 poly. Nope, that's still the wrong one. Um, yeah, the so four times, uh, cause we're doing five, uh, five rubber. So we need 200 poly here and we need 16 on the other side. So we're producing enough. We're overproducing technically because um, we're actually producing a total of 1820. So I need 1800 or yeah, I need 1800. I'm producing 1820. So just barely over. So what we're doing here on this last refinery, we're taking it and we're taking a buck 30, splitting it three ways. So a buck 33 ways is a 43 and a third on that belt. 43 and a third on that belt. Those two belts merge with the original 130 from there to become um, 270, I believe. 270? No. Uh, 216. 216. So we're feeding rubber 216 because this is the rubber feed. Then the remaining 43 is then further split. So 43 and the splits in half here, giving us 21 and change going down the line here. One of the 21s split uh, does a two way split here. Uh, so it then becomes a uh, 10 and change. That 10 and change tie in with the three. Uh, a 130 there, a 130 there, and a 130 there, which then becomes four, just over 400. And that repeats four more times. So our poly res is technically getting, you know, 400.825. Now, granite, and actually no, there's no granite to it. The belts were never overfed to begin with, so, um, the fabric blockage, um, is basically backed everything up, um, because in reality, this should be a one-to-one -one ratio. So we're going to kind of do a clean slate here, um, in a limited, limited capacity. What we're going to do here, and this is going to be, this is going to be ugly, um, but that's nothing new for me. Um... So, uh, let's see here. 
Um, we're going to take this guy here and I'm going to do, I'm going to line this up real quick and we, we find my line because this is, uh, okay, here, let's do this. Take that off for a minute. Okay. So we're going to give me a line here real quick so I can, what line are we on? We are on the seam. Okay. And these guidelines really haven't been helping me out in some, in many cases. Oh, and then I stand on the damn conveyor belt and I land. All right, so that there should, okay, cool. The two of those now change to my smart splitter. Did I not? I, s no, I didn't. I built a shopping list and then I ignored the shopping list. All right, I ignored getting the shopping list. But we're going to kind of do a fresh start um, with our production line. As far as uh, the poly res is concerned, I'm going to clear all the machines of poly res um, and then do a from scratch restart. Um, good news is um, our train or our oil should be at 100% uh, full on the lower fuel buffer or fluid buffer, 100% on the uh, upper fluid buffers, 100% on the the big buffer at the uh, extraction site, along with 100% at of the, the the platform at the extraction site. All right, where are we going? Oh, we're going over there. All right, so now well, up in the air. All right, so now, smart splitter, orange that way, okay. <clears throat> this is gonna look a little weird, which, well, again, it's, uh, it's, that's, it's, it's what it is now, and, uh, let me find where we're going to. Ironically, that's exactly where we wanna go to. Uh, we're gonna feed it up right here. So, feed that there. All right. So, that guy is right there. Okay. We're going to basically uh, thread the needle, as it were. Because I can't really do any no real clean bends. Yeah, I can sort of do a cleanish bend. Uh, let me find out how far back. All right, let me put a pole here real quick. Let me see if, oh, there it is. Like you can't see it. Uh, so much stuff here. Okay, move the pole back one. After the autosave, because I'm not gonna try to move that during the autosave. So give me a pull there. And let me see, okay, so. I mean, they'll look a little bit cleaner. All right. Um, and so run parallel down this way. That's one, two, three. All right. And then we're gonna do our uh we'll do a level three on this however we're gonna change Ooh, actually that's almost perfect okay That, that's actually really good because this is our rubber. Uh, this is where the rubber meets the road as it is. Um, I'm gonna tweak this here. All right. Because what we're gonna do is. Um, that actually. 
I just want to say, I knew you weren't lined up properly. Um, okay, what? This is the fun part. You are on. You're on that line there. Okay, so I can. I think that line there. I think. Except that time I'm too close. Ugh. All right, so I think that that line there. Okay, I'm gonna do a smart splitter here as well. Um, oh, and that reminds me, I gotta update the smart splitters. Uh, you say what I wanted to do. Now this guy here can do his belt down that way again, and basically he can continue on his merry way. All right, now I gotta find the middle point here. So in theory, right, if I can get on the ground, so I can move slowly. All right, so in theory, if I do last off straight up, that should be perfectly in between both of them. All right. And then this guy comes there. This guy comes here. Then, fortunately, these two are not straight, but we're gonna have, a, and I don't think it's, uh, what line are you on? You are on that line. Uh, I don't know. Uh, it's not gonna let me do the, uh, no, it's, uh, Unfortunately, it's going to be a slight, it's going to be the, the weird bend. Um, well, it's not a weird bend, but it's, it's not the perfectly, it's not a clean 90 um, that I prefer. So we'll go, we'll go that way. All right, so. Go ahead, get rid of this, get rid of that, get rid of that pole there. Let me go ahead and uh, I got to program up the smart splitters. Uh, so this guy here, um, perspective is from that direction. So left over, center any, right none. All right. So that's for rubber. Just in case. Um, oh, Jesus. All right, so now let me get this configured real quick before I hook its line up. All right, so we are entering it. We are entering via orange, okay? So left none, center over, right any. All right, good. So now, boom. We're gonna shoot a shit ton of fabric. That'll get the uh, machines upstairs clean. <clears throat> then we're gonna do something. Uh, um, okay, that's not the smart splitter upstairs is powered on. Oh, you know what? Yeah. It, why are you not working? It is? Oh, you know what? No, it's not powered on. You want to know why it's not powered on? Because I have the grid turned off. Yeah. All right, so for the moment, I forgot about that. Let me go ahead and just uh, tap you into uh, tap you into that power. That power is live. Yeah, go ahead and eat, eat your heart out. All right, so while that's going on, now I'm going to do a cleanup on all four. So let's take all the poly resin. Actually, well, no, because with the uh, uh, with the witchman call with power off right now, um, with power off, the machines won't eat any more poly resin from the belts so then we'll we'll do a cleanup on the belts as well 
I, I want these things to start literally from scratch. I don't mind the water. Yeah, you know, I'll leave the water alone. Um, And then I'm gonna have to set up a storage container uh, briefly so I can uh, sink this. Because, uh, well, I don't know. I don't know if there's anything that you can build uh, in a uh, craft table or not with a uh, poly resin. I don't recall. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and clear these off as well. For any of the ones that have poly resin. This way we can hopefully get good output without backing shit up again. But I just need to clean the belts off real quick. That's going to be the fun part. All right, so all the poly resin is out of the machines. And we're just going to clean up some of the belts. There's some, in order to, to truly clean, have a clean run, you literally have to uh, break the uh, break these feeds here and all that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to the uh, the central splitter. Uh, for each segment, which is actually this here. I wish you, you could just uh, hold the E button down to do this, but so let's just do this real quick. I mean, the other thing I could do is I could technically uh, just delete and recreate the belt, but I really don't want to do that either. Man, how much shit was on this belt? Because the machines are empty. Upstairs, or the uh, refineries are empty. That's one down. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, well. The two of the four are actually empty. That's interesting. <coughs> Excuse me. Too bad they don't have a, uh, like you have on the pipes, you know, purge the pipes. There should be a thing to purge the conveyor belt. That'd be kind of cool. All right. So, you know, oops. All right. So I'm, I'm still, I'm, I'm kind of scratching my head on that why one of them was full and the other one wasn't. That's also kind of weird. All right. So I think I can go ahead and reset the power with respect to these, because again, these are full. Uh, so I can go ahead and uh, uh, redo the pump power. And I'm, I know for a five, you know, I, I put, put money on it, but I, the, uh, what do you call it? The, um, the buffers, I like said, on the extraction side are full. All right, so go ahead and get rid of you now. Tie you into this guy. I mean, if they're not full over there, Only when you need to delete the other. Oh no. Well, why well, that I, I've had that happen a couple times, but to me, what I, I wish the belts and lifts, and I, um, you know, I wish they were sort of like an auto sensing type of thing, in that, you know. 
prime example. If I want to feed this here, you know, if I, you know, just for the sake of argument, let's say there's, I needed to do a feed here, and I do this, and I mean, and I do this here, it may or may not be on the right uh, alignment. So right now it's actually aligned correctly, but sometimes it'll, 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 you know, depending on what you last did, it may be like this. I wish that it would auto sense what is being it's being connected to, and make it fit because it it lets you do that. So it lets me do this, and it's like you know it's like, and then because once you set the top one. The bottom one will be the reverse. So if this is an incoming, the bottom will be outgoing, vice versa. And so I kind of wish that it would do auto sensing, um, especially, especially if you're running, let's say, a long conveyor line down the down your factory, because if you make the mistake like I have many times, you know, if I have a pole there and I have a pole here, just because I want to. I want to get a, a certain alignment done. If I run it this way, oops, if I run it that way, you know, and I'm not paying attention, and then it's like, okay, well, here's my source over here, and I take my source and I try to feed it in, into this, it won't work because the belts hit each other. Um, because when you run it without a source or destination socket, uh, the belt will go in the direction that you go from. So, and, and th this has been me in the ass many times. Just, you know, if I'm just trying to fill in a belt, you know, without it being connected, it's like, oh shit, I need to run the other direction. So, okay, let me run over here and start at this pole if I want to go in that direction. It's, I don't necessarily always pay attention to the arrows. Um,. Yeah, so that there kind of bites me in the ass sometimes. All right, so I can get rid of that. The belts, for the most part, are clean. You know, some of these here will pick up, I don't know, maybe five or six of the uh, of that uh, polyurethane. That's fine. I'm not too worried about that. Um, but other than that, all the uh, all the machines are empty of the poly resin uh actually let me check these machines these machines should be empty of fabric by now now that we have the smart splitter set up and again i don't know why i didn't think about this eventually backing up because technically we are overproducing actually why don't i just go down here yep the belt's clean um i was considering putting a, a storage unit on it, but fabric is really only used on um, a couple of things. I mean, let me see here. So obviously fabric is used in making filters, um, but fabric is also, um, I, don't need to, I don't need to make multiple gas masks and I don't need to make multiple hazmat suits realistically. Uh, once you have one, that's all you should really need. Um, unless you want to spare in case you die. But nine times out of ten, if I die, I'm going to go and just do a load. Um, depending on how I died. If I died doing something stupid, I'm going to, you know, probably reload the game. Because normally I save before I do something stupid. However, with that being said, um, if you, uh, actually, you can't, uh, uh, Gas masks and hazmat suits, you can't make those, there are, um, there is no alternate recipe. Those are made in an equipment workshop, so you can't automate them. Um, so there's only two things that you make with fabric. Gas filters, and that actually that's the only thing from a manufacturing standpoint you would use uh, fabric on is gas filters um parachutes which i've never used a parachute i don't know how effective a uh, parachute would work because i'm also wondering 
um, do, you know, how do I need to put down, you know, because here's the thing. If I'm, let's say, way, way, oh, I'm floating in the air with my, my hover pack, you know, and all of a sudden I run out of my power, or no, better yet, I've got my jet pack and I'm jet packing around and oops, I've run out of power, you know, I, I didn't hit the ground to recharge my fuel or, you know, to put a new fuel cancer. So that means that I would think that it's, oh, hurry up, tab, put this in, because I don't know if the parachute is a, I presume it's a body item versus a hand item. Um, so, I mean, I, I've seen it, so I, 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 I've never used a parachute, so I don't know. Um, as it says, it is used by pressing the jump button while descending in the air. So, I said, I don't know where it is equipped. Uh, I, said, I presume it would be in your body, or is it a hand item, and that you need a, um, do you need a, like, is it a hand item, and you basically cycle to it to use it, or is it, you know, so that kind of defeats the purpose to me then, because the 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 fall the fall rate to me is faster than I can get in here and change my jetpack out in time um because you know if I have my jetpack or hover pack on and then I you know run out of juice it's like oh shit and I'm gonna try to get this and move this over and do that so right now you know yeah I don't see using it now maybe when they, uh, I don't know, up, uh, in update six, if that'll be uh, adjusted at all. And then again, I still don't see per using it per se, you know, other than for fun. So, you know, I may go to my sky tower over there and base jump just to see how that would be. Um, but for the most part, if I'm out exploring, and I can't hover. I'm having my jetpack on. Um, that's pretty much how it works. All right, so we are ready to go live for real again. Let's see how, okay, so. And here we go. So we should, in theory, yeah, we may see, oops, uh, we may see a, a trickle, if anything, in here. So, it, you know, and the only time we're really gonna see a trickle in here is when the oil train is loading or uh, transferring oil but otherwise we should see exactly what we're seeing here a net of zero uh, at least that's how I would look at it and let me see <clears throat> okay here comes the oil train now so we'll be able to uh, witness this uh, first hand here in a second All right, so we'll just we'll keep an eye on this guy here. So we got a net of zero. We should see. Well, no, no. Technically, we should still see. No, no, because we have only one buffer on this side, and this is this one here. So we uh, will we'll see a change in our net initially, or briefly. Well, we'll see. Okay, so there, it just loaded, or soon it's load. And I guess, I, you know what? Okay, there we go. Negative net, which is I'm okay with. Once the train's unloading, we should have a positive net to bring our buffer back up to full. I, I think. I'm waiting for the horn to sound. Well, I think the train left. Yeah, the train left. 
Yeah, there it goes right there. The train left. It just took a little bit of time. And I guess that's probably because the pipes had to refill up a little bit. Um, so that's what we should see. So now downstairs. Downstairs, we should see... Considering that the train is limited to 1600. Um, we're gonna see, and but the buffer was full when we started. Uh, we're probably gonna, you know, it's it's gonna be near full. I mean, so now once uh, now that we've turned things on again, let me see. I'm gonna try to get myself positioned here, so I can kind of see two things at once. Okay, so I'm gonna sit here and watch this. And we're gonna watch the train. I wanna see how low it goes, because this fluid platform, after we restarted it, would have been loaded up to 2400, because the train's been going around with a full bladder, and so it would have uh, topped off at 2400. So let's see how low we go. Um, in theory, um, with the drain, uh, let's see, what did I calculate it out to? Um, actually, I didn't, I didn't calculate this part. Um, but we're doing 420 minutes. Let me see here. So eight, four, uh, so actually deal, on, deal with half it. 420 a minute. Uh, roughly doing four minutes. We'll just say, for sake of round numbers, four minutes. So that's 1680, 2400. So we should see this get around, I'm gonna say around seven, uh, around 720, I believe. If for a full, for a four minute round trip, we'll see here uh, how close we are. I don't know, I'm, I'm just guesstimating on that though. It's gonna be close, but then again, if we do a 4.2 times 420 minus 2400, okay, closer to, so between, say between 600, should be more than, just slightly more than 600. Come on, baby. Come on, train. Don't let me down. Train's gonna let me down. Hey, hey here it comes. So, give or take, you know, depending on its round trip time. But it is gonna do a full load, which will take it up to, at this point, okay, it's locked it in. So it's going to take up to 2100. Now, what I. Wait. And actually, let me think here. Uh, for four minutes. And... All right, so 2100. Holy shit! Now, the. <laughs> Yeah, we got plenty of oil coming in. Who needs oil? Uh, I, I don't need the train anymore. I got plenty right there. All right, let me get, exit off this and look at it again. <laughs> uh, okay, 242. Okay. All right, so we're at 2100. 21 and change. And let me see here. And it stopped at 611, I believe it was. So 2106, I think, minus 611, I think. So 1495, divide that by 420. That's a three and a half minute round trip. No, no, that's, no, I can't use that to base it. I, I don't know what I'm, no, I, that, that math there just, uh, that, that, ignore that math. Um, So 
All right, so let's see here. So this should last five minutes. Oh, it shouldn't drain. I mean, it should take five minutes for this to drain to zero. And actually, I'm going to do something here real quick. So I'm going to, I'm just going to let this thing here chill on the screen for a moment. I'm going to uh, grab me something to drink. So I'm just going to mute my mic and leave it active. So I'll be back in just a few. All right, so I want to catch the next train, and I actually got a true stopwatch that I'm actually going to time this train with, and while I'm doing that also, is I hate dealing, you know, time, time, time conversions suck. Um, all right, so... How did I do this before? I gotta try to remember. Da, 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 da. Um, what is? 
I'm looking for. Um. That's. Uh, no, not that. Um. Oh. Okay. Is the function I'm looking for? Cannot remember. While I'm waiting for the train, I will Google this. Maybe that's it. Okay, here comes the train, so let me uh, get on the train here and get my stopwatch ready so I can actually time this out. So we'll do the, the stopwatch start on the horn blasting. course right at the start we get stopped oh that okay that's the function all right so Okay, that's what we want. Okay. Then that times that. All right. Cool. That's what I need to do. All right. So. Then this equals that equals it. That and and Oh, 
Okay, cool. That's what I wanted to see. looking for here all right so at a speed of 450 it will take five minutes and 20 seconds to fully load a fluid buffer of 2400 okay but technically we only care about the train itself so to fill up a fluid buffer of 1600 at a rate of 450 it will take three minutes and 33 seconds. So, with that being said, in theory, each train trip should have a full fluid buffer because right now, well, not just yet, but here in a few seconds, We have now hit the three minutes and 33 second mark on our round trip. Uh, and we're stuck in traffic, sorta. So. Now the offload speed. We're just waiting for the path to get clear up ahead. Um, the offload speed of 1600 fluids at a rate of 600 because we have the 600 pipe will take 2 minutes and 40 seconds. So... <clears throat> but then again, we're only... Uh, we're, not off, we're not doing a full offload of that. Um, I mean, we should... We will be doing actually year zero... Are you zero also? Alright. But our buffer's upstairs... The buffers upstairs should still be good, and you know what? let me uh, let me look here. You should be dropping sixteen hundred. Oh shit! You know, and I forgot this. No, no, no. Cause we gotta wait to the horn. Okay. So first lap. Okay. So we put in sixteen. I'm gonna go on another lap here. Just to kind of get an average here. So that first lap was four minutes and 53 seconds. Whoa, that train. <laughs> you thought he was gonna be sneaking and get out there. All right, so now, as far as usage is concerned, um, at a rate of, we'll say uh, equal rate to 420. So 420, um, so 1600 with the 420 rate of usage. Is three minutes and 48 seconds, really. So, wow, okay. So, the fluid buffer, the, 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 um, each train car holds three minutes and 48 seconds worth of operating time for the refineries. And then our buffer gives a little bit extra, but our buffer is gonna, hmm, so this here, So we actually may jump up to two trains then. That's, that's the one thing I wasn't uh, looking at was, I was looking at the fluid buffer, how much time it gives you, but that's also misleading. Um, cause it's uh, the round trip time. Cause this here will be a, this here should be a full 600. And actually what we're gonna do here, I'm gonna, 
laying on the train. I can look at this. Alright, so we got a full 1600 here. I'm pretty sure, you know, we're as far as filling in that buffer there, um, that's easily happening within a round trip period. Because three minutes and 33 seconds to fill that in, that's fine. The problem is the offload for this. Three minutes and 48 seconds as far as its usage. So when we get back there, the buffer, the upper buffer, <coughs> we should actually see it being lower. Coming up on lap two. Well, lap two here is, is uh, was faster than lap one. Significantly faster than lap one. So this lap here is almost a full minute faster. Let me see here. So these are almost dry. That one is dry. All right. I'm gonna go up here real quick while that's offloading. Without, I got about 15 seconds to check. The fluid buffers here are looking good for the most part. Ouch. Right, that lap time there, come on, get in the train. That lap time there was four and a half minutes, okay. So, anywhere from four and a half minutes to five minutes per lap. Um, now, I want to take a look at the fluid buffers on the other side, um, just to validate something here. Because as far as the load over here is concerned, I should have a full uh, full fluid buffer, um, or I should have at least a minimum of 1,600, um, just because of the the round trip time. So I'm going to bail. All right, let's go see here. So these guys here should be full. Good, you're full. Good, you're full. Let's take a look at these guys here. Full and full. So that's actually good on with that respects. So, you know, because realistically at this rate, we're drawing 1600 each trip. Um, and so it's going to take two minutes and 40 seconds to transfer, um, the fluid from the lower buffer to the upper buffer. And then technically, um, it'll take three minutes and 33 seconds to go from, to f go from the mining extractors to the lower buffer. So all well within one round trip time. So we should always technically have 4,800 down there uh, waiting at least. So 
the big question is, is how much is it going to take off the upper buffer? Um, cause like I said, the upper buffer has six minutes worth or six minutes, 40 seconds, roughly worth of operation time. And so if we look at our average round trip time, um, you're looking at, you know, roughly there's a three minute uh, variance there between a couple things. All right, let's see how this round trip time looks. All right, so let's see how you look. So you actually still have some fluid left in you. So, and this here is uh, slowly rising. All right, I'm just gonna sit here, let his horn go off. And then we go upstairs and look at the, the fluid buffers. See how they're looking. All right, so that one there was just a second more than the uh, the last ship. So again, right around 4.30. Then I'm gonna let him go on his own. I'll come back and meet him downstairs after the conclusion of the next trip. Fluid buffers, they're all full, so that's good. So we might actually be at the point now um, of actually having a net positive um, on stuff, maybe, I don't know. We'll see. Because it was real close to zero um, at, the, at the last stop. So we'll see here. We'll see what the drain rate on this is. And I'll wait for the next train to come in. Because realistically, these two should for all intents and purposes, almost be in sync with one another. Um, you know, give or take a couple. So 1160, so for all intents and purposes, they're almost in sync with one another. All right, so let's see how far these drain on, uh, I was right around when I bailed off the train on the last trip. It was right around a hundred. As if I run dual trains, just two trains, not three, but if I run dual trains for the near term, you know, we will this we will basically overflow this buffer here to 2400 but then as it progresses more and more it's going to get uh the efficiency will alter itself because the miners on the other side um with you know running two trains you figure you know if they're truly spaced apart perfectly um you're still looking at a four minute round trip. So it won't, uh, because it's not gonna be a four minute round trip then, it'll be like two minutes and 45 seconds before a train hits every time. The fluid buffers on the uh, extraction side will only be getting up to, I don't know, maybe 14 or 1300 or maybe even a little bit less, 1200 perhaps. Um, So, in the long term, would that really hurt it? Not necessarily. Um, so instead of bringing in 1,600 a minute, um, 
you know, you may, let me see here. So if that's that, let's just see for the sake of argument while I'm waiting for the next train. So we got about a minute before he shows up. Let's say 450, we'll, we'll try 1500, 1400, 1300, 1200, 1100, Oh, here, well, he's actually here a little earlier than expected. 1100. Yeah, so it looks like we're increasing. So it froze at a 241. So I'm just, let me just mark that down. 241 is where we got a, a freeze on it this time. So we'll see here. That was actually a slightly faster round trip time. All right, so let me just do some uh, mathematics here while I'm waiting for another round trip, just because. All right, so if we, let's say for the sake of our argument, we run two trains um, and each train on average would do, um, let's just say for the sake of argument, they're at opposite sides, so one here, one at the other side. So it takes roughly two minutes, or so if you're looking at a four minute, four and a half minute round trip, you're talking about a two and a quarter minutes one way trip. So that would basically put it between a thousand, um, a thousand uh, fluids per car. Um, I'm just gonna throw some other numbers out here, um, just to see here. Yeah, so between between 900 and 1100 fluid per round trip. Uh, if we ran dual trains, um, would be the fill capacity. Um, our max the load rate again would be five minutes to fully load it at 14 or so i mean technically two trains could still sustain it without draining our uh, uh drawing our buffers completely dry i believe let me see here while we're waiting for the train again see what the the transfer rate shows now so it's showing about 360 360, it, which I believe is up because I think last time it was around 329 or 323 or something like that. So we'll see here. This, you know, math is fun. But it's actually, uh, it's actually working out pretty well. All right, so the train should be on its way back. You know what, why go up when I can just do this? Let's see. We should be seeing the oil train. Uh, here comes the oil train now. All right, so I got a couple minutes here. Let's climb the billboard. Pretend we're Spider-Man. Check our fluid uh, buffers out while we wait. So, as expected, all the fluid buffers are good. All right, I think and that's bugging me. I need to put a smart sink on these things. That's all, that's, that's why, damn it. Well, let me, uh, let me mark this uh, round trip here real quick. Uh, this is, this way I can get an average on it. I need to put a damn, um, I gotta do something about that polyres. I don't know why it's backed up. I really don't. That polyres should be 
getting consumed at a much faster rate than that. So there's something I gotta take a look at my damn uh I gotta take a look at something on that. Well wow, that was a fast lap time. That one there was four minutes, twelve seconds. Alright, something's going on with um something something's just not right here with these refineries. I mean it's it's eating it up. What? What is the major malfunction with these back half? This back half is bogging shit down. That's the problem. What are you not getting enough of? Or a better question is, is why are you sucking in so much? No, it's the water. That's what's jacking this up. Here, we're gonna take that. Just so I can help clear the belts. Um, water, 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 water. What in the hell is going on here? This here is bugging me also. I mean, our extractors are full here. That's, that's weird. I mean, I can add another extractor to the line, but we should be getting, so what's going on here? We should be getting 600 on these pipes um, on a flow rate, I think. Unless, I mean, I mean all the, all the, uh, don't wait up. Oh. Why don't you have power? Okay. Well, that's one question. Why don't you have power? Oh, because I'm technically tied in power up there, but still, I want my I want my floating power. But with that being said is Okay, those two down there are offline. That's intentional. Oh, ain't that a bitch? Ah, I don't know. Let's 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 play a game. What is wrong with this picture? How in the hell did I miss that? How? Seriously? How did I miss that? I'm... Oh my god. Oh no, th 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 that's actually an easy answer. Um... Or is it? No, that is actually a good question. Um... But how did I... How did I miss that to begin with? So we got one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So technically, it needs to be split between them, because uh, 120 by five. But how did I miss that? That's that's crazy. Crazy, I say. That explain that there just just like the uh, the oil. Um, the oil thing with a Mark One pipe. Um, okay, so we're gonna do something here real quick, just because it ain't working as it is. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something here. Um, 
So let me let me let me think about this for a second. Uh, Because my OCD is gonna, uh, my OCD on things here is gonna bite me in the ass if I don't do it a certain way. Uh, but I can't do it a certain way because of of things. Okay, oops. All right. So what I need to do, what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to temporarily break this, just temporarily, so that I can. Uh, put me on my pipe building scheme. All right. I'm going to temporarily bring him over here. Just temporarily. So that I can put a junction here. Um, you know, clean, nice clean junction. All right. Now I'll break this guy here. And have this guy come up here. And we'll take, uh, take this guy here. Connect you there. Take you to there. And now I'm going to go suicide myself in the lake because I missed... How in the bloody hell did I miss that? Oh my goodness. Well, see, I, I, I really don't know. Because I at one point I did have this connected. I, I seriously, I did. Um, but... I was, I was messing around with, well, uh, so uh, here, here's, the, here's the story with this. When I set up this water extraction set over here, this set of nine, okay, I was able to get everything set up, um, uh, everything on a certain level, and I had the foundation here, and it didn't match. Um, you talking about this over here? That railroad back there? Oh, have you have you not actually... Uh, oh, well here, let me give you a... Because uh, I haven't actually given you the full... The full ore train thing, have I? Um, here, let me, uh, let me clean up some poly resin real quick and I'll... Uh, I'll, I'll take you for a trip on the, the, the ore ring. Um, Oh, th see that, see that thing there all, it became a misleading indicator, um, because, um, what do you call it now? Okay. So let me just check here. My water should be going good. Now I got, let me clear off, clear off some poly resin here. This poly resin crap, um, May gave me false readings for, um, gave me false readings on the damn, uh, what do you call it? Um, the oil refinery and how much oil was being used because half my damn plants here were offline. Sorry. Sorry if I'm yelling into the mic. You know what? I'm not even going to bother trying to save any of this. Just sink all that poly resin. Um, this. Now, the water should here or should kick in here in a, a little bit now that we actually have all the water online. Um, come on, guys. Because you can handle 600 on the pipe. So you should not be idling out. Well, I'm just going to clean up some more poly resin here. Because these, uh... Why is... So which one is this? This is one, two... One, two, three, four, this is number five. Five is having an issue on that side, and one, two, three, four. Five, ironically, on both sides is having an issue. What's so special about five? How's rubber doing? 
So we go ahead and clear their poly resin out as well. Because I'm actually going to need to do something about the poly resin. Um, just because uh, I'm going to I'm going to have to set up a smart sink just uh, just so we're not killing the lines or a smart splitter just so we're not killing the lines because uh, I don't want the oil refineries to back up even though technically it won't doesn't hurt nothing but all right so one two three four five what is your problem good there This doesn't make any sense to me. All right, just for curiosity's sake. Because we're full there. And we're full there. Check. Full there. Check. Check. This one here is just slightly under full. That's one, two, three, four. And then number five here, it's still, it's teetering. Um, so one, two, three, four, five. Good full pipes there. And the flow rate on this is supposed to be right around 50 is its optimum flow rate. Um, I'm going to do, I'm going to, let me see here. Actually, wrong side. And this, I don't understand because oh, uh, there's a back there. Uh, there's there's still a backlog on the which call it. Um, one, two, one, two, three, four, five. So you're full now. All right. So all right. So okay. Let's see here. This one here should be able to get back on track now without idling out. Just enough, okay. So. Right. Maybe it just, maybe it just needed a little extra time to, uh, maybe it just needed a little extra time for the pipes to fill up a little bit. Uh, this step does bug me. All right, so I don't mind them having a little bit of overage. That's, that's okay. I will be putting a, a sink on here though. Um, or smart splitter. Um, I'm gonna pull a little bit of, uh, let's see this water here. That's bugging me. One, two, three, four, you're, yep, you're number five. You know what? I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna shoot it because it upset me. And I'm gonna rerun it. Let's, let's just see what happens with this. This. One, two, three, four, five. There's something just still squirrely about this water. All right, let's go. So sometimes tearing down and recreating the pipes. Uh, you know what? Let's, screw it. Let's go ahead and pull this off. Let's see what happens. 
Ah. Float, dude, float. One, two, three, four, and five. Now that gave it a boost of water, but I, the valve wasn't limiting it. And sorry, I gotta take your, uh, I gotta take your poly resin away. Still, one twenty. Last time I checked, one twenty times five, right? One two zero times five is 600 that's what we're putting down the pipe this here's bugging me as to why it's all the other ones all right i'm gonna try one other thing here maybe Unless, you know, I, I, I don't want to do this. Let me do a couple of things here real quick. Is there something just squirrely with this guy here? But, uh, something's just... Uh, Because technically, I mean, technically this guy here should technically be able to push everything up. So just out of curiosity, if I kill this guy here, let me just see how, what that does. Because maybe too many pumps are a bad thing. Yeah, I'm gonna kill this pump here. Okay, so that's, understandably the head lift goes up because further on down the line. But the pipe is full. Which is what I want to see. Okay. All right. So I'm going to do something here. I'm going to kill this guy as well. I'm going to keep these, uh, which valves? I'm going to keep these valves here. And just for sake of curiosity, maybe Maybe this jacked it up and it, you know, too many pumps. I thought, you know, adding extra pumps was, I don't know. I don't know why I actually put these extra pumps on here. Uh, Cause, right. let's see here. <clears throat> Does this guy here. All right, good on that. Good on that. So now as we go down the line, so 600 here should be 550-ish. But then now it should be around 500-ish. Okay, 450-ish. And then 400-ish. Okay. And then uh, 350. Okay, now that there, get up to 350, buddy. Okay, it kind of got up there. 300. Because I, 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 I get the flow rate going down because when, uh, you know, when it's not being drawn, technically the flow rate will drop down, so that then spiked. Um, this here, again, does a spike. 
Uh, we're, uh... So at this point here, we should see 200. Roughly. At its, at its peak. Roughly. Okay. And then here, in between these two guys here, um, we should see me clipping through the belt. Um, so technically this should only ever get up to 60. Um, but no, this is 40. All right. Let's just see if, what that did. Uh, I am going to though, uh, just for sake of sake of sakes, I'm going to put the valve back on this, just uh, as a not as a regulator, but as a backflow preventer. So I guess the pumps. Okay, lesson learned. Too many pumps are a bad thing. All right. Let me just make sure everything else, now that we've taken all those things off there, let me just do a quick check to make sure. Okay, make sure things are not, uh, not lopsided. Come on, buddy, go up, go up, go up. Okay, good. It just, it's just going to go in bursts, I guess. Same thing with this. So this is the further back you go in the line, the more it's going to get goofy. Come on. Come on. Come on. It's also partially... Uh, on the water extractors, you know what I'm almost tempted to do? I'm almost tempted to add those two water extractors back onto the line so that even though it technically can't handle the pressure of 720, there will always be a, a minimum of a full 640 flowing. Because now these guys here, I think that could also be part of it. But now this guy here is like totally. Mm, all right, well, we'll come back to this here in a minute. So train ride, let's, let's go down to the ore collection site. As I'm gonna do something else on this water. The, 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 it's, it's the looping aspect of that water, which I thought would work, but yeah, apparently it didn't. So we're going to run a third water line just for the rubber. Um, uh, third water line just for the rubber. And then, uh, this way I'm not pulling exactly what we need. Um, which apparently isn't quite working out as I had planned. All right, let's see what train is in here. It's, we'll start with, you know, we'll wait for train number one. Oh, and speaking of which, here comes train number one now. All right. Uh, we'll go, we'll just, instead of going inside the locomotive, we'll take a nice seat on top. Actually, no, go inside the locomotive this way. There's no hands to see. So the ore collection route uh, essentially goes around to 17 different, or excuse me, 18 different um, locations in the desert. <clears throat> Collecting a variety of um, or specifically coal, iron, and copper. <clears throat> and it's kind of like a roller coaster in its hilly terrain. Uh, the initial start of the, the ore collection thing is a little bit of a bottleneck depending on how many come out. Um, but 
with the way the blocks are set up, uh, it will spread out and speed up over time. <clears throat> I kind of wish you could do a first person perspective on this. So that'd be kind of cool. So each train station, uh, basically, well, and this is his train station. Um, we uh, basically have a block signal that goes into the Y, if you will, a series of blocks in the slip, and then a path leaving um, so that the train that's actually in the train station can get a reservation block to go out. If you only do a block signal here um, and a block signal there, what happens is, is this train will start to go and then it will stop um, and go and stop because trains tip, uh, technically don't trip a block signal until they are halfway through it with the locomotive. And so by putting the path signals there, it guarantees he can get out and doesn't delay the, uh, doesn't delay the departure. And so now, like I said, as they get further into the, uh, the, uh, what do you call it? The, uh, the pathing or the track here, um, you know, the train will actually start to speed up some because there won't be trains that close in front of it. Um, so it will have a whole bunch of, uh, uh, green lights and will only really slow down when it comes up to a train station just because it may need to give up it, the path uh, for an outgoing train. So like here we got the green light, so it'll go ahead and start to accelerate again. Um, It's a, it was a fun, a fun little endeavor putting this uh, train route together and setting up the train stations. Um, oh, okay, fun may be a bad, a bad, uh, bad word for that. Uh, it was a pain in the ass, quite honestly, um, because in order for the merges of train tracks and the splitting of train tracks. You have to have a certain amount of space and whatnot. Now we come into the roller coaster aspect where we go up and down the sand dunes. And what I try to do with the train track run here is, you know, not have it clip through solid rock. Uh, having a little bit of sand on the, the rail and whatnot, I was okay with because it's sand, you know, it's a desert and um, but solid rock didn't want to didn't want to do anything with that. <clears throat> and so there are actually <coughs> excuse me, there are two trains for each uh, station that are that's running. Um, and in the the test measurements that I did, they're within 5% plus or minus of what the ore draw rate is compared to what the unload rate is, um, depending on, you know, train stops and all that. So, a little bit of a delay here because of a train leaving a station. And this is this area here is really where a lot of my spiking power is coming from, um, because all the braking that these trains are doing, um, you know, generates anywhere from five to forty watts combined. Um, the good thing about this type of setup is. You're almost, not 100%, but almost guaranteed to have no collisions. 
Um, if you lose power though to this rail, uh, there is a likeliness, a high likeliness that you will get a collision somewhere on the line. Um, because a train will continue to try to go forward until it fully loses power. And so, you know, if it's approaching the brake, you know, if it's approaching a block, you know, it will continue to go, but, and it, and if it's at a red light, it will stop at a red light, even if the red light is on a downhill angle. However, if it's going up a hill like that and it loses power, it's not going to just stop. Uh, it will potentially back go backwards and if it goes in reverse it will not stop well i i've done a uh, some love tapping if you will um if it's at a slow enough speed you know you're okay and i mean real slow but uh anything over probably like two kilometers or maybe three kilometers an hour oh yeah you're hosed and I made the mistake uh, earlier, well, well, a little bit, a couple, probably about four or five days ago. I was redoing some power up here. Because um, what I did is, you know, I'm doing power switches and segmenting things. And, um, but what I did is I was cleaning up some power and the power for this area here uh, was being fed by this train station here and so as a result when I disconnected <clears throat> this cable it wasn't I wasn't thinking about it because I was um, I don't know why I disconnected it but when I disconnected this cable here or maybe I disconnected a wall outlet I don't know didn't didn't have any thought of what was going on I was like oh no big deal um, next thing I know pop up on the screen these two trains have derailed. A few seconds later, these two trains have derailed. And then more and more trains uh, derailed because of the, you know, a train would be going up the hill there, not quite make it when it full, finally ran out of gas, and then it rolled back into another train. Um, I mean, the good news is, is once I got power reestablished, I could just hover around and get the trains going again. Um, Nothing like the, the the one train snafu I had earlier uh, with my train. Um, my train caused a big backup one day. Um, I basically, before I changed my actual train to a single engine train, I actually had a bi-directional. And because of that, when it hit the base station on the, my, my main base, before I made a modification to that train station, uh, the station at the main base that ties into the this uh, area here was essentially a set of four bi-directional travel, meaning the train came in and then it had to have another engine to get out or you're gonna have to do reverse the, reverse the entire thing. Um, and as a result, the uh, the train, uh, when a bi-directional train hits a train station, it changes control to the front or to the opposite engine. And so, if you have only one stop listed on the train, which was the main base in my in this situation, um, what happened is the train came into my base did its quote-unquote docking procedure, gave control to the other engine who now wanted to be, who wanted to go to the main base train station. So it departed main base looking for a turnaround track so that they could technically come into the station. And the closest turnaround track was the oil um, station downstairs which was not operational at the time. I had the trains parked in there. And so it not being smart, it came in and essentially um, it came into the uh, train station here. 
and stopped right here because it was blocked, which in turn then blocked all the way back. So all my trains got backed up here. Didn't have any derailments. I just had blockages. Um, so it was a, a little bit of a snafu. All right, so unless this water here on rubber is evened out, I'm gonna be running some new water pipes. Yeah, we're gonna run a fresh set of water to this. Cause this here is just, uh, this is not what I was hoping for. <clears throat> theory, it, in theory it should have worked, but obviously, um, and just for sake of argument, I don't think it's gonna matter. And it won't matter actually. It just, I mean, it's full of fluid. Um, and technically this, well, see that my pipes are, cause this is the end of the, end of the feed. Yeah, they are. Um, <sighs> well, and, and see, that's where, like, for me, they even take out more space, generally speaking. So, train stations being four wide. Okay, yeah, I, I kind of get it. You know, it, it matches the, the width of the freight stations. Because, you know, your freight stationary here, you know, takes up, you know, and I, I, I get the freight station section taking up a good amount of space. Um, yeah, I think they could have tr possibly trimmed this down on this side, but the way I run my trains is, you know, instead of running it, you know, um, well, different people run it differently, but instead of having the train uh, station, let's say, be in the middle, I intentionally get my, uh, in the middle of the foundation, I intentionally have it split the seam, just because, for the most part, I like putting doors in, and so that makes things a little bit more complicated for me at times, because I'm trying to, you know, I've got to give myself... Uh, position things just right so I can get a door so the train can open it as it comes in because I, I don't know I just now that I yeah, I don't know I just kind of got addicted on these automatic doors all right so I am going to again turn everything off um because these buffers here are well, these buffers here are actually starting to empty. Um, we're gonna we're gonna do another restart on this section here. Oh goodness, because I, I want I want it to be fresh and I want to make sure it can potentially work if something happens and I have a power issue. The one thing we're gonna clear out, make sure that all these have no poly resin backed up in them. Because I don't want these things idling out. Because i that's what was giving me a misleading indicator earlier. Is the damn polyresin backed up um, because of these. And so my, technically my fuel or my oil usage was less than it actually was, you know, was less than what I thought it should be. So we're gonna make sure this shit is uh, straight. So I'm gonna run 600 oil. Jesus, try this again. I'm gonna run. In fact, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna fully we're gonna flush the we're gonna fully flush these. Um, but before I do this, let me go grab me something to drink real quick. Um, and we're gonna get a clean clean uh. Uh, water set up going here, so I'll be back in just a few moments.
All right, so let's go ahead and dump some more of this poly resin crap. Oops. Nope, take that out of there. And like I said, we're gonna, gonna clean, fresh, clean, run. No, uh, not, not a run. No, we're not, we'll, we'll have to do some tweaking on some of the pipe run, but we're not really running the pipes. But fresh, clean, start up. Let's go ahead and collect the poly. It's easier to dump all the poly at once. And also, while we're at it here, go ahead and just flush that. Uh, I really wish flushing that would empty these lines out. It makes be so much easier. And I, I wish I could just double click on it and it would just dump the water um, instead of having to drag it. All right, so we're going to, we have two more extractors down there already installed. So we just gotta get those tied in. Question is, is um, the running of the extra pipe and I have an idea, <laughs> uh, maybe, oops, need to check that, make sure I cleared that out. Okay. Yeah, I wonder if they're ever going to actually boost the pipes and uh, potentially the belts to another level. Uh, simply put, or simply being is, if you got a pure mining site on Mark III and you triple overclock it, technically you can't, it's, it's going to exceed the belt because a pure, um, a pure Mark III triple overclocked puts out 900 on a belt or puts out 900 ore and uh oops that's the wrong thing um and because of that oh wait i already cleared the oh okay i just kept on going down the line and got everything okay cool um and so there's really no reason to ever take a mark three and fully overclock it because um you're never going to be able to uh, put it onto a belt to use it. All right, let's go down to my uh, my train or yeah, let's go down to my station, grab some stuff. So we're gonna need copper pipes. Um, some stuff for pumps, actually. I, I may still have stuff on me for pumps because I will need a couple pumps just to get it up the wall. Uh, but the primary thing is going to be um, plastic. So take all the plastic, take all that. Um, we got power down there already, so just go ahead and take some, uh, take some cable. Well, I, got, I got plenty of cable on me. All right, so let me, oops, let me just check here, make sure I got everything I need for this. So good on that, good on that, good on that, um, good on that, and you know, grab some wire just in case I need to make a pole. Oops, this way. So go ahead and grab a spool of wire, that will be good enough. All right, so this one. Oh, um, nope, 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 not yet. We have concrete, because we're going to need... Okay, we're good on that. Good on those. Good on that, okay. Alrighty, so... 
Of course, I killed my power down here, so... But I, my other water structures are online, so they'll give me what I need to float. And we will cheat, sort of. Oops. Let's get to this build mode for a minute. I'm gonna just send this out over here for the moment, just so I can float around. And here, go right, go over there for a moment. All right, so I need five. The one, two, three, four, five, okay. Oh, watch out, no, you're too far away, you're too far away. Mayday, mayday, mayday. And then I think what I'll do is I'll just take these two here and then we'll do a, a pole stack or a pipe stack. Um, I wish it was, I wish it was easier to do a, a, a pipe stack as far as placing it. Um, yeah. Because it wants you to put the stack center line on your cursor and uh, yeah, that can be a pain sometimes. All right, so two in the turn. It should be able to do this turn, but I can get you in the right spot. I th think it can do this turn. I don't know, can you do this turn? Or do I need to spread you guys out a little bit more? All right, go ahead and actually get me back onto, which one was I using? This one here, yeah. Can you do a turn or do I need, okay, cool. You can do that turn, that's all I want to, all I care about, make sure you can do a, a good, uh, pretty 90 degree turn. No, oh, oh. And then another 90 degree on that there. <clears throat> and let's go ahead and throw another one out here because I don't recall how far the pipes can go before it tells me they can't run, so. We just put a whole bunch, uh, put enough of these out here to make sure I can, you know, get them out now versus later, or having to come back and do them later. Um, so there, and then there. All right, so then. Um, I'm going to uh, go to zoop mode, please. And we're going to bump this up two levels. Um, let me see here. Can I put another pump in here without it looking all goofy like? Without it clipping. So if I do you there. Okay. So not like that. But we'll turn you this way. And the reason we're going to turn you that way. Is because your power connector is right there. So that's technically. Not clipping. Right? Right. Okay. That'll work. Go ahead and. Uh, real quick. Get that guy. Uh. This guy hooked in to you. All right. Because the head lift from the extractor should be able to at least get up to this. Um, all right. So then we can go back to, we we'll go, go back to level one or uh, just one. Come on, give me the spot I want. Now this is where it's going to get interesting. All right, let's do this. Break, break this line here, and then take that. Oops, that's not that's not a power cable. Um, take you and hook you into that power for the moment. Actually, no, not that power. Um,
Let's see. I should get power here in a second. Good. Let me tie you in to here. Can you reach that? Yeah, tie it tie into that for a second. Just so I have floating power. Because this should only be floating power, yeah. Alright, so take you over here now. Because this is where it's gonna get interesting. But This is going to look a little weird. I'm going to bring it here. And then... Uh, well, okay, we'll, we'll keep you at this level here. Um... Because I think... Let's find out here. We might be able to squeeze this up. Actually, we can do a, we can have you stand up. Oh, no, I don't want to go all the way down. No, I don't want to go all the way down. I'm just trying to get to the right level here, guys. All right, let's see here. Because the head lift on these things here um, is an, uh, it's actually, uh, as far as headlifts is concerned, I just need to get it up enough to get around the bend, so, um, go ahead and put, oops, put a, no, not a valve, put this here, here, going that way, um, I'm just trying to get it so it's, again, not technically clipping on the other pipes, which, that looks good, <clears throat> Um, however, well, we're going to run into a little problem there with this guy. Um, yeah, we are not, um, because we're going to, we're going to change this around here, I guess. <coughs> oh, pardon me. <clears throat> All right, so... Uh, see, and this is the other thing, I, I'm not a fan of, you know, I, I kind of wish the wall pipes would come out further, because you can't, the only thing you can do with the wall connectors, you can rotate them, but then once you uh, place it, you can't bring them off the wall, Annie. So in that case, this guy is not going to go here, because, uh... We're going to actually have him run on the... Oh, man. We're going to be doing a little bit of a juggling act here. Uh, I think. Because... Let me see here. Well, no, we can do this. Well, we're, we are going to do this. We're going to kill this connection here. Um, we're going to leave the supports in place, but... We're going to have the rubber come up somewhere, somewhere around here, and then the water will run that away. So this guy here, um, we'll have to get rid of that pump for a minute, because that pump will get relocated. So we're going to run same spacing, so it's not, uh, So we are going to actually run up the middle of that. Um, so this guy here actually is now going to go, uh, let's see, uh, the turn for you will be there on that line. So we're going to have your 
thing there. But I got enough room to uh, send it in between. I just need to redo that power there, which so be it. We'll, we'll tweak that power. I'm not worried about that. That should give me a clean connection there. Okay. Then... <clears throat> this got uh, wrong support. Uh, support number seven. All right, so this here has to be... Um, on this level here. Right there. Okay, get rid of that power line because obviously that's not going to work for me. Because it won't let me build that. And then all that stuff I just created and then destroyed. I got to create again. Alright, so put him there. Go ahead and get rid of that power there. Alright. This should oh, ah, connect to that. Okay. And then this here. And I don't know why I actually deleted these pipes. Because uh, I only needed to delete that one. So, oops on my part. Okay. So now, this guy here will do his turn after I figure out where I want to go for him. I need to give enough room for this guy. Um, so we'll take him over. Uh, we'll take him over to about here. Um, cause that will give me enough room to put a pump here. Cause I will need a pump here to, uh, get the head lift. Um, just to make sure we have a good clean head lift. Um, because of how high it's been uh, going up there. So turn them that way. And good news is, is that can actually, should be able to tie into that. Uh, well, it will once I upgrade it. It will once I have the material to upgrade it. Uh, I gotta love going back and cleaning stuff up. But you know, isn't isn't it like thirtieth time of charm? Isn't that how the saying goes? But that one right there. Well, I guess since I'm going back this way, here, go ahead and run these, you know, might as well, you know. <clears throat> Pardon me. Alright, so, now, go ahead and upgrade this to that level. I don't know why I have that there. Oh, no, I do. Now I do, yeah, because that's... That's actually how it's being fed from the switch. Um, oh, yeah, so back to where we we're going. Um, from you to you... Okay, I'm, I'm good with that. I'm good with that. All right, so now... Um, we want the outlet to be at the same height here, so the hole in the, oh, I don't have that one set. All right. Actually, I can do a number eight and then cycle it, uh, think. Yeah. Uh, so we want you at the same height, so this guy right there should be fine. So now, this is where the 2D thing kicks my ass. So, here it works, but because I accidentally had Auto 2D, it was like, what the hell? <clears throat> and Noodle, I've never used Noodle. That there, um, I'm just trying to look to see how that looks. 
I mean, and that's what it, I mean, technically that's all what auto is doing in this case is it's doing that. Um, but, uh, yeah, that, uh, that auto 2D just kicked my ass. All right. So let's go ahead and just get this guy. Oh, pardon me. Get this guy ran first. So... And the other thing we're going to do, and we shouldn't need to technically, but we are going to do it anyhow, just because you never know. Over time, shit's going to happen. Um, we are going to put a... And this is where it's going to get a little bit tight. Um, I want to have smart splitters on these lines here along with a smart splitter on the rubber feed oops auto save or, or the poly resin to the rubber just to make sure that if it gets to the point of saturating the machines just because of natural saturation because i don't have the, a true exact uh proper ratio then it won't um it won't break the machines all right, so now we're gonna go ahead and kill this pipe here. Um, kill this pipe here. Uh, kill this pipe here. And kill that, and kill that. Now, in theory, in th you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and kill these. Screw it. Um, I. I don't think this actually, I, I had these in place originally because I thought I had enough water and I thought that was the issue. But now that I know that that's not the issue, um, and the only thing this was doing again was preventing backflow. Now, the one thing that might change things around a little bit, and I'm not going to do it, um, and that's absolutely necessary. But if I actually had the, the pipe feed, the main feed, um, plug into the, the middle, you know, that would give a more even flow of water. Oh, no, this, uh, you know, perhaps, you know, but theoretically, you know, cause I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, so we're going to, we'll see what happens. I can easily have the pipe move. So it splits in the middle to everything. Um, but for the time being, I'm going to have end cap feed all the way in end cap feed all the way in. <clears throat> um, I'm going to leave this junction here as opposed to rounding it off um actually yeah because if i wanted to get my nice turn i need to move it out some so we'll leave the junction there that sh technically shouldn't hurt nothing <coughs> excuse me all right so what i'm doing here is i'm just looking to see uh this is all right, so this is the, the poly resin feed to the rubber. So, um, there, here, here, there, and there. Um, we could technically move this out a little bit because I can put the, uh, I can put the smart splitter right on these things. Now, what I got to take in consideration here is if there is a massive backup that there's all, you know, the, uh, the whole reason this is split into four is because of the total quantity. Cause we're pushing 1820 out of the refineries up there. So, uh, but let me see here. 1820. Yeah, so even if I just split it in half, so we're gonna run 
five smart splitters, so one for the rubber and then one for each of these. And we're probably going to set up, just to be on the safe side, two smart splitters, because I don't think we'll have that much overflow, but just to be on the safe side. Um, but what I may do is I may adjust how these belts are ran. Or what I could do is actually do a smart splitter here and a smart splitter here. Um, because at the split, same thing, smart splitter there and there. And then the rubber. The amount uh, coming from, uh, going to the rubber is actually quite low. So I could actually just have it uh, potentially tie into this if I wanted to. Uh, so much for not adding extra shit down here. All right. So let's go ahead and we're going to take you and we're going to have you. Okay, so that's going to be on the seam and one off the seam. Right, right. Okay. Wait, two off the seam, excuse me. All right, so that's that portion of the feed. Now let's go ahead and get rid of its pipes real quick, or uh, holes. Now we gotta rerun what we just deleted downstairs because I made the mistake of building it then deleting it. And we also got to get this guy here. <clears throat> No, actually, you know what? No, we don't. Uh, I don't need to do a bend up and over. We'll just, you know what? Take you down. Uh, just easier that way. So we are on right below the gray line. No need to do extra complicated bends and shit like that. All right. So we will put your pump, though. Right, that's not a pump, that's a valve. But your pump right there. Because what we should see, and we'll just. Because the key on. See, and this is why I was, I was going overboard on the pumps. The key on this is as long as I see it going up here, it does. Uh, you know. I mean, I don't know. See, that's the thing is. Do I technically need, or should I put a pump on each of these I don't think I need it even though it shows the even though the pump shows it dies here um let me see here that's let's just say one two three four five um because each one of these is roughly probably six meters from here to up top. Six times five is 30. And, and that's what I would think. I mean, cause, I mean, this here is gonna give it, cause th that's one thing I'm not sure on with uh, the head lift is I know the head lift is gonna do this part here. And I can actually estimate that. Actually, I'm gonna get you put in place. <laughs> Excuse me. I mean, I can estimate this head left right here just by looking at this. So, if for the sake of argument we go from the center, um, so one, two, three, four, so that's 16 meters there, roughly. It's just a rough estimate. And then from here, um, from this pipe up, you know, because technically the head lift would need to do that as well. Um, from that point up, you figure from the center line, though, so we'll just say, oops, float, float, damn it. Um, they, okay, so that's two, so another eight meters. So in theory, um, well, I, no, I mean, I, I generally don't have problems feeding from the bottom. It's just 
this is a lot of feeding from the bottom um now what i could do let me see here i mean worst comes to worst what i could actually do instead of putting extra uh, instead of putting extra pumps here i could bring this out and put a whole bunch of let's actually let me see here how small uh, this guy here is shorter. He just has a more, he has an awkward, I, I, you know, the damn pump generator thing bu bugs me. Um, but I could just do a whole line of these. Um, you know, figure out where's, where's this power outlet at? Um, where is your power outlet? Oh, your, your power outlet's in the pipe. So I could do a whole bunch of these and technically, you know, on if I do one of those on each one of these, uh, where's that hole at? You know, this here clearly will feed that, you know. So, I mean, worst comes to worst, I could do that. You know, I mean, it's technically not, not that I can tell, it's not clipping there. Uh, I would, I would actually, I would actually run this back just a little bit, just to give it a little bit more space. But we'll, we'll try it for starters as is. So just this pump down here, because I don't think the pump was the issue before. I think it's just, um, I think part of it was the fact that I was, I was literally trying to squeeze exactly what I needed out of it. Um, and that the rubber, you know, was being fed, uh, sort of bi-directionally. So I had a feed coming in this way and a feed coming in that way. And even though I had the valves there, it just, you know, it was at the end of the line. Uh, I don't know. <clears throat> uh, but like I said, worst comes to worst, I can easily, I have room here to move these out a couple segments to put pu pumps on these. Same thing over here. So... <laughs> you know that that'll be the you know the fortieth attempt at getting this thing going. All right, so we're good in here, and we're good with that for now, and good with these two things for now. Those are all plugged in. Um, that one there is good. It's like you know. So I mean, here's here's a prime example. So this guy here, um, this is for my bauxite factory, the refinery. Um, Good amount of uh, each one. Each one of these is being fed 360. Um, so technically, you know, uh, we're underutilizing the pipe, even though for whatever reason it still spikes well over 360, it's up to 600. How that's happening, don't know. Man, you know what? I don't care. Um, but I got one pipe there, or uh, one pump on the lower half. And this is telling me I'm sort of, I mean, it's its almost at its limit, but it's within its tolerable limit. And so I know that all the other ones I build from here on out will be good because of uh, this is the top pipe. So each one is being decreased along its way. And so it's got enough head lift to make it up to here. And then it goes level. And then uh, it goes into the wall to its feed. The second one uh, only goes up a, a little bit right here. And so this here technically is doing this head lift here, which is uh, it was it's showing 4.7 meters, which is about right because that's that's essentially you know one full wall is four meters, so 4.7 meters. Then they, they feed down here. Um, the pipes are full, you know, um, you know, we have a, a good flow rate and a good fullness of it. Then when we get down here, I actually set up and I think that's maybe what I'll do is do what I did here. Um, move the pipes back because this here is giving me, you know, guaranteed uh, the guaranteed head lift without having to rely on 
um, what should we call it? I think that's actually what I'll, I'll do. I'll go ahead and break those, uh, bring those back. Um, just because do it now before we get fully operational versus get this up and running and then it's like, oh shit, now I gotta do it, uh, re redo pipes on that. So I'll get this pipe set ran again and then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do that. Um, just because I just, I'll get it out of the way. Um, because I'm gonna need to do it. I'm 99% I'm sure I'm gonna need to do it. Good news is I didn't actually delete any of these things here. I just deleted that one part. All right, so actually, that this isn't going to be as bad as I thought it was going to be, because I already ran everything. Um, how much do you have on you? You've got, uh, oops, wrong button. Uh, you've got four. Okay, so you can easily feed these. No, you can't. You know why you can't? Because I'm not going to let that do that. Uh, in fact, I'm not going to let... Uh, <clears throat> I don't know how I didn't notice that earlier. That's going to be changed. So, power line, you stand on top of that. Actually... Uh, no, no. Uh, hold on. What side is your power connector on? Okay, that side. All right, so we're actually going to do this. You stand up on him if I can try to float over there and get positioned. Are you going to... Ah, damn it. I'm on the wrong setup. Um, give me a, okay, so eight, go to one. Let me see here. Uh, I'm just I'm just being anal here. Okay, I'll let that one go. Okay. <clears throat> so now take up now back to eight. Take you into now that's a neat trick here that's what we want to do let's have it turn around on us okay so now you go to the top one all right oh, and then the power line gets in my way Now what? All right, well, one of you two is going to move. So it's going to be you, I guess. So here, go right up. If I can, if I can see the bottom here. No, not there. Go over the top of the flow buffer. That should do it. And actually, no, uh, unless you're going to turn. See, now what? You know, it's not my job to ask questions. I will just accept that it did. Uh, okay, so that pump is already uh, plugged in. And it's facing the right direction. Because that pump's sole job is just to get it over to there up this small little incline. Now that's weird. Okay. See, this doesn't make any sense to me, okay? That, no go. Invalid shape, right? Go the other way. Okay, we'll let that go. And, uh, I don't know. It's weird. All right, so then we need to do one more pump. Oh, we also gotta, uh, we need to do a pump here. And technically the pump doesn't need to be up that close. Uh, so we can do the uh, pump 
right around here because please turn it on its side actually no turn this one like that I guess because <clears throat> it'll pull its power from the whatchamacallit and as long as it hits that horizontal point that's all that matters uh, just make sure you guys aren't touching you know but right. so now we're going to go back to build mode one I know, but it, it, it's weird though because it's the same foundation so and that, that's what I mean so this here you know I'm not um, it's a it, it's the same foundation or the same you know I'm not changing these but when I go and do from here to here it's invalid but when I go from here to here it's valid so that's the thing that's throwing me <laughs> so you know you, you think on auto I mean let me, let me just cycle different build modes here 2D well that's 2, 2D is actually a sharp turn, uh, interestingly enough. Um, noodle, horizontal. So it, it must be the horizontal thing that's uh, the horizontal build mode. Um, but you'd think on auto, it would have used one of the other build methods uh, because of that. I don't know. It's just, it's just weird. Um... So we're gonna put you um let's see actually can we squeeze you all right this is gonna look this may look a little weird but can I get it to where I want it because I want to see what it looks like just want to see what it looks like on. Let me see. How, how do I have that one done? That's center lined. I just want to see. Okay. Yeah. We're not even going to bother with that. We're just going to send you over here. And then you should be able to squeeze onto that one there. Good. All right. Now, uh, I'm not worried about that angle. You come to here. You go up to. Actually, is that the right one? Hold on, no, 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 no. No, no, bottom one's right. Wait, why do I have that? Oh, no, no, that's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the, oops, the bottom one is to that other power switch. That line is for the cooling system. All right. And then this here is just floating, so that doesn't count. All right, so this part here is good as goofy as it is do I have enough for a whole bunch of uh, let's see how many yeah I got plenty of this and okay so let's go ahead and uh, just back some pipes up just uh, just because you know get it done out of the way make it alright so if we do this carefully here in fact land on this and walk because this will be easier to do if you walk because then you can actually hit all the pipes all right and then do the same thing on this one here carefully okay land oh. Okay, and then we're gonna do the same thing for rubber. So this guy here we'll get rid of. This rubber is gonna be yeah, maybe actually no, I I actually may have enough room. I may have enough room as it is. Let me see uh, how much room do I have here for this. 
Uh, I mean, technically, yes, but I don't want to bleeding into that. Uh, let me think here a second. Let me think, 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 think. Um, I can technically go on this side. Um, which actually could benefit me also. So yeah, we'll, we'll turn the pipes around and go on that side. Yeah, we also got to take in consideration the damn uh, end caps for the pipes. I can just come out further. I mean, that's not going to hurt anything if I come out further. Yeah, we'll just we'll just have the pipes come out further. Screw it. All right, so let's go back to pipe building mode, and we'll have the we got plenty of square footage here. As then we'll, the pumps will still go here, but. And actually, let's do this. Uh, run first and last. And we ran you to the seam. Then have you two tie together. And then let's see how how friendly the junction is going to be. Not well. You know what? You're not going to even aim for it, so that's fine. I'll eyeball it based on. Based on the grids. Of course, if I could see which grid I'm looking at here. Look at that grid there. Oh. All right, cool. And actually here, let's do this. Just to make sure that no, you know, no need to have partial pipes. Uh, let's have one pipe. You know, let's, let's, let's get rid of this, the pipe segments uh, as much as we can. Because when we put the pump on there, it's going to even further make pipe segments. And so let's just have as little pipe segments as we can have. And let me hold up here a second and just think, yeah, because uh, I'm just I'm doing some contemplating here, because um, at this level, I'm just looking, I turn that down to that angle there, then that won't clip at all over here. Yeah, the problem is the power run. And technically, I don't need to go out that far, actually. I just need to go out, well, to it. We'll, we'll, we'll go with what we're doing here. All right. Uh, okay. <clears throat> oh. There's all This extra pipe here is not going to be that big of an issue. It's just going to take a little bit of extra time for the uh, for the actual pipes to fill up with uh, water um, initially, but after that they should be okay. All right, uh, so we're going to do the low end pipes because um, don't really need the the. Yeah, well, since we're giving that extra space, I mean it's only a couple extra power, but you know what? We don't have the stuff for it, so we'll go with this here. Um, and actually, we really don't need to turn it, but we will. We're gonna put it right on that seam line if I can. And I wanna get this power possible. Um, we'll go vertical on the power. Are you gonna give me a seam lock? You are. Cool. Or a, a snap lock. See, that's not a snap lock. That's that's going the wrong way, guys. 
That doesn't seem right. Maybe it is, I don't know. No, see, it's... It, it's gonna... Uh, it, you know... No. No, no, no. I'm just... It's... We're going to that point there. And it wants to move it back. And I don't want it to be moved back. I want it there. So I don't know why it's... Then and then his rotation's weird also. Oh well, whatever. Um turn around, there you go. Alright, last one for this. Alright. Then we need a rerun so power wise won't be an issue. But we'll you know we'll do power simultaneously. Uh, auto save. <sighs> oh yeah, that's it. Can't forget I got the belts also that have stuff on it. All right, how many segments do we have on you guys? So I'm gonna go ahead and just clear all this, uh, clear these off as well. So we'll give you an extra, extra, what you call it, uh, a little bit of extra length. Now, I gotta keep in mind that this is, uh, I'm gonna have to kind of break this in half, sort of. We're gonna take you out to midline on this guy here. Yeah, that's plenty of room for that thing there. One, two, three, four, five. Midline on this. Two, three, four, five. This is going to be a weird one, but something though. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. That doesn't. One, two, three, four, five. Two, three. Oh, okay. I just can't count. Or I was counting that as a start point. Uh, okay, that was just weird. I don't know. Um, because one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I right, just my my. I don't know. I'm playing tricks with myself here. All right. You going to touch him initially. You going to touch him initially. Then we're going to do this thing here. And then you're going to do this thing here. Then I'm going to break this guy here and this guy here. And break this guy that guy and that guy and then I'm gonna take you to you just so it's semi clean ish and just eyeball this cuz again and then What I want to do, and I don't necessarily have to uh, do the full run of it just yet, but I, I want to get the smart splitters initially placed. As far as setting them up and sending them to a, or getting them connected to a sink, that there we can do at a later time, but what I'll do is I'll take advantage while there's nothing coming on the belts, and I will get them uh, at least ran. Or uh, not ran, um. Wow, what was I aiming at on that one? What in the hell was I aiming at? Oh, I know what I was aiming at. 
I know exactly what I was aiming at. Yeah, because I was looking at, at an angle, and so I was like, okay, it needs to go there. No, this is... There's no, no such thing as a pipe being on that. That's actually supposed to be there. I wonder how many other ones are jacked up like that. And then I got I to gotta do my junction check to make sure that it actually created the junctions properly. So we'll do that before we do the valves. All right, so junction check. Okay, good on that. Good on that. Good on that. Good there. Good there. Good there. Good there. Good and good, okay. All right, we're doing the small one. And just like that, uh, other one. Yeah, that should work because it's even with the belts, it's not gonna um, should be fine. As long as we're not. Clipping into uh, the witch doodles, I'm okay. one on this side All right now let's go ahead and do the same thing over here now go ahead and clear these this segment off here this one here is gonna be just a little not quite as large or you know we'll see um, that's that's a weird type connection It's just, that's weird. All right, so we're gonna take you and actually here, just do it this way. Um, let me see, cause I wanna make sure I got, uh, that should be far enough technically. So I wanna give room for the uh, two, three, four, five. Uh, I don't want the junctions to go into, or, or uh, the, clip into the uh, this pipe here just because I don't like how it looks so uh, that's sure we'll see I may move it back one segment yeah let, uh, let me do a test here yeah yep one too many actually maybe two too many We'll, we'll, we'll go to seam. How about that? That should be plenty of space. All right, so... Take you to the seam. Actually, no, we're not doing that one. Uh, do one, two, three, four, and do you. And then you. Now, <laughs> let's see how much room I actually have here for this. Um, this will be an interesting connection. And what I may actually end up doing is 
And actually, I think I will now that I think about it. But we'll do that after we get an initial junction set up. All right, so now on that line, okay. And then you are on that great line right there. You are on that other great line right there. I missed one. Did I know? No, that's right, three. So you are on that great line there. And you are on that great line there. I can see. There we go. And then you are on uh, that seam line there. Or mark line. Okay. So get these guys initially connected. Nope. Jesus. What the hell is that shit? Alright, so now we're gonna break this guy here, and that one, and, and that, along with that, that, and this. Go ahead and finish getting this set up here. No, not that way. Come on, guys. Work with me. We're almost there. Alright, now I'm gonna break this guy here. Break that guy there. Break this guy here. Because we're going to bring him out to. Let's say right there. For the moment. Actually, nope. Uh, 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 forgot. Uh, oh, I'm. Oh, uh, it's like. That's why I thought I was on the wall. No, it's the damn conveyor belt stopping me. Let's just put it right there for now. Just to get a junction set up here for this guy right there. All right, now we're gonna break this and this. We'll come back to the main feed here in a second. Let's go ahead and close the uh, gap, if, as it were. Another junction on that line there, if I can see. And then junction there. And I really hope they move, do a, change something on that UI, Get move that copper symbol and what I'm building somewhere else. Because that being where it is, and also, do I really need to see my hands when I'm building stuff? Because it, 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 it gets in the way. You're trying to do certain precision targeting of stuff. It it's tough at times. All right, so that one goes there. There you go. Alright, then, see, after we get this done and we get the mains connected, then we gotta get power tied in, which that should be fairly easy. Well, I know one thing's for sure, though. The uh, oil reservoir at the uh, oil platform is topped off to its full amount. So, might actually be able to get a true, true test um, now as far as the oil draw. <clears throat> uh, you know what? <clears throat> Let's just make it easier. <clears throat> Excuse me. You are on what seam? Um, right there. 
So let's just do this. Um, yeah. Why have this thing bend when I can just have it go straight? Is all that all I gotta do? I mean, I can leave the pump technically where it is. Um, cause that's not gonna hurt nothing. Um, we'll reattach that. But all we do is bring you over to right there. We'll get rid of that wall attachment uh, after we get this connected. So technically that should work. I mean, I mean how's it, what's it look like inside? It goes halfway. You know, okay, so we'll rerun this. Just because I knew that was, I just had to, that's okay. In fact, you know what? <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's just rerun that entire segment. You should fit. All right. And again, the pump doesn't necessarily, doesn't need to be right at the edge. It's not gonna hurt it to be right here. Um, Cause I don't need it. It doesn't need to be, you know, doesn't have to uh, sit on top of that. All right. So now we are in uh, do power now. Oh, wait, no, we gotta get this guy ran here. Um, oh yeah, so we gotta do the same thing here. Damn it. Um, so we gotta do him, redo him again, just to make sure. So just come out this way some nope let's get to the right level otherwise that ain't gonna do what we want it to do All right now we can go ahead and put a junction here and you're on the line all right now tap into that now we can go ahead and do this pump here as i All right, and so actually we'll move him back now. Just um, make it uh, just because. Go ahead and, in fact, if I didn't also, I'm gonna redo the pipe over there. Let me take a look at it. Did I? Is it one segment? Okay, it is one segment. Just wanted to, just want to make sure it is. All right, so. This guy here, just move it back a little bit. Now, just checking something here with the power. Okay, so that is the, the right one for power. All right, so let's go ahead and move you. So, Basically on the turn on that line. Gray line on that, on the seam, or actually just over. Yeah. Let's see, is that the right connection? Yep, looks good. All right, go ahead and do a full connection on that. Good, that fits. Pump going that way. Right there. And actually, you know what? Hold on. Just, just for curiosity's sake, like I said, and to me, uh, honestly, it doesn't matter because the key on this is just getting it to the vertical point. So let me just see what's visible here. But again, I'm not worried about it not showing it going all the way down the, the thing because I know it's going to work. Um, <clears throat> so I say. All right. So now connect to you, and we already did a. We already reconnected you. Okay. Let's go ahead and get the uh, rubber tied back in to his thing. Um. And so. Oh. 
You know what? We're gonna do one, two. Uh, screw it. We're gonna put it right here. Because I have faith that this will work. I, I, I do. Are you right on that line, sort of? And then you, I think, can do a clean bend into that. Okay. So. All right. So. Now for power. Power should be, well, semi-easy. Um, what we're going to do is just simply do uh, cable connection straight up. Rinse and repeat. Yep. Provided I don't get tagged in the face with another power cable. And actually, you know what? Here, um, let's do it this way. Come back to the seam. We're going to rerun that power that's going all the way across. But that's going to go bye bye because we're going to have to, uh, um, which call it? Uh, we're gonna daisy chain these, but I'll I'll get rid of that after I get this initial power ran. Same over here. And for this one here, uh, I'm just looking for the... So one off that seam there is what we're going to do. Provided I can not... So we did in front of it, in front of it, okay. And you know what? I'm not going to worry about this. These, some of these things would not rotate. Um, as far as they, they're, they're crooked. Yeah, some of them, I think, actually were the proper location. And then other ones are crooked. All right. So what we're going to do now is we'll chain this to the wall. And then we'll get rid of the oddball. Set. So you are going to chain to Come on, there you go Now, this guy here, we'll come back uh, to, to finish him up here in a minute. We get these chained. And then you're gonna get chained to him. No, you're not. Not like that. You're not. Really, guys. Really. All right. So that part's done. And like I said, we'll we'll get rid of the other odd poles here in a minute. Um. Now I'm getting these guys connected. These are gonna go pretty much. 
Yeah. We'll, we'll have it come back, I guess. Um, once I can see, I bless. All right, you know what? Is that midline? Okay, go midline. So congested here. It's tough, tough to see. I can't. God. Yes, that's the problem when you have uh, what you would call it, it's like this. Uh, give me a foundation here. Thank goodness this is only five. Holy crap. All right, now I'm going to chain this set together. And then we'll tie these into the switched power. All right. So this here, we originally had following the, uh, the, the outlet or the, uh, what do you call it? Um, what's that called? The pipes. Um, but we're, we're gonna do here, let me see. This here, God bless, get out of the way. Um, I got so many damn different power outlets here. All right. Get rid of this. All right. This guy here is yeah, going down, and that's tying into. Um, what the hell is it going to? These pumps here, which we know these pumps here are good. So I don't need to worry about that crap. Um, uh, why I have a weird connection like that, I don't know. Probably because I had a, uh, um, probably because I had a, what you call it here, a pump here. So we're going to take that one off and see, hopefully this one can fit all the way down here. Good. And then... That one is going to tie into this guy, which then I can get. Really? Come on. A little floating here, and you're knocking me down. Get rid of this guy. Nope, nope, nope. Get rid of that guy there. Okay. We're tied in all the way down there. Come on, you guys. Go ahead, get rid of this guy here. All right, so that should give us good connection on that side. Now, as far as rubber is concerned, um, I'm going to that will clip. So we're going to go ahead and tie you to you because that's tying to the wall there we'll let this go this way and we'll go ahead and actually let you tie to that actually i don't need you there i can get rid of this one you will tie to that and let me make sure there's nothing extra over here all right so in theory that should be good Good on that, but I think there may be another connection over here I need to break, so there's that one. And then one more over here, which is this guy there. Alright, so in theory... Um... Yeah. Yeah. Alright, so one last thing I want to do. Um... Where the hell is this shit coming from? Oh, this is my recycler. Yeah, 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 because I had to do a special merge combo or in order to distribute the 400 evenly between five, uh, what should we call it? It's, it's got to recycle itself. <laughs> Forgot about that. All right, we're going to go ahead and clean up the belts just a little bit more just to have as little uh, poly resin coming through. 
and then let that clear the uh, recycling belt for a second. And we're going to clean this up here. Because the main belts are empty, it's just the recycling belts may have some stuff on it. So, actually, that recycling belt's clean, okay. So, we'll just go ahead and clean this up. Oh, wait, this is the wrong, wrong direction. Ah. Alright, so... I know that there's going to be, you know, trace amounts in the, in the lifts, and I'm fine with that. But I want to get it as empty as I can, just, uh, just, just because. All right, so let's check these belts over here real quick. And that's the outgoing recycling, so easiest thing to do is get this line here, then the recycling will come down this way. Alright, so let the recycling go through real quick. Oh, auto save. All right, I'm on auto save. All right, so no more on recycling. Okay. And clear these last belts out. We'll check the rubber, but I think rubber's good, but. Yeah, a lot of shit on this one. Oh, we got. Oh, this is a recycler also. So that it's recycling belt clear. Well, that's clearing. I'll go take care of these. Actually, that is the recycler right there. All right, and last, let's go check on rubber. Make sure his stuff is, oh, actually, no, there's a couple more things to do just before we do that. So that's coal, we're not worried about that. That's bauxite, not worried about that. Uh, there, over there, that's where it is. I see you, polyresin. Right here. This also has a recycling set. It is a split of five, but I don't know, for whatever reason, th these guys weren't as full. Yeah, that, that, that is a weird why that isn't like, or why that is like that. All right, so let me just still check. Again, one. Nope, missed just one right here. Oh, that's just a solo, but we'll pick it up anyhow. Okay, so now what we're going to do, before we uh, turn things on, uh, do I got enough for my smart splitters? We're going to install these, but we're not going to... Uh, cool, we do. Uh, I'm going to install them, but I'm not going to actually activate them. Or, um, what do you call it? Uh, have them connected to anything. Uh, at the moment, they'll just be uh, they'll be placed in line with uh, the belt feeds. Uh, so. Actually, I need to go over one more. There we go. All right, so 
We'll have this set up, like I said, and plugged in. For the moment, though, I'm going to have it turned on. I'm not going to have anything set up, so it's going to be none, any, none. But we will eventually be getting this, uh, them configured for overflow. Uh, and, pro and I'm going to kind of have it, if I can... If I do, if I position this just right, I think that's the positioning I want, I hope. Alright, cool. So what will, be, what will be happening on this, uh, where, where the hell are we going? Oh, shit. So, these two will merge together at some point. And then we'll do a similar uh, dual split uh, later on on the other set. So any, none. All right, cool. I did feed you on this side, right? Right. So now we're gonna do a similar split here. A split here. This one's gonna be none, any, none, and just do that anyhow. You're connected, you're connected, and then I'm gonna position this. Uh, that means we gotta get move you back one. Sorry, buddy. I think. I can't see it's so constricted in here and that's you know, that's where I want to go but that's the wrong way I think that's what I want yeah because that will allow a merger to occur there I think yeah because you guys were parallel to one another all right Then this guy here is going to be left, none, center, any, right, none. Let me make sure this belt here connected. Okay, that looks good. Last one we're going to uh, do is the uh, one for rubber over here. And... Actually, we'll do it. We'll do it right here. Um, let me look at something here. That there. Yeah, I got so much shit going everywhere. Um, yeah, let's put it right here. Or, yeah, I'm gonna grumble, grumble, grumble. We don't have room over there for the smart splitter, so let's go ahead and put it over here. Screw it. Put it right up on line with this. Wait. Okay, that's our that's our loop back. <clears throat> yeah. So put it on line with this here. Uh, if we can get the proper alignment here. So what are we lining it up on? Line it up on that grid. Yeah, this is... I think there's what I want. No, nope. ah, damn it. That. Okay, that's the right one. All right. So, center any, right none, left none. 
Alright, cool. And then again, we will hook him up to an actual smart splitter later on. But I want to get it in place now so I don't have to worry about trying to do this while the thing is fully active. Okay. So, all the machines that have poly resin and water have been emptied. Um, all the, uh, da -da. um, oil should be full. All right, what we're going to do is I'm going to give water a chance to, uh, backfill and how I'm going to do that is I'm going to break the power line for the refinery set here only which is this guy here except that's gonna also break well oh, so much for that okay never mind screw it turn it all on at once Go for broke. Go big or go home. All right. So, in theory, cross our fingers, but our water should be good. Once it fills up, it's already kicking out poly resin because the whatchamacallit had a uh, because uh, the refineries eat up a lot of or build poly resin awful quickly. Come on, water! Come on, water! Don't let me down. All the pumps are active. Hell, I may want to uh, actually get these belts tied into a smart splitter. Sooner rather than later. This yeah, we got water coming. We have water flowage. Come on, baby. This Alright, I'm gonna go up and this, uh, didn't take in, I didn't consider how quickly this shit was gonna fill up before the water was moving, so I'm gonna go ahead and clean this shit up. Um just just because the water is not fully pressurized yet. Um What I should have done, shoulda, coulda, woulda, I could have tied the water into the, uh, what do you call it, the, um, tied it into the uh, other power uh, that's being used for, for the water extractors. Um, God bless. Round robin. I'm just just doing another cleanup on these just because um, Go ahead and empty out my empty out that stack of poly resin. I wonder how much poly resin. I've just been trashing Because I just want the water to get filled up first And the fact that I'm not seeing water on some of these also All right, we're, we're going to do something here um you get upgraded. Come here. You go there. You break that. And we're turning off the oil refinery. I, I need this. Uh, I want this water to be fully pressurized before we start this shit. 
Okay, so these refiners should have shut down. Right? No power. Good. This... And again, I'm going to... Well, I don't need to clear the water out. Um, I'm going to clear the resin out. But I better see water in every single one of these damn pipes. And I don't think I am. There's something about these first couple pipes here. I oh, know there's actually water in there now. All right, something's wrong with this one, obviously. So let's do this first. Uh, it could be as simple as I didn't power up the, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, but, yeah, so that may be a power issue with the, uh, I may not have powered in the pump. Hell, maybe I didn't put a pump on it. I don't know. Uh, we'll come back to it, though. Because I know for 100% fact that we have more than enough water in the pipe for this, because... We need 500, it's getting 600. On each side. How's the rubber looking? Rubber's actually uh, looking good. I'm still gonna clear its poly resin out though. I want its pipes to, well no, that, that one's looking kind of shitty. All right, I want all this water to be 100% fully saturated there's zero reason. Now, why is this one not working? Water there. No water there. See, this, this, you know, for no reason whatsoever, it's gonna... Why, pump? Why? All right. Oh, wait, what's going on? Oh, oh, okay. It's like, it stopped moving. It's like, oh shit, what happened? No, it's, it's full, that's why. I was getting scared there for a minute. <laughs> I thought the game locked up when the noise, uh, when the pumping noise stopped. All right, so. All right, so our pipes should be 100% full all the way down to here. You guys should be 100% full, right? Hold on a second. One, two, three. Okay. I just don't remember looking at all you guys. All right. Just do a quick check over here. I mean, what I should see are yellow lights across the board. Um, now, when I did the initial uh, refinery check, all of them on this side did have water. All right, so I'm pretty, I think it's pretty safe to say that these are good. And these are all saying roughly the same eight and a half meters, which is, is about right. Check the pumps on these. Ooh. Eight meters on that, okay. And then you're doing 11 meters. This guy here should be around 14 or 15 meters, 15 meters. So we're good on that and the fact that these pipes are full um, means that we're, we're good on that side. The extractors should at this point all be idled out 
So. No, I got the two for rubber are still active. So they must be, it must be filling its buffer. Why? I don't know. Cause the, every, all the pipes are, oh no, 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 like I said, it's. Okay, that's. The pipes are full. The rubber is not doing anything. So that makes me curious what's going on here. I mean, I would, ex I understand if it was pumping to fill its buffer, but they're like these guys here, they're all idled out because their buffer's full. Well, let's follow the pipe and. Or is it just now finishing up the filling of this? But then again, actually, that could be it too, because the difference in these other ones is they've got um, the other uh, extractors are chained to a total of five, so it would fill up the uh, what should we call it, a lot faster, or fill up the pipe run. So we're gonna let this fill up real quick and while that's doing that I'm gonna grab me some more to drink so I'll be back in just a moment So that is now idle, that is now idle. Okay, so that's what I was ex expecting to see, but yeah, I didn't take into account that two pumps would take a little bit longer to fill the pipes up. And let me see here. Let me just check. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and put these in. Um, might as well do it while I have the uh, stuff not flowing. Let me go ahead. Find a spot for these. I may just do it over here, but where I could technically do it 
if in line with this, actually, now that I think about it, because I got room, they're not that wide. I just gotta, uh, let me see. So I've got it set up. I don't know. We're not, no, we're talking about the poly resin. So there's our, that's one of them. So we could go down to uh, go down across and up. So, or we could go down because so these guys are going to merge. Just out of curiosity, how much room do I have in between these guys? Not much because. Man, this area is so congested. But I can't really do a clean run over here. That way. Um, well, I can have it merge and go backwards and then drop down this way and come up and talk about a twisting nightmare full of invaders, but all right, let's do this. Can we merge here? Have my arrow on that side. You come into that, do that at that level or initially, and then we'll drop down this guy here to merge on that one that way just like that all right and then make sure to turn the smart splitter on to so this guy here will be right over and then this guy here will be left over all right and i'm going to also set the other splitter up or we'll go that way initially all right so this guy here is left over or excuse me right over this guy here will be left over all right now i'm not anticipating a lot of volume on this <laughs> i say that with a straight I say that with a straight face um all right let me see here just looking at potential things here to do all right so let's let's find a spot for this <clears throat> smart splitter or uh, uh what do you call it but i i think i can do this with just one um because if this works as intended and that's a big if but still um if it works as intended um the most i'll get will be from the rubber because the rubber is actually being overfed um by 20. the plastic or the fabric um isn't i mean it's it's like fractionally being overfed all right so we'll have you come down to this level here as where's our where is our pla uh jesus i don't even know where my damn splitter is anymore what splitter am i going to oh this guy here Ooh, that's so tight but that's okay all right we're gonna put a merger in this area here let me figure out where the hell's okay so that there is gonna run down this way come down to level one all right let's put a merger just put it right on the damn whatchamacallit um and it can be it can be off of it i don't i'm not all that worried about it being a direct connect all right this guy here He's gonna run this way, and I also gotta configure that smart splitter so it's uh, tied in or programmed properly. 
So this guy here is now gonna be um, left over. All right, so that takes care of the rubber side. We have that feed there, which will come over to here, to this guy here. So we're gonna bring this, come on, attach belt, belt, get on that. That guy's gonna come, we're actually gonna come over here a little bit, because I wanna give room for the other belt. So we're gonna come up on just off the grate. So right there. That's now going to come over here. A little bit more over here. Um, that's your line there. Come on, give me a fly. Uh, what's your center line? Your center line is on that grate. All right, now we'll attach this here. You go that way. Okay, now this guy here, this guy here is going to have the fun one. <clears throat> um, <laughs> all right, so this guy here, he's going to be the weird guy. Um, as if these aren't already weird enough as it is. He's going to run parallel to this guy here. So that he can get underneath this pipe here. Ah, bless. Come on, float. All right. Actually, hold on. Uh, no, come closer. Auto save already? Nope, not there. All right, auto save. Do it. Do your thing before I do this connection. Otherwise, you're gonna mess me up. You are going to come up to the grate. All right. Then you're going to go up to level three from there. Because technically you're not... You're touching but not clipping, per se. And then this guy here is going to... Uh, let's see. You're on center line and you're on grate. All right. Center line... That's center line and great. So one, two, up three. We may, I don't know. We'll see what we'll do about this power line. Oh, that power line's okay. Okay. It just, um, oh. All right. <laughs> oh, get off the belt. All right. This is some goofy ass shit here, but this will one ensure that the oil refineries don't get backed up on polyresin. Where's my exit at? There it is. So the oil refineries won't get backed up on polyresin. The rubber won't get backed up on rubber. The fabric won't get backed up on fabric. These guys here are good because I already have them set up for smart splitters because of my storage. I'm gonna do, let me see here. Um, well, you will need power. So let's, you tapped into that because otherwise you're not gonna do shit. All right, I'm going to change this and then I'm gonna come over this way. Uh, what are we on? We're on this, we're on that line, I think. Get on that line and that line, I think. Try to get, try to match my lines. I think that's what I want. We're actually going to feed you over here. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and take this guy off. That should still keep the powered up. Now for these guys here, I'm actually going to do something different just because if we have issues in the future um, well we're gonna let's see are you connected to anything else 
No, your exclusive job is to feed that. Awesome. <laughs> um, and let me see. That's that's prime power there. All right, we're we're gonna do something a little, you know, you know, something a little different here. All right, I'm gonna put down another power switch here. Um, just because. No, not like that though. Come on. All right, cool. And then you will come up to here. And then you can come over to here. So that will, this will be power for just the oil refineries. So in theory, all these should have turned green actually because that's on. I'm getting a green light here, which is weird. Something's, oh no, it is on. Oh yeah, because I actually broke the line there. Uh, yeah, never mind. So, so yeah, so everything's on but that. So now let's go ahead and uh, cross our fingers on here. But first, let's see here. Uh, oil ref for fabric and filters. All right, and action. All right, here we go. For real. Now it'll take a couple cycles for the poly resin to uh, to fully uh, uh, to go through all of its uh, what do you call it um, its process. Um, you know, maybe about okay. Actually, it looks like it's this guy's good now because rubber is going to get an excess of poly resin. You know. It's technically going to get an excess of 20 per minute, so this here will eventually saturate, um, you know, s sooner rather than later. But now with the smart sink or smart sink, the splitter on that one, I'm not too worried about that. Now, how about you guys? That? No, no, because it again it because of. Uh, startup time you know i'm expecting actually all of these to be right around 23 24 um for the quantity just because of uh um you know whatchamacallit the the initial cycle time um the key on these and actually i'll just scroll through these the key on this is water and now since the water was fully saturated in the pipes, we should no longer have any issues with the refilling of water. Because we are technically sending it more water than it needs. Um, or there were, so that should, you know, it needs 500, we're giving it 600 in the pipe. Uh, and with the extractors, so I think we're finally good to go. Like I said, the rubber, I'm not worried about it. It's going to, this here is going to get exceeded over time. Um, and then now the, now the key comes back to oil. So right now, 
Um, okay, so these are draining, which makes me think the train is here. Um, doing a load cycle. Let's find out. No, the train is not here doing load cycle. Um, but that also, okay, so that kind of makes me curious. Um, but these now should truly be almost one for one relatively close. I mean, they may be off by about 10 or 20, depending on how much was already in the, uh, uh, in the refinery, but 1780, 1780. So these guys should though, because that's what was throwing me off also before is I had one of these buffers that had more in it than the other buffer. Um, right, let's see, where's oil at? Oil is, are you oil? No, you're coal. Um, that's quartz, actually. You know, it's easier if we just do a look at this one here. So you're looking at actually the trains on this line. The oil is loading up right now. All right. So uh, now I'm kind of, again, scratching my head a little bit as to buffer usage. Okay. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it's just, maybe the, uh, it was just topping itself off after the, uh, the train left because of the, the downtime of the load. Because the load, and actually, you know what, I'm gonna do this. Uh, next time I see the, let me see here. Because um, I, I did a number of tests with the train. Well, I did five. I did five round trips with the train to measure its uh, round trip time. And it varied between 412 and 453. Um, so that's, you know, in fact, let me, uh, let me put this in here. 4, 12, 4, 23, 4, 30, 4, 29, 4, 53. So it, it will vary based on, um, oops, it will vary based on, you know, traffic flow. Um, so if you get stuck at a, uh, whatchamacallit, um, if you get stuck at a uh, uh, junction, then obviously it's going to uh, um, take longer to do a round trip. Now, what I want to see here, and so this is the next thing I want to do a quick test on. Um, okay, here it comes. All right, so we're going to do a test here. I want to I want to literally see exactly how long it takes to dock. So from it saying docking until its horn honks and it says it wants to go. I read somewhere that it was 15 seconds and I don't believe it is, but maybe it is. I don't know. Let's see. Nope, 15 seconds have, has, has already elapsed. So 27 seconds on a lap or on a uh, on the unload process. Is that 27 seconds actually uh, will determine how much stuff is taken out of the buffer? So let me see here. Uh, equals that divided by that, which is 0.45. Really? No, that's gotta be more than that. Really? Interesting. All right, so anyhow. Um, so that is that rate. So then I do that. Um, that. Um, 
that. Let's see here. That times that. No, because it didn't drain that much. Yeah, it didn't drain that much. Uh, I gotta figure out my. Uh, I gotta figure out. Because these here are already full again. And so now we're doing our basically pass through right? Let me see here. So is that much a minute? Maybe that. Actually, <laughs> yeah, maybe it's that simple. Um, right, I'm gonna wait for the uh, the train to show up again, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna take a look here. And you know what I'm tempted to do? Well, we'll know when the train. Theoretically, we'll know when the train shows up and when it departs because when the train's docking, the fill rate will, should drop to zero. And then based on 27 seconds, in theory, actually, what we should see it do is it should drop down to 377-ish at its lowest point, you know, because if it's pulling 60, uh, there it is right there. If this machine is pulling 60 a minute and we stopped for 27 seconds, roughly, then we should have a drain in here close to, you know, 27 to 30 ish, you know, give or take how early it's, you know, how early it kills the, uh, the fill uh, for the dock. So let's see what we have here. Now, I also got to take in consideration that the fill rate is also, uh, you have stuff in the pipes. So it's also draining the actual, you know, it's just draining the pipes out as well. Um, so the amount that it actually drops. Wow, that was actually not much at all. So, throw that theory out the window. I mean, now in reality, with uh, this buffer system here, you know, if we did the one sixty a minute, you know, we've got. Six minutes worth of uh, six minutes forty seconds worth of um, oil. You know. But now what I want to see here. Curious to see how. I'm gonna watch this buffer for a few minutes. Because again, these two buffers should be the same still. So we're approaching 1400 flat. Uh, 14. So it's, you know, it's within tolerance of being on par with one another. Our items per minute is uh, 310 now. It's going to take a couple more trips for it to average out to what we're hoping to see, which is a 450. These are. This is our objective average. And then I'm gonna, for the next, I don't know, I'm gonna watch it here for a couple of round trips. I wanna see 
what its low point hits. Um, because in theory, well, with a four and a half minute round trip time, um, it's drain. Let me see here. So, we're looking at technically more than the train holds. Um, because if you think about it, if it's doing 420 a minute for five of them, or uh, seven of them, over the course of four minutes, that is actually going to exceed the 1600, um, the 1600 uh, buffer on the train itself. So that, you know, gives us a 1680. So I will, I think, want to run dual trains just because of that there. That's something I did not take into consideration. Is it's not about it's not an issue of how much we're pumping over at the other side. It's the fact that the train can only hold sixteen hundred, and the four minute round trip is not sustaining. Is not going to be able to sustain this enough. Yes, that's my decision. Um, I. What we're going to do here? We're going to let this guy fill up here. And then I'm gonna give him the uh, I'm gonna give him two minutes after he departs, roughly, and then I'm gonna send another train out. Now I think what would be kind of interesting or cool it could be uh, really bad at the same token but uh when uh if you if you do have a train derailment i think you should lose all the cargo in the train all right so i'm gonna give it two minutes so actually i'm gonna wait till let me see which which train do we want to send train one or train two train two or train one we'll send this guy So he will go to oil load, then to oil. I'm gonna wait until I'm gonna wait until the first one is in the turnaround down here. Because I think that's because of like I said, because of the freight car limitation. So now what this is going to tentatively do for us though, is it's going to reduce overall how much oil is going to be brought over every trip, but in theory, um, both trains will bring over roughly a thousand oil each trip, between a thousand and eleven hundred, give or take, um, which will give us an overage of... Uh, all right, ready, go. Um, semi overage of uh, of uh, what we need, or worse comes worse, they'll bring over nine hundred, depending on the fill rate. Um, so which will average our stuff out to uh. Uh, the four, because what we should see is, like I said, those should have a, a transfer rate between 420 and 450. All right, let's just do a quick scan here, see how these are looking. So the buffers are full, which are good. These things here, no backups. All of these are good. So I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm just some spot checks on some things while we wait for the uh the trains 
Let's just do some checks on this. Water's looking good. No underage. Here, actually, here's an idea. Let's go up here. Everything green? Uh, I see all green there, and I see all green there. And let's see here how the rubber is actually doing. So again, rubber building up, but that is actually to be expected. So not a worry there. These here, the build time on this is, I mean, it's gonna have to run for a couple hours before it really has a variance. All right, so here comes train, the first train, which is actually train number three. And I presume train number one is actually at the load or close to it. Let's just take a look here. So he is, he's actually loading right now. So, cause yeah, so right now, so we're pretty much, we're about to hit bottom of the barrel with this. So I believe if, if all holds true, so we're bringing in 56 on this. So this should go up to 1656. You know, that's what it should go to. Sixteen fifty. I mean, it, it spun so quickly, but I'll say it's at fifteen sixty-six. Six, yeah, sixteen fifty-six. So, what we should see on the next train arrival, which is he's waiting for the courts to go by before he gets his green light. Um, in theory. He's not, he may or may not have a full load. I don't know um, because of the timing between the two. Um, cause it's possible cause it only takes two and a half or it takes two minutes, 40 seconds for um, the upper buffers to fill up from the lower buffers. Um, but then again, it takes uh, th three minutes and 48 seconds for the lower buffers to fill that, yeah, no. um, so what we should see here though, we should see this cap out, I believe. No, we won't. 16 to 19, we may, it may, this one may just cap out. Um, 1937, or 937, excuse me. This may hit 24. Uh, does this guy may have gotten a full load? I don't know. No, he didn't. No, no, he actually, uh, he has an overage. Really? How much do you have left? 48? All right, I wanna go to the other station. All right, I wanna go to the other station. I wanna look how the buffers are doing over there. Because right now uh, it's going to take a little, a uh, couple trips for the oil, uh, for the oil trains to balance out, since there's two on the line now. I kind of wish you could see on the timetable listing when you're looking at the main thing how much. Uh, how much, uh, what do you call it? Um, how much stuff they're carrying? So we'll sit over here for a couple minutes and just observe the buffers. Um, I think the top buffer will, if there's enough material in the lower buffer, the top buffer will get fully loaded. Uh, okay, bail out while he goes around. Let's take a look here. 
No, actually. Well, then again, it's two minutes after the load, so they were pretty close to one another um, on their. Uh, they were pretty close to, to one another on their uh, passing by, so that's also going to be a factor. Uh, however, these guys are filling up pretty good. In fact, this guy will cap out and these are going to idle out now. <clears throat> Maybe. Ooh. They may have left just in time to prevent those from idling out. Alright, so now it should take because it was almost completely drained. 2 minutes 40 seconds for this thing to fully fill up at a rate of 600, which we, are, we do have a rate of 600. And for the most part, because these are uh, in pairs, so this front one and that back one, well, actually I should say this front one and this one go together for a 450. Those two go together for a 450. So we will see a drain on this. Um, because we got 600 going up, but 450 coming in. So we should have a net drain of minus 150, right? That's what I would think, but that net doesn't make sense. I don't know, that's just weird. But in theory, because of that first oil train, um, nope, here comes this oil train right now. But actually, this may be right in line with what I was calculating. This thing here may get up to right around a thousand. Um, there's still a little bit more than that. But each train, based on the since it's not doing full round trips for each time a train uh, hits, um, these should get roughly up to um, I was thinking a thousand or so, but maybe a little bit more. Because the key thing is, as long as each one of these carries a thousand. That actually is, will be sufficient. So this one here is getting up to 12, 13, 13, 16, and you guys still have stuff on you. And actually, let me do this, because I was looking at a different transfer right there. Well, I stand corrected. Um, I was looking at the wrong transfer or wrong uh, rate thing there. Uh, to do a full fill from nothing uh, on this will be four minutes. It's the 1600 point. That is the two minutes, 40 seconds. So he took, you know, I didn't even see how much he took. It was 13, 13 and change uh, is how much he took. And he actually already, had, he still had some on him too. Cause his, uh, the freight car was not, it wasn't an empty freight car. Here comes train number two. So this number here is decreasing. It was a little higher, now it's at 501. <clears throat> so I think we're gonna slowly see this get to 450, which is our ultimate goal. That's what it should be at. So he's got some left on him. How much do you have left in you? Just a fractional amount, okay. So this guy is getting up to... He's grabbing... 766 he will empty that out completely now um so this will start at scratch this here 
It is now basically while that's filling up, it's getting his back fill. All right, cool, cool, cool. All right, so he was completely dry. So again, it's it's going down as as expected. Um, I think this will actually be the winning solution. Uh, two trains will do it. Um, but again, depending on, it, it all depends on the time between train pickups. Um, so that time that he left to the next time the next train gets here. Um, so actually I can do this in total. Um, let's see. Uh, if I, uh, gotta fr I gotta fractionalize these, um, so I can figure out. Oops. All right, so four minutes. Four minutes, four minutes, four points. What's the average of that? Uh, average is 0.49, so 4.49. 4.49. Four, four point two, four point. Okay, so coming in, so this basically, based on the timing, this guy here, uh, two minutes and forty seconds, going on. Two minutes, so uh, two fifty. So two minutes, forty seven, forty eight seconds. Um, so if that's that point there, then the next train, so twelve fifty point five. And did you have anything on you also? So yeah, you had excess on you. So seeing these have excess on them, um, so he is good. Um, and I I didn't notice um, if they uh, if it did a full drain or not. It, it may have been a, a what do you call it, just a partial amount. But what I'm looking at here is. Seeing how much, and I'm gonna go on the presumption that it did a full drain just because. Um, let me see here what th what the value is when this guy arrives to see how the round trip, the the semi round trip calculation is here. So approaching 600. Seven hundred, seven twenty nine. Okay, the so seven twenty nine point one. All right, so now we do this for fifty. In theory. Four point three nine and four point three nine. Let me see what that comes up to. Or uh, actually, let me do this. So four minutes twenty three seconds, roughly, for that round trip. Still going down, which is awesome. 
Yeah, I think we found our happy point here. So the next train, when it arrives, depending on traffic, uh, this thing here should be around 1,200 um, on its fluid. Maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. Like I said, it all depends on uh, any stops that it may, uh, uh, you know, any train stops that it, or any uh, delays that it has to do for cross traffic, namely at coal. Um, and so going past coal and then up there when it's trying to get back on the main line. Um, those are the two places it will experience a delay. But, uh, I'm happy with this, so. So here, here it comes now. All right. <clears throat> And we are around uh, approaching a thousand. So we'll see. Uh, we'll stay for both tra uh, one more set of trains. Then we'll head on back to the uh, head on back to the what you call it. So this one here took a little bit longer to get here. Fourteen twenty point eight. Okay. So that was roughly a three minute nine second trip for that one. Now, what that tells me is, provided, uh, depending on how much this empties, we gotta take that into consideration. So we're at 14.2008, and are we starting at zero, or? No, we started at like 3.37. All right, so, um, we gotta take that in consideration when uh, the next train picks up. But the next train should be here momentarily. Yep, here it comes. So whatever its value is, minus 337. And that will, like I said, I believe it was 337, so. Eight seventy point two. So combined between the two, four minutes twenty seconds on that trip. And let's see here. Between the two of them, the first trip was nineteen hundred in, in oil. The second trip was nineteen fifty four in oil. And so, if you average those out, um, nine ninety or uh, 989 between the two, take 989. It's still a little high, uh, cause technically it should average out to roughly 900 between the two trains. Uh, but again, delays and other, other, uh, factors on the trip. But I think we're going to be good now. I don't think we're going to have any issues to worry about with respect to the amount of oil coming in because our objective was to get a, above 1680 um, because 1680 is the draw rate um, how much it, uh, it uses uh, over the course of four minutes which is the average round trip time. So 1680 to, I don't know, 1780, 1790-ish. Um, so I think, uh, so 
So let's hop out and see what these are at real quick. So, I mean, yeah, these things are 100% topped out pretty much. 21, yeah, so. Oh, also, I didn't check. Oh, damn it. I wanted to check before you did that thing. All right, we'll check here in a second. But this here should. The number over here should be dropping down to about 450 on its incoming. And so now it's actually getting to a point of, um, you know, this guy here, he's going back with, you know, half full. So it's getting to the point where it's going to be, uh, that, that's, that is weird though. 371, 371. Uh, then again, he's not fully dropping stuff off anymore. So and let's just validate our buffers. Make sure, uh, just to make sure these things are still operating. Okay, so it's it's refilling after the uh, the stop. This one here had a higher drain, and this is actually the amount of drain I kind of expected. Um, if you take in consideration, um, twenty five to twenty twenty five to thirty seconds on a docking procedure. Um, if it needs sixty in, then you figure every second it's gonna, you know. Now, it's cycle time is six seconds, so. All right, let's take a look at green lights up top. Uh, green lights across the board there. Green lights across the board there. See, that's what they need in this game. They need to have something where you could like have like a central control board that you can look at that shows, you know, hey, this one's green or red or whatever the case is. All right, so we're getting close to saturation on that again. <coughs> Excuse me, not an issue because now that we've got the sink set up, we'll burn that with no issues. Um, these guys here. That's, again, it's over time. It will be building up. Um, you know, building stuff up, so. But we're not having water issues, so. Water problems resolved. Um, these guys here will no longer have fabric issues. As far as, we're over generating fabric, so. But once we, once we hit saturation points, um, we will now be disposing of that in, uh, in a waste receptacle. Same thing with the rubber. Coal we're not worried about because this here is not going to hold up anything with respect to production. Um, same thing with these two. Not worry about those being uh, overloaded. So, and how many have we made so far? Just out of curiosity. Uh, so we've got at least two full bins. So. I mean, and what I'm going to do is after I get full, um, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to take a couple stack fulls back to base, put them in the storage unit. And then, uh, once this actually fully gets full, um, I'll just turn off this operation until I need more. Cause, uh, this here is just, a this is going to be an as needed operation. Um, you know, unlike, you know, just because, but all right. So that bit of fun is done up and working. I'm happy now. So that was a super nightmare. So I think we're going to hop on a train and, uh, take care of some, um, off stream removal of some animals because you know I I just don't feel you know feel right killing them unfortunately and it is my fault um, but I'll mess around with the save game file maybe I can maybe I can relocate them yeah maybe I don't need to kill them maybe I can just relocate them um, but anyhow that's where we're gonna call it for now we'll get us heading over to my main base and then uh, I think uh, I'll come up with a 
what we're going to come up with next. So until the next time, have a good one.